to the Brawl Stars Championship, where we are in the July monthly finals for the EME region, and it is getting hot and heated in here. I, of course, Mark, joined by Trav, joined by Teddy. Trav, I'll start with you. As you've always got something to say for yourself, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I mean, it's going to be thrilling today here at EMEA. These last two months mean so much to so many of our teams, and I can't wait to get into it. Teddy as well, great to have you here. How are you feeling? The competition right now in this region is getting so, so close. I think I've said it every month so far, but this is the most important month yet uh, here for EMEA, and it is truly really the case. It's so competitive right now, so much on the line. I can't wait to get through this bracket. It's going to be a fun packed day, that is for sure. Let's take a look first and foremost at the formats for anyone that could be new here, for anyone that wants a little bit of a refresher. Power match, of course, in game, the picks and bands we all know and love. Eight teams in a single elimination bracket. And of course, the best of fives this year is all we want to see. It keeps it close, it keeps it personal, and that's how we like to roll in the EMEA region, and of course, across the world. But, of course, this is our leaderboards as they are shaping up to be. Zay's division already locked in for the world finals as a result of their victorious run in the Snapdragon Pro Series. Guaranteed BSC points now will be going their way into the challenge finals, and that has actually locked them in for the world finals. But the question on our minds here, Trav, is that the battle of the last two world qualification spots, who is going to be able to take them in this region? 
I mean, it's a tough one because Reply Totem, they're not in the Snapdragon Pro series. They've got Zeta as the first team today. It's going to be a difficult ride for them. But just below them, Navi, Humble, Four, all pretty much in contention. Ammo Fantasy, not in the best of spots. They're not here today. They're not in SPS either. So they're in a bad, bad position. But for Totem, Navi, Humble, and for Esports, it's all up in the air. Yeah, I thoroughly agree. Ever Fantasy in a tough spot. I mean, Team Kessel, of course, you know, didn't qualify either. Teddy, give me your thoughts as well. You know, how do you see this leaderboard shaping up to be over the next month and two? Well, you know, as we kind of already said a little bit, I think this month is going to be incredibly important because it means that next month, if you if you do well here in July, you might have a little bit of a second chance. Say you don't qualify, say things don't go your way. This month here, that's your safety net. And for teams like like Trefset, like Reply Totem, this could be huge. If they can beat Zeta today and, and make it far into this bracket, those extra points could actually put them in a much safer spot than if they go out in, four, in, in quarterfinals. And ANR as well, for sure, thoroughly agree. Like creeping forwards as well, having a great run in the SPS. Also, I do feel like, you know, if they have a good run today, then this leaderboard could be turned up on its head very, very easily. Let's take a look as well at today's schedule in our bracket to see who's actually going against who, because that could have a big knock on effect as well. I'm looking at that second match for myself Zayt's division up against Reply Totem. I mean, if Reply Totem can cause an upset here today in that first stage, make it to the grand finals, get a win, they'll be guaranteed to at least lock themselves in for a last chance qualification spot. That'd be absolutely huge for them. On the flip side, if you go pear shaped, they might lose in the first moment there. AR versus Humble, though, will be our first match in the, in the quarterfinal stages and a very important one for ANR as we already said for esports take on Nita's Cubs in the lower stage of the brackets and Navi face SK Gaming that fourth match in the quarterfinals for me is going to be a very influential one there Trav any matches that for you stick out in you know sort of what you're looking for in uh, today's show literally all of them because the thing is, all, all, of them mean, all of them mean so much. Like, every yeah. single game influences how this leaderboard is going to play out at the end of the day and also at the end of the year as well. It really does mean so much for all of our teams, even that humble A&R one. It shakes up things in the middle of the table. If A&R win, they go further up and everything starts to compact in that, uh, like, from the third to the to the sixth spots. And if humble win, then they just move further and further into their uh, their top four spot. That's what Trav thinks. What do the uh, United casting desk have to say when it comes to our predictions? Again, make sure to head, head over to events.brawlstars.com where hopefully we get this bang on right and then everyone's happy. Uh, we are a united front here today, Teddy. Uh, give us your thoughts and speak on all of our behalfs as to why we are thinking the way we are. Well, I think that there are three matches that in theory have been going more one way so far this year. If you look at a &R, they're in an incredible form right now. I feel like they had the best start of the year out of most teams. It slowed down for a little bit, but they seem to be back on track now. Zeta Division, I mean, I don't think we need to justify that one. They've won nearly every single match in the BSC so far, and so far against Reply Totem, uh, they've shown to be the better team for foot esports again need cubs they just have a little bit more experience so that's definitely a match that in theory would be going their way and navi versus sk is the toughest one to call here for me but navi just seemed in a little bit of a better form so far as sk I i'm still not sure where their place is yeah, Navi versus SK, I agree, is the one where I'm 50-50. Trav, you said the same before the show, and you thought you were being quite bold going with Navi. Yeah, I mean, it's a really tricky one. It literally is 50-50 on the dot, so I, I was kind of thinking, I'm surprised we've all gone the same way with that one. I thought at least one of us would have differed off it, but to be honest, I, did, I, you know, I thought I was being a bit bold, because SK have been looking very, very good with OP. They kind of, he kind of brought that um, aggressiveness that the team was really missing with any of the other people they've been playing with this year, so it's intriguing to see how they're developing, and obviously that's going to be probably the closest this match it's going to be an interesting day in the EMEA. Let's have a look at our first matchup. A&R taking on Humble, of course. A&R need very little of an introduction at this point. They've been very consistent this year. Didn't qualify here or there, but nonetheless are really looking strong. Rama, Nob, and Mabius. Uh, especially when we see this kind of aggression from a team in the EME region, Trav, it really does like just bring so much excitement to the region, right? 
I mean, this, this roster is it's just thrilling. It really is. It's so exciting to watch. They got the good drafts. They've got such aggressive plays. It's just really exciting to watch A&R play. Uh, and, and, you know, I think Rama's kind of known as the main man behind a lot of their drafts. And uh, I believe they've got a, a coach back there as well. I think Phillips, their coach for this year, who's helping out quite a lot as well. So their drafts are just so exciting. Everything's so aggressive. They're just really good at you know pivoting on the moment. And that's where a lot of their wins really, like, sprout from. Whereas, obviously, they they do have the mechanics to back it up, but I just think the drafts are so solid. Yeah, they did have a bit of a period of not qualifying, and that was a bit of a concern, but they are back and bigger than ever. Humble on the other side of things. They're looking great right now for me as well. Tom Z, Cyclone, and Luki. You know, last year we saw this very squad just kind of not come where we expected them to be in those last final months and stages of the BSC, but I think this month they could really cause an upset. But they've got to get things together, and when they do, they are scarily dangerous here, Teddy. Absolutely. So, Luki joining their ranks this year. I've heard him being called a lot of things early on in the year. The next Luna, the next Joker. Those were the sort of words I heard. So far, he's played well, but this month is his chance and the chance for the team to really show what they got. Again, qualifying con consistently into the monthly finals, but struggling to get through the stages of the bracket, hopefully for them today. They can really cause an upset here and put a and r out in the first possible round but as we know you know a and r do not take things lying down so rama got a great personality very very big in both his words and his plays <laughs> but you know you can't deny trav like at the moment their level of just consistency is what is shining through a bit better they've had a very big start to the year and then it dipped a little bit but now they're riding that wave back to the top and especially when you look at the performance in the sps they're riding second on the leaderboard they are looking like a real top contender for that world qualification spot I mean, you know, the thing is about you, about you saying, you know, he, he speaks quite well on Twitter. He's got a big mouth. We know that. But he's also got what it takes to back it up. That's the thing. That's how exciting uh, Rama <laughs> is. And this roster it really just is incredible. But yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, Humble's going to be a very, very tough match for them. And to be honest, they are coming into this one of the favorites, as we all predicted their way. But Humble have been looking very good at the moment as well. They have their ups and downs. They're on a bit of a down at the moment in the SPS, at least. But they're consistently getting to the monthly finals. They're consistently getting points. They just need to get that little bit further, I think, down the bracket to really solidify the position at the top. Yeah, having watched Humble for uh, many years, Teddy, you know, kind of talk to the viewers for just a little bit of their background here and kind of, you know, we, we look at this team sometimes and we feel like maybe they've got a little bit lacking of experience, but actually they've got a wealth of experience behind them and time and time again, the face against the big, big teams, it's just every now and again, not quite making it through to this late stage of the BSC monthly finals. Is that right? Uh, Humble are one of the teams and was, so their players are some of the players that are the hardest grinders in this game, like straight up. Those guys have been at it for years at this point and even though they've had some moments of glory, I still don't think we've gone through their, their breakthrough just yet. They have so much potential and for the last two years they have been able to do big damage to the biggest teams in the region they just need to win a monthly final. That's really what's left on the menu for them. And the a and is in their path here in, in the quarterfinals. They're making the semifinals in February, but that was their best performance actually of the entire year. So I want to see them make the semis today, but a and are not going to be giving it to them easy in any way, shape or form. They will absolutely be putting them through their paces. But in that sense of the word as well, if they are able to do just that, then it will mean so much more. But again, the moment for me, a and R, the favorites here, united in our predictions on the casting desk. And if you haven't placed yours, head over to events.brawlstars.com this very instant. There may still be time, there may not. But nonetheless, you've got yourself all loaded up and logged in there for our next match of the day. If you do happen to just miss it and get some points along the way as we go into our first match of the day. It's Brawl Ball, it's Pinball Dreams. And it's going to be me and Teddy. Sorry, Trav, seen a bit, mate. <laughs> Votes in is 69% in favor of a and R. That's a solid number, Teddy. It is a very, very solid number. Our a and R is incredibly good at the moment. I mean, they've managed to beat Zeta Division in the SPS. They're on top of the world. But what matters the most to them right now are those BSC points. Can they translate that? 
today here in the monthly finals of July. We'll have a first pick Nita here on Pinball Dreams Humble. Gonna be reacting with an M straight app. Uh, it is a brawler that has been very threatening across the board. We'll see the crow as well. So a lot of slow uh, possibilities here on the side of Humble, both on the M's and on that crow. Well, they're coming in for A&R. And they get some good results with it, I've got to be honest. Great to see the Cordelius ban on the side of Humble because, well, we'll talk more about Cordelius later on today. An absolute menace riding high in terms of both the picks and the win rates in Brawl Esports. But we also saw there as well, Shelly being very, very high up on those win rates and therefore banned out more often than not as well. Dynamite is the last Brawler pick from Humble, which I don't mind, but I think Willow here has a bit more utility to spare and as you worry for Humble, if a &R start to push up the map, especially with that Bonnie pick as well, if Rama can really make that work time and time again, more often than not, the rest will follow. And with the Bruce Bear as well from the Southern Nita, the Crow is going to struggle a little bit. The M's, they're saving grace for me, but we know what Dynamite can do, Teddy. You know, if you get those all-important supers to connect and land and break open the map, it might be able to give Humble a bit of an opportunity and a bit of a shot on gold. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a, a strong pick here. I think they can make it work on the side of Humble. I think both comps have their legs, but let's find out as we jump into game. We're not quite gonna have a thrower battle just yet as they are split across the map, which means that on each side where there is a thrower, you will have a bit more of a dominant matchup as there is no way for their opposition really to dislodge them from that position. Very similar circumstance to what we saw in the Grand Finals earlier today in East Asia, actually, with these comps running on this exact map. And Luki knows that he's got that rage advance, which can just kind of sit there. Rama can't contest that situation either, so he's already got Super now pushing forwards a little bit. Cyclone just keeping his distance as well, as he knows that it will help him out and his teammates considerably to be in the mix. Maybe it's though, great tap onto Cyclone into the middle, almost followed up as well. The jump in should be able to clear it, but the ball passed out, and the ball for safety measure there from Luki. Yeah, he will destroy a couple of his own walls. Gets a nice follow-up kill to Rama, though. A chance, maybe, to build up a little bit of map control. Humble have been on the back foot in the first minute, but now suddenly they have a lot more map control. Luki has a super as well. Nice gadget from Nom to hide away from that super. Will manage to survive off that engagement. And Luki is not quite going to be as fortunate. He falls and Anar now back in the driver's seat. Obviously, he's just trying to keep a little bit to the right-hand side. But Rama will see the crossover there as well, so he can just hold that position there with no super to hand. Rama's very safe in doing so, better there than he was in the left-hand side lane for sure. Now, not trying to bring this ball forwards a little bit. Has the mind control to hand, and we all know what that can do if a &R can just push forwards into an aggressive spot. Like on healing as well, and he'll be able to then aggress the mid back again onto Mabius and try and keep things at bay. But both sides showing good signs of patience actually for me and just trying to keep themselves all ut utilized up really but yeah Tom's just showing Rama that I still know you're there mate I mean <laughs> you're not you're not fooling anyone dude that Tom's versus Rama matchup on the right lane is giving me some serious backyard ball vibes like they've been <laughs> yeah. staring at each other for this entire time and Rama has not moved an inch I love it I love it. There's just nothing Tomsey can do. He can't push up that position, and there's just no possibility for his teammates to get Rama out of position. This is looking good as overtime comes up in favor of ANR, but that can they make something happen? As the walls are about to open up, Matthew is trying to get control of the ball. Perhaps they have two supers to work with. It's a two on two, two on one. Luki, not a chance in the world. And ANR played it perfectly. They knew that playing time would be in their favor. So they just let the clock tick down to zero. And as the walls opened up, they got a free goal. I really love that when you look at just how easy ANR made that moment look. And it absolutely wasn't that. You know, maybe this was really just kind of baiting th things out with the super when, for all intents and purposes, he could have gone in aggressively. He could have gone for a shot. He could have done so many things. But then again, what ANR do is very, very textbook stuff. And they just play it slow, play it steady. And Humble just were not really in a position to respond to it. And they do need to go a bit more on the aggressive, I feel, as they are already proving that when it comes to those overtime scenarios, they are pretty cool as the cucumbers. Maybe it's popping the gadget here, a bit of an opening, potentially going forwards, but then shut down, slowed. Took a while, but eventually Humble do get the takedown. But as a result of losing a lot of this mid map control, they have to regain that one back. Yeah, not a bad early push here from. 
a and R. Not quite able to scar off it, but they'll be happy with the map control they gain. A bear gonna be placed down, and despite the shield, it's not gonna last for very long. A big kill coming through. Rama finds another. Mavius jumps in, and that's a team wipe that this time around will result into a goal. a and R taking over the lead here in the first minute. Yeah, much more convincing of a start, wasn't it? And you know, now Humble cannot go back to that same play style, just kind of sitting on the right-hand side lanes or left-hand side lanes and waiting. They're the ones that have got to make the move. Maybe it hasn't got super here. It'd be a good time to really make the most of this moment. But Lucas is in absolute opposition now. Rubber survives on as well, and that's terrible. It's just Cyclone versus a three, and not with my control. Could absolutely cause a problem on this right-hand side. Connecting three times onto Tomzy. A fourth as well. Gets the trade of Bear coming in as well. Maybe she's surely we have to get a moment here. Jumps in on the diner. Rubber still alive as well. It's a two versus O, and that should be another goal with this, and it is. Beautiful stuff from AR. They threw everything they had at him. The M's super. Trying to get a gadget popped in time as well, but nothing could stop ANR in their push. They'll be picking up this opening set, and that was a convincing one from ANR. Despite the slow play in the first set, it really felt like it was all calculated on their end. They were kind of just waiting for Humble to throw some sort of a response, and Humble played the waiting game, and it just didn't work out in their favor. ANR just one step ahead in this opening set, and Drap may have some parts to do with it, but I, I think Humble will need some changes here coming into set number two if they want to uh, stand more of a fighting chance. Me too, you hit the nail on the head, as always, honestly. Uh, you know, when you look at how A&R played that matchup, they, they were not indecisive. They were actually seriously confident with how they would fare when the time came and the walls went down. Humble just didn't really know where they stood. And the statistics there for me as well say the same story. Five, fours the five of the kills. And you know, Cyclone have not been the best of rounds at all, was he? I mean, the, the most of the side of that was with Luki and Tomsey on the three, but DPS as well. Not had a fantastic round in the 154 there. But certainly Humble have got to make some changes. And you know, a and really are that aggressive team that didn't necessarily always just go in blind and charging and holding W, but most more often than not, they're just timed aggressiveness. And that's what makes them so, so scary. I mean, when it comes to this next draft, I think that Humble got to take this one a bit slower and try to work through the situation because they need to give themselves an upper hand here. And there didn't seem to be many of them going into that last game. Yeah, definitely. So I, I, I think there was a bit of a, 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 a scare of committing to those fights, uh, especially in the first game. The second game, they did try uh, something a little bit different, but they were kind of, yeah, just playing that waiting game. And I think that against a team like Zeta Division, they're usually a step ahead and you, you'll need to take some risks to really take your chances. But moving on, we'll be moving to Ring of Fire for some hot zone action. Gonna be much more control based around the center of that map, but some good flanking can always be very deadly as well around the bushes or the walls on the right side. I'll be honest, I never expected to ever see a first-person perspective of going down a water slide <laughs> in the uh, in the lead-up to a draft, but hey, ho, here we are. Um, Bell coming in for Humble as the first pick, which is a very kind of safe pair of hands. And speaking of hands, banning out the Sam, Bonnie, and the Shelly as well. Uh, cool, this is still around, by the way, on this particular map to be potentially picked in. Not necessarily the best mode for Cadelius, but one that nonetheless can still cause a big stir when it comes to removing someone off the objective. Uh, bands on the side of A&R with Crow, Shelly, as well as Stoop. Squeak can come in and follow up after that, and I love that pick for A&R, honestly. Such a suppressive side lane thing to have. And banning out the, the Shelly and the Stoop, which do seem to line up quite well with the statistics of those win rates as well. So let's see what they're choosing to match this, because I think in terms of like mid, they haven't really got one at the moment. The sweep more often than not will play those side lanes and they have to think through what they might want to have for that idea. There it is. I, I love it. Yeah, I love it. I mean, honestly, I was expecting it to be banned here. You do have to make a decision though when it comes to when you use that super as to whether you're going to be able to get the value or whether you, get, you could potentially harm your team as opposed to be going on the aggressive sometimes without on ring of fire. But nonetheless, Cordelius is never a bad pick at the moment. Yeah, it's in a very good place for sure. 
it's looking really strong. But I'm really excited to see how it plays out here in competitive. I haven't had the chance to watch it all that much just yet. We'll see the Amber on the side of Humble. Again, very uh, uh, control base. Get that puddle down anywhere on the map. Slow down your position when they are walking in it. And if they're overextending their welcome, just burn them away. But yeah, I'm, I'm really curious how that curve deal is going to be working out here because it is quite an open map. Uh, and as you said, sometimes the Cordelia Super can be used against you. I'm pretty sure you can, your position can capture uh, the zone whilst being in the Shadow Realm, right? So that could be quite a problem if you are losing your matchup and, and the Cordelia, Cordelia has to fall back. We'll see the Carl as the final pick here for Team Humble. And I don't mind it. I, I feel like Carl is still in a pretty solid place. He's always just been at least good and he's definitely still just that right now i'm just wondering with the tara maybe for anr here they need a mid range and tara's not really that gus love that that's what we're talking about here but very surprised nonetheless to see no one actually kind of venturing towards that tara pick uh, i do love the carl but i feel like tara's got a bit more of a potential realistic there to really just lock you into your spawn and you know deflate anything that comes out of it but i do feel like for the most part like anr's comp is a solid one but Humbles as well, with the Carl can make some plays. The Amber can really deflate a lot of the ability for ANL to hide away within this bushy area, especially with that Cordelius, who's got a very short range. Um, so I actually quite like what they're putting together. I I'd be stupid to not side with the, with the Cordelius based comp, especially with the guns now as that final pick. I, I think I'm a bit more sold on ANR as to what they were going to be going in with. I was a bit worried until they had that gust to fit, really finalize things off. Jumping in, we have Cyclone going a bit aggressive on that left-hand side. Not going to try to punish him. He will be jumping forwards. Get some good damage, but will fall eventually. It does get him a little bit closer to unlocking that super, though. And I can't wait to see that Cordelia super and how Nob decides to play that off early on. Percentage-wise, it's a little bit of a lead for ANR, but nothing too worrying just yet as Nob is pushing up the right side this time around and now has Super as well to play with. Yeah, I'm glad, glad to see the lane swap there. It's a surprise to kind of see it go into those lanes when it starts. It squeaks far better on the left, but now Cyclone pushing on that very side with the help though of Mavis. They do seem to take care of it. Great cookie popper there from Mavis as well. And that secures the mid as Luki falls, leaving Tom's all alone on the right hand side. And that's going to then allow much more of a controlling factor as Nob jumps in with the gadget as well. Surprise is actually running that gadget, but hey, if it gets you the value on that left hand side, I'm all for it. And it is getting AR value 70% now to just at seven of Humble. Loki is going to go down, and AR at the finish line nearly. Mebius is taking a lot of damage. He will end up going down. Humble trying to retake the mid, but there's just not all that much they can do. It's a little too late now. 99% for ANR. All that Amabius has to do is walk into that zone. He'll do just that, unlocking the first game. One little detail here, Ark. We were talking a lot about a Cordelius. I'm pretty sure he went 0 and 3 uh, in, in this game, and yet that was one of the most dominant Hot Sun games we've seen in a hot minute. It's, it's just that ability, isn't it, to just uh, take away some of the aggressiveness, some of the objective play, and, and, and just allow your teammates to focus on where they want to have their matchup. And you, know, you can see the range of Cordelius, very, very limiting. And even to get your opposition within that radius to really charge a super, very challenging in the pro circuit. But you can just see the value it brings. And for that same reason, we don't always see it banned out. We're not quite at that Shelly moment yet. But you can see why it's necessary, in my opinion. Nob's now coming in. Cyclone doing a pretty decent job, though, of keeping him in bay. And should win the trade out on that left-hand side. Has given him some utility, but this is a much better start from Humble, despite the 26% that A&R have already been able to achieve in the mid. But they've got to be able to keep this up, always. This could be, they could be going two sets down very quickly if they don't. Yeah, things are going in the right direction for Humble, though. It's definitely a better story than in game number one. They still have a decent amount of mid control. Tomzi taking a good bit of damage, but Cyclone going aggressive is going to help lock in that kill onto Mavius. Nob going to be able to secure an easy and quick kill there against Cyclone. And AR, even though they are still in the lead, are showing some cracks in their defense just a little bit more as Humble is catching up and overtaking the lead. Great 
flying hook from Cyclone, but he is punished for it on the respawn there, but it's bought some valuable time as Luke gets some taps on Sorama there, who is marked up on that left-hand side. Maybe using the shield as well, and now all three members of A&R start to try to push this one back, and hence the separation. Cyclone goes to the left-hand side lane, tries to get that angle there on Sorama. Double are going to try and contest it. In the meanwhile, it's a lot of capture points going the way of Humble, and it's a much more convincing lead this time around, about 30% in it. We have a little bit of control, but they can get some kills. That will be turning very quickly, but on the left-hand side, it is Nob that gets the kills. Cyclone goes down, and that will alleviate some of the pressure. Well done by Nob on that left side to just remove some of the map control that Humble had built up throughout that game. And are only a couple of percentages behind, but Cyclone finds a kill on the right side. Nob is low HP on the left as well. Mebius will be able to get that kill onto the Carl. Oh. Gets the follow up onto Luki. And this could be huge now for AR. Despite being a little bit behind, they have the man advantage for a couple of seconds, which helps them catch up. What a play from Mabius. I mean, honestly, because on that right hand side, Cyclone won the lane, and he needed to come in clutch for his team there and bring back some feist. I love it. Luke in the middle, though, has got that super hand as well. Might choose to mark up Mavius, but actually now he's so low. One single attack should seal it. Cyclone coming back in to help his team. Not staying alive for quite a long time there as well, but 85% and climbing for Humble. And Team Wipe is now needed for a and Well, this game goes the way of Humble. And it's looking like they've already get deflated and defeated here. As everyone's standing still. They know it's over. And Humble start to fight one back and get one on the board. Finally, we're not too little too late. There's still plenty of time here for a potential turnaround. Great to see Humble strike back. This was looking like, and maybe a quicker series than we were hoping for. But Humble are delivering here in game two of Hot Zone. Let's see if they can double down and even out the scoreboard. Cyclone searching again for Nob, who's keeping himself concealed. Now, finally giving away his position, trying to make his way forwards. Just, again, he needs to try to get that utility by gaining that close proximity or some taps. So these early game moments are so vital for Humble in that respect. If they can just keep AR suppressed like this, low HP, with nothing ready as a response, and they can get some great time on the objective. Great cookie popper there, though, from Mabius, and that helped. On that left-hand side from Nob will secure the takedown. Very important moment as AR now take an affirming position in the mid. Okay, low HP, so is Mebius Cyclone trying to close down the gap on the right-hand side, but Nob is there. We'll transport him to the Shadow Realm and take him down to Mushroom to heal up as well. And things are not looking all bad for AR right now. There's a bit of a lead. And until now, a bit more map control, and we'll are still fighting back and now have a bit more presence throughout the mid. Tom Z will be taking quite low HP. The burn not quite gonna connect from Tom Z either. And Nob versus Cyclone is gonna be their private little 1v1, but it is Nob that ends up taking that one home. However, the rest of the map does seem to be going a little bit more in favor of Humble, but just as I say that, we have uh, some good retakes on the side of A and R, and they both have the lead percentage-wise. And that fight in the mid is not one that Mebius can win. Nob also burning down. This is looking like Humble have a chance here to make something happen. Very, very close stuff, but Humble looking far better in this set than they were in Brawl. That is certainty here. Rather though, just pushing that left-hand side in there. Luki falls, Cyclone pushing into the Shadow Realm, and now Nob will be trying to close himself in. He gets this wrong, it could be disastrous, but no, he gets it absolutely right as he comes out bang on time as well to Tomzy. And this should be a and R now, just getting hunkered down. There's the Amber Oil in the mid, but that's a somewhat of a saving grace, but they have not got the time on the side of Humble. Now they've got to start to secure some kills, retake the mid, because a &R can smell the blood, and they're going for the jugular. Absolutely, so this is looking complicated for Humble now. So low HP on two of their players, and so... Yeah, it's over. It's over. That is going to be Anar picking up the second set. This one, as you said, it truly felt like Humble stood much more of a chance than Imbrobo. Like, they had some fighting back energy on their side. But it ended there. It literally just ended there. AR looking very strong so far in this matchup and this set three. It's looking more and more likely like, like it might be the final one for Humble this month. 
it's looking that way. And it makes me sad, honestly, because we see this again month by month from Humble. Dogs and Lobster, now or never, all their previous titles to hand. And, and they do progressively get better as the sets go on, but it's still always slightly under what they need to really cause a problem. And their time is running out quickly. a and don't tend to be reverse swept in these kind of scenarios very often. I've never seen it happen, so not very often, never. Um, <laughs> and for me, Pablo now been showing clear signs of awareness when it comes to draft. 100%, look at Nob. <laughs> I mean, I say it's clear signs of awareness to draft, except for banning Cordelius, which is the brawl which they left open for Nob to be able to pick and get those 11 kills. Um, <laughs> maybe it's though, despite the five, they bring in a big old bunch of uh, DPS to the uh, the equation as well. Despite actually having the most of anyone, again, it's a and they're just playing that objective. It was a much closer set, but if it still goes the way of your opposition, it still doesn't leave you in a good spot. And for Humble, it may be too late for them to rekindle that kind of confidence that they need to be able to turn things around. I hope for their sake that that is not the case. And set three brings something more victorious for them, but it's it's tough to see it any other way at the moment as we go into knockout. Gold on gold should be the map. This is a chance though, Teddy, to bring down the pace a little bit. And against a team that have got two consecutive sets, that might be going for them here. You're absolutely right. Knockout can be a, a fantastic game mode to just slow down the pace a little bit, try to get that sort of reset after a bit of a losing streak. Let's see how Humble will approach this one as they will be betting out the Shelly, the Bunny and the Tick on their end. a and ticking up Mr. Peace Squeak. And I think it was RT, I didn't quite get to see. Yeah, it was RT. And they'll go for a Gene first pick, actually. I don't mind it at all. Can do wonderfully well at scouting your opposition in their bushes. And obviously the, the, the pools can be a game changer. Now it is a little bit scary because there are so many brawlers that have ways to deal with pools, either by placing some sort of spawnable down that will tank it for them, or by, you know, just being tanky enough or have enough damage up close to, to deal with being pulled. We'll see the Gus as their first pick. I don't mind it at all. We saw how successful it was in the previous game mode. I don't know if it will be as successful here, but the Grey can give a lot of really fun counter play. Try to go for some counter uh, attacks and, you know, basically just TP down onto your opposition and shut them down. If there is any weakness on the side of ANR, I feel like that Grey is going to do a great job at shutting that down and capitalizing. Really interesting, interesting stuff. I love the guts, I love the grey. But hey, now I've got a chance here. Leon was not the one I was thinking of. I was thinking maybe Eve, to be honest, because simply she's not been picked yet and it's still a pretty decent map for it. But Leon, we've seen it in our bring this in before and it gets a lot of value. Carl could be used for aggression as well, but ultimately better to have that in their hands than combined with the guts on the other side of the field. They are lacking range, big punchy ideas, bells, Brock still available here as well. But you need some range, you already do, and Leon's not enough to cut it. Gene will be able to chip damage his way. Max, okay, wasn't what was on my mind, but closing the gap can achieve similar results as well. I just, I just don't necessarily feel there's much synergy. I mean, with the there's, there's certainly between the Max and the Gene, right? But I mean, this is not and this is not a common comp to run in Gold on Gulch. I mean, for all intents and purposes, Humble have got a much better idea going on. Gus, Gray. Ruffs. I mean, that is all going to work well. I, I feel like Humble should probably win this in terms of the draft, but honestly, I mean, A&R could make this work with just sheer outlandish aggression. Yes, the Ruffs can sandbag against the Gene and deflect the pull. Yes, the Great can come in on the side of the Humble and just kind of you know, pick off those final moments of HP and weakness. But there's just something about this comp that screams A&R. And if Humble just don't know how to deal with this push, you know, and unpredictability of which this comp brings, this could be a 3 0 sweep. Yeah, I'm with you. I feel like Humble has a comp that is a bit more traditional to this map, but at this point, AR, they're able to just disrupt the meta a little bit and find their own say in that draft. Already low HP on Luki, he will be falling back, and they're actually going to be getting powered up now by the roughs. So they are playing the long game. Map control wise though, there's generally nothing to work with on the side of ANR. Luki's gonna pull that lollipop drop away. 
Let's make sure that those walls aren't going to be removed, as well as that invisibility that they were all able to have through that gadget. I mean, honestly, I, I, I really worry for Humble because, I mean, as soon as you've got those sandbags you know, eradicated from top, there's the second one already. We've only just in the first round. Big taps to the Toms as well. Lukey Low shielded over, but still a three versus two here. And I don't see how a Humble are going to be able to get out of this. Two versus one. Surely now the healing puffs from Rama, maybe it's, and himself can take care of this. They should not mess this one up, right? And I don't want to speak too soon. So quick goes off the gas. Yeah. Exactly. And now it's this next round. There's one set of sandbags left. And as soon as they're down, it's a free gene pool with everyone, you know, hunkered behind this rough pick for the field promotion star power, which, again, it's a great thing to have. Over time, if you're all clustered, you know, you're going to have more HP. But, I mean, it's just going to help Rama just land one of these pools and especially with the help of the max speed as well. I, I don't see how a and R don't win this, this game. Yeah, I, I'm completely with you. It was a big first round to win here for a and R, especially since they carry over two supers. Because sometimes you lose the first round, but you have two, three supers on your side. Your opposition have none. Then the second round is, I don't want to say free, but it, it, it's looking good to go your way. This time around, we don't really have that effect. Gene pools are one of the most influential supers in the game, and Rama has it at hand. The last sandbags, I believe, were pop now as well. Yeah. And a lot of damage coming through. Tomzi surely is going to be going down. He does find some damage, but not nearly enough to get a kill. And Cyclone is left in a one versus two once again. Rama and Mavis is just playing with their food at this point. Trying not to feed it along the way. Speed hands over. A little knockback and potential into the gas here. No. Should have cyclone there. But Rama just stands still because he knows that Mavis has got all the HP in the world to handle it even if he does go down. And that is another convincing game going the way of a and R. I love the attempt at what was a, let's be honest, the more traditional draft of the side of Humble, but I mean, they just can't really afford to be this close this early and depend on those sandbags because it's just going to lead to gene pools being more available for A&R. And when you're looking at a match point, that is not where you want to be. Humble all take the left as A&R scout the right. It's going to be as starting as that to find out where everyone is. Walking sick popped by Luki, but will he land it? That's the question. Otherwise, again, more utility just being wasted. And a pull once again from Luki. Not pretty. You're gonna find a player, but burn through some util. Rama is low HP. You just don't really have anything to commit to that fight just yet. No TP on the gray to go in and get that kill. So they'll let him get away with it. And for now, this is looking much better from Humble. Some good tags across the board. They have some supers to work with as well. This looks like their first real fighting chance in this set. As speed will be popped by Mebius. Rama has that pull, a TP coming through. It's gonna be a one for one, but Luki is low HP and Rama should be there to commit. He's not able to get the kill though. Luki will fall. Cyclone versus Mebius. Surely Cyclone picks that one up, and that's gonna be the first round on the board for Humble this set. What a great kooky popper there, just to deflate the whole moment, because a and R could have taken that for me. They really could have, but the sandbags were there. Rubber couldn't find then the angle for the pull, and yeah, honestly, Cyclone just timed it perfectly. Luke did some great plays as well. But now they're hunkered together, and Rubber has to call the pull. But it's an early sandbag for his trouble, but it's okay. Doing it early in the round is better than doing it later. And he will go down and punish for it. Shielded is Luki, and it's the best chance for Humble to be able to take something back to themselves, get a game on the board. Great from Luki going in there at just the right time, not going in Viz, but it's going to be a matter of time now for Humble to be able to get themselves together and just get themselves back in the game. A nice strike from now, but in one versus three is usually unwinnable. We've seen some miracles before, but this is not going to be one of them. And Humble still fighting, always, all the way until the end. But they are facing a bit of an uphill battle. And ZNR still has a match point in hand. There's still no room for mistakes here for Humble, but we do see a spark of hope after that game win. Let's see now as the horns are locked again. Great connection from Luke in the pickup as well. <laughs> really nicely done from Cyclone. And it feels like the result of that last game may have absolutely 
caused some greater levels of communication and strategy to evolve along the way. That was what was honestly for me lacking in those first opening moments of knockout. As this comp starting to show some legs, connections onto Nob as well, just keeping him low and Luki full HP and the result of that field promotion star power on the roughs. It's just going to, over time, give more and more power to Humble. So, yeah, you know, actually just going to go into the gas, it seems. I don't mind that decision under the circumstances. Humble are already looking strong. Why make them even stronger? And just keeping that one super behind Cyclone as opposed to all three members of Humble. Yeah, I don't mind the play here from from Humble. I, I feel like they, uh, from ANR, sorry. I feel like they just have to take their chances to carry over as much util as they can into the second round. They do have an extra super available in their hands. We'll see how they put it to use as the invis is a little bit situational at times as you can easily get scouted out at a pro level. They will make sure that short points are gonna be covered and that you can't just catch your opposition off guard. Look at him, Tom's still got sandbags to hand, Cyclone's still got the shield. There's a lot of things that AR can run into problems with, as well as that dangerous cookie popper gadget that we've seen time and time again from Cyclone turning games with just that alone. But it's this fishing gear is bad that honestly AR able to capitalize from a lot. There they go down the sandbag. So has he got any more after this? I believe so. Yeah, he does. Nob's got super as well. They run away for a fall. This is what AR do so well. It's a waiting game here, but Luka gets pulled in. Will he go down? He's down to 350 pieces of five. 110. Maybe this comes with the phase shift, keeping everyone low, but he will go down. Not we'll have to get two kills here for his time, and he can't. Humble bring it back, and they get themselves a set. It's not over yet. We've got a match in our hands, Teddy. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff. Not nearly winning that 1v2 at the end as well, but it was that big TP in from Luki that made all the difference there towards the end, being able to just create that opening, get away with it too, because even though he went down, it ended up being a two on two and one that Humble was happy to take. Great stuff from Humble, their ability to strike back. And as I said earlier, they always fight all the way until the end. And so far, it seems like their end hasn't come just yet. Great stuff from Humble because, again, when you're that far behind and you haven't really had those moments of scoreboard notoriety, to get set, that means a lot, especially against the match point. Those are turning moments for teams that can really place them on the map. And for AR, maybe just a little bit overconfident. We saw the thumbs down pinned in, where it seemed that Rommel was saying this one's all done and dusted. So I admire the result there from Humble to fight back. And look at that from Cyclone. Seven kills on the board. Matching effectively two players on the side of AR, just his own. But what a, what a moment for Humble just to turn things around and bring back the sway of things, take their fate into their own hands effectively here. Not out just yet, but AR will keep this pressure on. Again, they're only one game away from another match point, but depriving them of it was really quite key in knockout. So we're going to bounty, Canal Grande up next, Teddy, and a very important draw for Humble. Absolutely, so it's been better and better on the side of Humble. Brovo didn't look that good on their end. It was super convincing for ANR, but already in hot zone, much more of a fighting chance. Knockout, they took home, and Bounty is a game mode that will resemble Knockout a little bit as well. Let's see if Humble can bring it all the way to a fifth and final set. Eve, Shelly, and Tick are going to be banned out by ANR. Humble on their side will be banning the Carl, Daryl, and the Gene. And they will be the one first picking. It's going to be a squeak on their side. We saw him earlier already in Hot Zone on Ring of Fire. And it is one of the brothers that just screams map control. Able to lock down areas, get into some really good position and his super as well. Being able to uh, be sent over walls can really help dislodging some opponents if they manage to get into uh, a cozy spot somewhere and just, you know, be a, a permanent problem for you. That's not going to be happening when you have a squeak on your team. I mean, statistically, ANR just got the better of the Wimpix, and that's what I was about to lead on to talk about is Cordelius. And that is honestly a scary prospect. It really is for Humble. Um, especially if they can close that gap 
keep the pressure on. That's where this comp from A&R is going to come into its own. And the Squeak Mono get an opportunity to really do much if they get the Cordelius to cycling through this. I mean, the, the saving grace by Alvarez, they've banned out Daryl. Uh, but that would be feeding a lot of value into the Cordelius pick. They lack some range or tankiness. But I worry about the idea of going towards tankiness. Yeah, Mr. P is great actually here can cause much more of a problem. They can't go on the aggressiveness too much here because of the Cordelius. I mean, it just shreds through tanks and you know, you've got to then play a bit more of a ranged opportunity. I think Mr. P was a very good pick here, actually from Humble. Adding one more little idea to it, maybe a bell for good measure, just to ricochet some shots, which again, in Canal Grande, a lot of clustering tends to occur. Um, so having something like that with a bit more DPS, because the Mr. P will struggle in that regard. They might be into a decent comp here. A&R will have the third and final pick, of course, but Let's see how they want to fare, Nita. I mean, it's not a bad shout at all, but you do have to close that gap. And it's not always the easiest thing in Canal Grande to do that. You got a squeak for, for the range. It's a bit of a risky comp, actually, now that they put the Nita to it. Yeah, I mean, I feel like they had to, you know, with uh, Mr. P and a squeak to go for something that would negate even ideas like Mortis or Buzz, which would have been really problematic against them. Nita will certainly help do that, but we'll still see the Mortis. The Mortis still comes through, and I thought the Nita <laughs> surely would be enough to, you know, dissuade them from making it happen. But it's ANR. They have aggressive ideas, and if you let them happen, they will certainly jump onto the opportunity. This is an exciting one. It is really an exciting one. And on paper, again, the Humble was a comp that, you know, is just a little bit more traditional, but in our we are with some explosive brawler picks that can really pop off. I say I told you so, but I mean, it makes sense. The Moist makes sense. I mean, there's no DPS for Humble. And he's just gonna lack considerably in range, but and I've got to play it right. That's, that's still going to come down to the, the, the point. And it's maybe it's on it. That gives me a lot of faith, as we know how aggressive he is. He can't go overly aggressive, but this is not out there crazy stuff. This is AR reading through the situation. And all they've got to do is ensure they time their runs wisely. And Humble could be really in trouble here. I, I mean, the Squeak's probably their best performing brawler. The, the Mr. P is good, but under these circumstances, they can struggle. Yeah, certainly so. I mean, the map control here is completely crazy. Humble have control of both lanes, of both sides of the canal. And things are complicated positioning-wise for a &R. They do have that blue star. Of course, the Mortis pretty much got that for free. But regardless, their positioning is rough for the least. Now, trying to push up that right sand. Hasidi did have that party super to help him out, and he will survive that engagement. Come out on top, only with 400 HP, but that's a big kill for ANR, giving them a three stars lead now. Oh, no, I've got punished there, though. And Cyclone comes out on top. Rama's gonna have to try to keep Cyclone back, and he's got the brute better hand. He's going from Luki, big connection onto Nob as well, but no slowers. I know Trevor was saying this earlier, and I was thinking exactly the same thing. The slow is still so good in these scenarios, but since the same reaction, everyone's gravitating over to it. Look at this push, everyone clustered in, and down goes their armor. Maybe it's low HP as well, can't try and push back on the situation. And now Humble taking a Fermi roll in the mid, full HP, and they've got a &R under the thumb. No, man, super. Might want to send someone to the Shadow Realm. Maybe he's pushing up against Tom Z. Can he get a super in time? Though no, he goes down. And Tom Z will survive as well as Nobis chasing him down. But he is in the Shadow Realm with Cyclone. And as he comes out, they already they know where he lives. And they shut him down humble. Now with another game picked up. I think that's three in a row now. If I am correct. And this is where things are starting to slowly fall apart for ANR as this looked like a match that they really had in their hands and slowly might be slipping away. Oh, I stand by it. I feel like ANR have actually got the better confidence not playing it better than Humble. That's the reality of it. And you can't underestimate your opposition. And I feel like at the moment, since knockout, ANR have been doing that a little bit and they can't afford to. Not the moment, not this momentum shift that we're seeing. Not completely out of position there. Was never going to come out of there alive. Rama trying his best. He'll go down as well. Maybe it comes back and swings the stars. My goodness me. We need to see more of that. The squeak will finish him off. 
That brings it back to a 10 to an 8, but you need to get this moment with Mortis. If you're going to bring it in the draft, you've got to demonstrate that it's relevant and, and worthy to bring back some value here. Yeah, I'm absolutely with you. It's one of those brawlers that can be a big X factor, a big win condition. And so far, it hasn't been that. Two stars behind for ANR. Mebius not quite going to go for his bats, and instead he goes down and goes home empty handed. A couple of trades later, and Humble are four stars ahead, four stars away from winning this game. And our need to make a move as Mebius does have super. There is a chance that he can make something happen. They don't even have that many stars above their head on the side of Humble, so they will need a bunch of kills if they want to throw tur turn this one around. Mebius with bats, Mebius with the follow-up as well. And he's gonna pick up the two-piece. Now it's only one star, but Nob is one shot, and he goes down to Cyclone. Humble have done it. They are bringing this match back to a set five and taking us all the way. I mean, that was just pure sadness because the second we started to see what Mavis' was, thought process was, it didn't matter. It was too little too late. And for Humble, I mean, the stars were in the middle of the map. No one to be, like, worried about on the right-hand side. You can't ever underestimate your opposition. You can't. And that's why I feel a and have started to do a little bit too much. So, you know, for Heist is our fifth and final uh, game mode of, the, of this series. That is not a great one at all for ANR when you're finding yourself on a bit of a loose streak. And if you just get it wrong, it, it's done and it's GG's. And for ANR, they need these points on the BSC leaderboard. And they've got the saving grace of being in a, a number two spot in the SPS and therefore challenge finals you know, is where they can potentially rekindle something. But they do not want to be taking a loss to Humble. I mean, and no disrespect to Humble at all. They played this better. You can't disrespect them, respect them at this point in time. Six kills for Luki, five for Cyclone. Tom's on two as well, and that's still 50% more than two of the members of ANR. I mean, they are looking better and better at the moment, and ANR have got to make a change and go back to playing a little bit safer. I still stand by the Moist in Bounty. It wasn't a bad idea whatsoever, especially into a Mr. P, into a Nita. They just were not timing the runs right. And Humble are working very well closely together in their communication to take care of the strategy. They can see what ANR are trying to do. And they're just shutting it down before it happens. Yeah, I, absolutely. So, I mean, Humble played that one phenomenally well. And as much as I think that Mortis could have been a huge threat, same for Cordelius, really. I think Humble showed how important teamwork is and shutting down any of those aggressive ideas. So Mortis swoops in, sweeps in, they, they were ready to just take care of him and not let him be as much of a threat as he would have been. The Cordelius, same thing. He snaps out of the Shadow Realm. There's two people surrounding him, just ready with a crossfire. Just really solid stuff overall from Humble. And now that they have the, the, the whole world of momentum with them getting into set five, A and R need to feel threatened, and Rama is not smiling nearly as much as he was in the first two sets. This, this is it. This is exactly it. At the beginning, Humble were nowhere to be seen, and A and R was sweeping this easy peasy. Right? It, it wasn't looking like they were being challenged. And that's where you get a little bit of the ego kind of shine through from a, on the side of A&R. We've, we've seen that before with them. And sometimes it can work for them and it's great you know, sort of entertainment value for sure. But I don't know how funny it is for them at this present moment in time with the realization they are one set away from actually not going through to the semifinals. And again, we were talking about this coming on, that the last time that Humble were there was in the semifinals of February. It's taken all year long to get back to where they kind of started. But that could be happening before our very eyes. Because they span on both sides. Now that is what I kind of need to see on any safe zone, or rather any heist mode, as a and pick first pick Shelly. And that was a brawl that should have really been on the bands on the side of Humble. And they banned uh, the Colette, which I think is a fantastic first pick brawler to have here, as the Crow is as well. But Shelly needed to be there alongside the Cathedrals for me, his body coming in for them. Yeah, the problem with the Shelly here is that when you're facing it, you're going to want to remove those bushes and you're going to need to have enough range to, you know, not get completely melted down. And that means that there's a lot of different factors that Humble needs to take into account with his draft. I think Amber was pretty much a given, as I said, you know, remove the bushes. There's one brawler that does it best in the game right now. That's definitely going to be Amber. The Bonnie pick, I don't mind either. I think it can do fairly well. 
but still, it is a little bit scary with that first pick Shelly coming through from ANR. I feel like they are kind of the ones just deciding what this draft is going to be looking like and Humble are more the reactionary side. Carl is available here and ANR do champion it pretty well. Brock as well, of course. Yeah, Carl coming in first. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Brock pairing with it as with all these bushes down. I mean, you know, it's going to become a long range affair. Lola though, coming in. Don't mind that at all. The bell, I think, still available on the other side of things. And that could be a great counter to it. Let's see what Humble will bring in as the third and final. But I, I feel like Humble have got, again, the more traditional ideas. Amber, bit of an out there wild card. But as you rightly say, if the bushes are going down anyway, then maybe be the ones in control of it first and deflate what the Shelly can bring to the table here. But again, the Brock, Bell, both good shouts. To get this right, then it'll be Humble going through to the semi-final. It is going to be the Bell. You know, it, it's it's a very even draft now. Um, I, you kind of feel like Humble have got that flow in their veins right now from you know, bringing things back around ever since knockout in that third set. They haven't really missed the mark, and if they land a couple of them on the side of this bell pick in this set, in this game, it could well be them going through to the semifinals for A&R. It, again, uh, before we started the potential reverse sweep, I've never really seen them get reverse sweeped. This could be a first here, and Humble are looking like they are in control. Four games in a row is what Humble got now. And their win streak might come to an end, might not. Let's find out as we jump into the fifth set. Mebius, low HP pretty much off the bat. Not really closing the gap nicely here. Going all aggressive, gets a super off onto Luki. Follow up. Gadget as well, but not quite able to find the kill. Not will be able to burn him down. Maybe is now in a good position on the right hand side. It's the blue save though that's been taking the most damage so far. As Mebius is definitely not able to match that sort of damage output just yet. And at last, and are able to fend off their save. And it's a 14% lead in favor of Humble. We were focused a lot on Nob, but it was actually Cyclone on the bottom side of the map that was doing absolute work, and it's actually given Humble the lead so far. I overshot that, but does manage to get the takedown of Rama. And Thomas down the left. We'll go in and try to get maybe it's lined up with the safe here. Getting whittled down. It's Nob in the mid. Can super through this if he wants, but he will go for it. No slow though on Cyclone, who's got the speed enough to be able to dance around these shots. Moving forwards now as well. and. I, I worry for a &R. I really do. I mean, at the moment, Humble are playing better. They've got the momentum. Sort of keep up shutting these ideas down. But as I say it, it is Cyclone who does go down and Tomsey soon to fall potentially here. a and starting to get their pace together a little bit better. Maybe just trying to close the gap. Is able to make it a one-for-one -one trade. The problem really on the side of a &R with the, the Shelly pick is that it's going to be much better in the early game because you have those play pitch and gadgets and you still have the bushes as well and potentially a speed gear to close the gap and be up close and personal. Problem is, no, there's not nearly as many bushes anymore. No more gadgets available either. And in that early game, a and were losing, which is really not what you'd want to see if you're an a and fan. And Humble right now, definitely looking like the better team and the most likely one to go home with a match point after this game. What a result it would be for Humble to be able to do this. Uh, it's 10 seconds on the clock. Rama's nowhere near the safe. Maybe it's his low HP as well. That's just not... And I don't even get close to getting the damage which they need. And it's Humble moving on to match point. A&R has broken this. I mean, not with the thumbs down. Yeah, but that's where it kind of started, wasn't it? <laughs> In knockout, that was pretty much what made Humble shift into fifth gear and start to get things under control. And now it's going completely out of control for A&R. They were sweeping this series. And, and that in itself was kind of, you know, the, the way it went. They were so confident that they had this in the bag, they just took their the foot off the gas. And in return, Humble put theirs on it. My words, what a turnaround this game has been. The early game here, not looking too bad for an arm. I'm able to get a nice kill onto Cyclone. Luki is low HP as well, and control-wise, it's a and with the mid-bush all in their control, no need 
to defend if you have map control. Tomsi at last gonna be burning down that bush and Mepius with it. Gonna be taking a good bit of damage. Cyclone is gonna jump towards the save, but doesn't really get nearly as much damage done as he was hoping for. Mepius gets to survive off that engagement as well, which is kind of crazy to be honest. And suddenly a and R not looking all bad so far in this early game. Yeah, better. Far, far, far better at the moment from A&R, but we've just seen how easily they just do tend to, you know, get overconfident. And I kind of wonder how long it will be before they lose their focus yet again. So far, so good. It's a small amount of deficit damage, let's be honest, though, for Hubble to be able to retake and just get a bit of mid-control here, which they're lo looking for at the moment. Maybe it's popping Gadget there as well, and he, he, he's going to probably lose it if he doesn't use it. Straight into the wall, I'm not really sure about that, to be honest, and I think partially to do with the fact that he wants to use it quicker after popping it, and then instantly lost the momentum and then predictability of the play. Now, damage coming in from Rama, making it 76% now in favor of A&R, now 70%. Tumble haven't really got themselves into position to get the damage, but that could easily change very quickly here. Oh, certainly. They get two kills in a row now, and sure, I mean, the bell on the safe is not exactly going to be the biggest threat, as it's, it's not a very big DPS output. But nevertheless, it is humble now with full map control. Cyclone going down, though, might be a problem because Nob is closing the gap, gets Lucky to a one-shot situation. And even though Rama is not able to finish him off, he's dealing damage on the red safe instead. 15 seconds left now. And potentially a double match point coming up. Unless ANR cannot stop Humble in their final push. There's some damage coming through. It's only 2% now. Surely they can finish it right here, right now. Team Humble is the draw. <laughs> decided with a tie we do it all again we do it all again humble surely thought they had that in the bag it was and i just crept forward a little bit to get some damage just enough to keep them alive but oh dear oh dear oh dear i mean honestly i'm wondering if this tie might not be in the advantage of humble to be honest you know they still have the match point in hand and that game was definitely looking so much better for ANR than the first game of uh, of Heist. A uh, beautiful play from Cyclone there, winning that 1v1 against the car. Nope, getting some good damage from afar with the Clay Pigeons. Not really able to find all that much value just yet, though. As Humble now have control of the mid, Tomzy finds Rama. Rama also finds Tomzy. It's a one-for-one -one trade. But not will fall. And at last, Humble are starting to build up just a little bit more map control, even though they're still behind by the tiniest bit damage-wise. Once they take care of Mebius, which they should be able to easily do as a crossfire. They have some opportunities to get some good damage off safe. And look at that, Humble now with ever so slight lead. I think the way the last game ended might actually be helpful for a and r because they just need a bit of time to regroup and give you know second chances in the scenario but they are desperate at the moment there's no doubt about it they know that they've left it so late now that they kind of deserve to lose in that respect as luke getting a big tap on rama which again increasing the value of that bell i think that's where for me it kind of all went wrong that it originated with the picking of that lola because they could have gone for bell and they wouldn't have had nearly as much of a problem as they are having right now Humble now getting themselves into the mid and just waiting for that moment for Cyclone to jump in with a HP behind it. Tom's keeping back Knob and maybe it's got to make a play at some point here. It's on the right hand side though where things are going down as Cyclone will fall. And that at 25 seconds left on the clock is a crucial moment. a and got to get forward though and just secure Tom's which they do. Get some damage down quick. Yeah, time is running out for a and R. They have fought off a match point already, but they can can they lock in a match point of their own? Nob is getting quite low HP though. They're trying to get up close. The super goes through. Rama deals some damage, but it's not gonna be enough. Humble, take it home. And ANR, they will go home empty-handed. Look at the excitement here. Because this was 
a huge reverse sweep to secure Rama himself. Can't believe it though. Not how he expected today to go. To go. He knows that they messed up. They got overconfident. And humble. I mean, they did what well, they did best. They humbled them. What a way to start the day in the NBA. I mean, AR had it, but that was the very point of their downfall. They felt they had it so much that it was completely within all doubt that it would go any other way. And what happens? Humble just stepped it up. And like you said, they humbled the victory. And, and that's what you've got to do. You can't let the mind games take their toll. That, that's a terrible result for A&R. You know, they were favorites for me to go a long way today. And they need those points. They are one of those teams that really do. If Humble can make it to today's grand finals, imagine what that would do for them as they were 100% the underdogs coming in. Well, they are not the underdogs going out. That is for sure. Cyclone with 17 takedowns in heist. And look at the DPS across the board. I mean, just completely outmatched. A&R stood no chance in that fifth and final set. Yeah, it was an uphill battle for A&R and that Shelly first pick, even though it looked incredibly threatening, I think that's kind of how it can be against Shelly sometimes, you know? You need to respect that it's there, but it, there are ways to deal with it and Humble absolutely showed that in that final set. It was just really beautifully done by Humble. What a phenomenal reverse sweep to kick off the day. And A&R, I had a lot of people put them as favorites today to, to win or, you know, maybe get second place. They're out already. Cyclone gonna be your MVP for this match. And I mean, we just saw it. 17 kills in that final set, helping them drive it home. Definitely deserved. Absolutely so. Absolutely so. I mean, you know, Humble were in fourth place, if I remember correctly, coming into today. So 219 points. A and R were down in seventh on 181. Now, sure, A and R in the SPS can go to the challenge finals and have a chance to be in contention for more points to give themselves that bump. But at the moment, what's certain is that Humble are locking themselves in today where it matters most. And you know, that's where you want to be, you know, and not just going out there thinking that you you've got it all under control of a sweep. That's a disaster result for A&R, and they'll be kicking themselves, no doubt about it. Well, we were united on the casting desk for that last matchup. We all thought that A&R were going to be able to sweep it. They obviously did as well, <laughs> and we were wrong. So sorry for those of you over at event.brawlstars.com, but we'll try and do better in our next up matchup as well. But uh, yeah, I'm sure, Teddy, a couple of people uh, were not getting the points for that one. Yeah, welcome to EMEA, guys. This is how we do it here. <laughs> we... we it's really tough to call. It always is. Every single match, we have a lot of upsets. And this meta right now as well, there's just so many uh, options available. Bobby tweeted about it, uh, I think today or yesterday as well, saying just so many options available, expect upsets. And EMEA just, you know, it, 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 it's on the menu. The upsets are on the menu. And speaking of upsets, our next matchup could very well be exactly just that. Zayth Division versus Reply Totem. This is a huge one. Absolutely massive for Reply Totem. A bit of a make or potential break moment. Zayth Division, of course, will start with first. Gary Meow and Nowie. They've already locked themselves in for the World Finals as a result of qualifying for the Snapdragon Pro Series Challenge Finals just this week. So they are in the golden spot. They're in the driving seat. They can actually deprive teams of points. And that is such a position of power for them to be in. We've seen them time and time again. They're winning monthly finals. Last month, though, it was the closest they came. And it was against this very team. It was a match point, match point situation. And they still managed to come out on top. Well, they will not forget how close Reply Totem came to it. And again, Reply Totem this month, Teddy, Joker, Maori, and Maru. If they get a win here in the quarterfinals against Sata, what will that do for them? I would be absolutely massive. I, as we discussed a little bit in the pre-show, the fact that they did not qualify for SPS means that they're not getting any of those bonus points. And right now, facing Zeta in the first round, they might as well uh, lose this match, right? It's very, very possible that they go home 
in the quarterfinals here. And that means that there's only one month left to kind of catch up. Yes, they are still in second place, I believe, in points right now, but other teams are going to be closing the gap. And we've seen from Reply Totem that their inconsistency has kind of been brought back uh, to, to the forefront this year, where month to month, it's very different performances. We see them winning Masters and literally for a month being the best team in the world to not qualifying for SPS, losing to a and in the monthly qualifiers of July as well, and uh, just making it through the lower bracket to qualify today. It's really ups and downs, and the ups are very high and the lows are very low. It's just a matter of what kind of form does Reply Totem show up today. I hope for their sake, they've had a good amount of time to brush off the defeat of last month. But I mean, they made the grand finals. I mean, so, some call that defeat. I personally think that's a pretty decent result. 78% of you over at defense.brawlstars.com feel like Zeta's division today will still remain consistent. The 22% of Reply Totem. I think that, that is a bit of a disservice to Reply Totem and how fierce they are. But remember, they are the Mobile Masters champions in the SPS for this year. To be fair, coming off the back of that, they did dwindle a little bit, didn't make the challenge season even there. But now they are looking better. Grand finals result last month is still a grand finals result. The bands are in, 8-Bit, Rico, and also the Crow for Reply Totem. The Tara pick coming in from Zeta, which is a very early stage for it, I don't mind it. But Ruffs, Carl, and Sam bound up by them. Shelly first pick. With the win rates there saying that Squeak is actually an 80% win rate, and that's next to follow for Zeta. So make what you will of that one. Yeah, I like the Squeak here for sure. I mean, just lock down certain areas of the map and remove some of the corridors that your opponents can go through, and suddenly you're funneling your opposition towards where you want them to be. You see the Penny still quite high up there as well in the draft. And probably that has fallen off a little bit recently. It wasn't the biggest nerfs in the world, but it's been a, a couple nerfs now that have uh, hit her and a lot of other brawlers that can deal with it really nicely. Uh, we'll see the Max picked up by Reply Totem turn up that pace and it's going to help a brawler like Shelly and Sandy closing the gap and getting up close and personal. I like that idea very much here from Reply Totem. Not the most traditional mid on hard work mine on the, with the Max. You do usually tend to see a little bit uh, more of range. But honestly, I, I'm down for it. I mean, Reply Totem, they want to uh, go in aggressive in this opening set. I mean, if this is not Cadelius, then we know that, okay, the, the bro's not thinking Hard Rock Mine for Cadelius. I personally pick it's probably one of the better maps for it. Um, but fair enough. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming then, what, a squeak mid here? I mean, interesting ideas from Zeta, but to the max, the Sandy, very traditional ideas from Reply Totem here, as well with the, the Shelly as well, which is always a good pair of hands. But I don't know, I'm just surprised. I'm just surprised to not see it, because it just push up pretty effectively with the amount of coverage on this particular map. But such an important first set to get that early advantage. As we saw already today, though, not always the case for a &R, but potentially here, that first bit in the head can do wonders for a team like Reply Totem, who just came shy by a singular game last month against this very team in the Grand Finals. And in we go. It's going to be a bit of a all three in the middle kind of concept here. Uh, um, maybe it's going to, yeah, Stu, Gem Carrier. What are your thoughts on that, Danny? I mean, I think it makes the most sense out of their three brawler picks. But that's as much credit as I'm willing to uh, give them to just, you know, how much that makes sense. That doesn't make it's not, I mean, it's not going to work. I mean, as we said, Max here is not necessarily the most expected mid either. Uh, but it, it can work for sure. And it's a similar. Uh, uh, state of mind i think with the stu he does get tanked up quite heavily joker is in trouble going very aggressive he's gonna be dropping those gems eventually a pull from meow will connect onto mary but not really all that much of a follow-up just yet then mary is it allowed to heal back up it's a find that doesn't ultimately matter all that much to zeta because they have nine gems right now and they're only one away from a countdown 
chain reaction yet again on the squeak pick on the star power side of things. I still don't think it's as good as people are playing it out to be. I think slow is still very much viable in many of the respects, but nonetheless, look at Totem's push. Maori comes in, clears the bile fire, Mascaro goes down, but will he be able to come out with the help of Joker? It looks like he might just do that. The phase shift timing there, beautifully done for Reply Totem, and they should be able to get away with this. Shortly with the respawn coming in, Gary will be able to get back. Mario coming now to support his teammates to slow down the back of Mario as well. Going to keep everyone at bay. First game goes the way of Reply Totem. Call 911. I think we have a robbery here. As Reply Totem steal away that first game. It looked like Re Reply Totem were on the back foot for the most part, but just a couple of clever kills and they get away with the payload. Beautifully done by Reply Totem. Let's see how Zeta the Vision strikes back. Slowly, but surely, Reply Totem just taking their time as they enter this round, and why not? Looking at the way the last one went, they can afford to. Shell is coming in. Should take care of Maori there on the bottom left. It feels like he might still be lingering. No, nope, Meow did take care of it. Maori there on the right hand side now is the problem. And this is what Reply Totem just keep doing quite well. It's just. Every now and again, just pushing their way forward, staying within those lines and forcing Zeta to have to deal with them and, and waste some time here. The three gems apiece, the speed comes in for, uh, for reply to them now. Push things back, Meow's got super though as well. That could be devastating. Joker with just a single gem lead. Make it two now as Garrow did try to contest it a little bit, but got fought off. And so obviously the Shelly is a bit of a threat up close. The flank from Miao, a misspool, I believe, as well, which is huge. Those Terrapoles are so influential. Murray is going to be slowed down, doesn't care too much for the Shadows, but he does get pushed back by Miao, and now Murray is one shot. Garo aggressive as well, and Zeta Division have so much map control. Meru also is coming in for a flank. He's going to break open some of the walls. Clay Pigeons follows up, and he gets a lot of value off that push. Suddenly, it's back with Reply Totem. With all the control in the world, Maru gets the gem carrier, and there's no one really to stop him from getting away with stealing all of those gems once again. And Maru brings them back to their spawn. Now he's trying to do something here and slow down this final stretch for Reply Totem, but Joker even survived with 30 HP and locks in that opening set in favor of Reply Toad. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. It's how it uh, sums up to be, you know, honestly, if Reply Totem there did it the first time round, you can't let it happen twice in a row, Zeta, come on. You can't, you simply can't. And as you put it, Teddy, you know, someone get on the phone because yeah, that, that just happened twice. Yeah, that was rough for Zeta Division because I would say if, if, if you look, you know, just at the time factor and how long they were dominating and, and just ahead of Reply Totem, this match would have gone, or this set rather, would have gone in their favor because they have the gem lead for literally the entirety of the first game and the most part of the second one too. But it's just those clever couple kills that Reply Totem are able to get away with and steal those gems that make all the difference and i mean look at me i was six skills on his end but it's going to be the more consistent across the team uh a scoreboard that wins this time around as reply totem have three two and three kills just one more in total but at the end of the day they got the kills that really matter and that's how they secured that first set I'll be honest, I wasn't a fan of the drafts in that last set. A, a bit weird to start things off, but going into Infinite Doom then for Bounty. And let's see how things shape up a little bit more in this one. I mean, it's definitely a, an interesting map to join the, uh, the Bounty map rotation. <laughs> I'm not a massive fan of it, but nonetheless, let's see what the bounds are going to be. Uh, Cordelia's first pick. That is always a good time. I I'm convinced that more teams need to consider that. Uh, Brock uh, Squeak as well as the Tara band out there as well on the side of Reply. Those was the first pick Gene for Zeta, as well as the bands on Zeta's side of the Crow, the Shelly and the Squeak, and Amber to join that side of things. So I like it. Burn down the bush as much as you can and like deprive Cordelius of getting that value. But nonetheless, I feel like that is still a great starting hand for Reply Totem. 
Yeah, I think the Cordelia's here can be incredibly deadly. Gene and Amber are going to be good at both scouting and removing those bushes in the more long term. But nevertheless, if someone closes the gap, uh, the Cordelia's being the someone here, it would be incredibly deadly. They'll have the bow to get some extra information across the bushy area. But also potentially some mines that can help funnel or buy some time. Sometimes even catch someone off guard. You'd be surprised at how often pros actually end up being uh, hit by one of those mines. It happens more often than you would expect. Pam, you bringing that healing utility. I mean, you know, I, I was thinking in the last game, I would like to actually send a bit of a bow because it just makes things come down to earth. It's a solid pair of hands. You know, it's not often utilized mostly now. It's tripped up a little bit in terms of meta, but when we, bring, when, when we see it get brought out, it does more often than not tend to bring in the results and, and players do tend to trigger minds and not really stay focused on their positions. But Carl will be a perfect brawler to come in and trigger those minds and do just that. So I love the response there from Zeta Division. Um, ultimately, of course, you know, they've got a really good pairing with the Gene. There's a lot, though, on the side of Reply, reply Totem as well with the Pam healing station to be able to tank those magic hands. So they've got to be cautious. They've got to time it right. but. I like what Reply Totem are bringing into the mix here, but Zeta's Division comp is a bit more aggressive. Yeah, I, I think I prefer Zeta Division's comp. My problem is I just don't really know for sure what I think of Cordelius just yet. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think he's really, really strong. But I don't know yet at a pro level if he's able to find as much value or if it, there's just a little bit more hype now than, you know, the, the, his actual merit. We'll see that as the blue star was picked up by Zeta, the first skill was picked up by Reply Totem, which puts them in that singular star lead. Mario's already got super, and that's a concern. Um, we need to see Meow start to burn some of this, but then as we say it, connection is made for Mario through the wall. Trying to close in, Gary going to go in, Gress, that might not help Val, but gets to take down the Maori, so I'll take it back. And the healing puffs on the way back from Naui to ensure that he survives quicker into the mix as well. So three stars plus the blue, plus eight to two to the side of Reply Totem. Yeah, I'm not entirely convinced by that Cordelius play right there. He brought someone with him to the Shadow Realm, but that meant that he himself wasn't really there to defend in the meantime. And that's how the Carl got away with that free kill. One star in favor of Zeta Division and Reply Totem are desperately trying it close the gap, get up close, but they need to be careful. There is that gene pool available onto Naui. And that could just enhance that lead furthermore in favor of Zeta, if a reply to them are careless. Love that placement there from Meow as well. The super just keeps Maru back and now though, creeping forwards. You've got to ensure the burn is there as well. 2,400 as the mine's popping around Zay to get a pull. Now you need to land it, but now in the Shadow Realm as well, and that's a dangerous place for him to be. Look at this pinch coming in from Reply Totem, but Maru goes down. That's going to be the, the leader of Zeta to seven stars to the four, and they can't really find anything on the back of this. Now he can just pull anyone on the way forwards as well. Joke will be a prime candidate to do it, and it is that. The connection made nice to four. It's Reply Totem who needs to get some stars. It doesn't look like they're going to be able to do it. That's 11 in the blue. We'll say it's safe and sound in the first game. I had my doubts about Cornelius, and they've been a little bit confirmed in that first game. Now, Mages have been a poor execution on the side of Reply Totem. I'll still give them the benefit of the doubt, but so far it felt like the Cordelius was playing more against them than really for them. Let's see in game two if they're able to find some more value with that Brawler pick. As Meow is going to be lonely on that right side. Nearly goes down, but Maru is low as well, and now he's able to catch him. Now he was a two-piece early on blue start, picked up by Garo. And out of the blue, Zeta Division leading by five stars. Yeah, what a start. <laughs> I mean, uh, Reply to him now, just fully pushed back. You have to start to rekindle things a lot. Maru trying to push the left. It's a good way to do so. Everyone's split and just trying to take their lane size. Great mute there as well from Mara as well. Keeping Meow then susceptible and low. But push the Shadow Realm, but no follow-up as the magic pull there. 
The hand connected from now, he does exactly what it needs to. Look at this, they are all over this 11 stars, what they finished on in the last game. And we've got a minute left still on the clock, not a single star for Reply Totem, who are just not in this game right now. Yeah, this is rough for the least. Shadow Realm again for Meow. But can he really find value? Garrett able to swoop in. I, I just love the strategy from Zeta. Whenever someone is taken to the Shadow Realm, Garo just flying hook in, super, gets a kill, sweeps out, and then he's back to defend whoever is in the Shadow Realm. And it's just really, really solid overall from Zeta Division, shutting down any of those aggressive ideas. And the ability that Cordelia has to isolate players is really being used against Reply Totem. And it's a beautiful thing to see another pull from Naui as well. He's been playing out of his mind on the gene so far. Five stars to his name. And this game is not even going to be decided by the timer because we've reached 20 stars and Zeta Division will be tying up the sets as they pick up our team. A night and day difference then for Zeta to respond in kind. Reply Totem did not look like the same team that won that first set, but admittedly there was those moments of stealing, wasn't there, in that first set. But it just wasn't synergizing at all, and I still think Cordelia's there is a really good brawler to have, but they just were not working it well. And, and you know, we've seen it time and time again with, with players when they go on an absolute tear with Cordelia's on maps and modes that I just would never imagine him being viable, but, you know, as you put it, you know, Zeta were just very much aware to it and, and ready for those trades and communicating effectively when the Shadow Realm was in effect, just covering the situation to bring back the stars regardless of what happens in the realm it can stay in the realm as far as Zeta were concerned and the stars is what really matters on the scoreboard the scoreline is where it comes down to now he's just landing the pools time and time again and you know the reply to them just did not seem in sync at all they are pushing as individuals and more often than not they got punished for it Absolutely. I mean, that was a disastrous set here for Reply Totem. Really, really tough. And don't get me wrong, I think Cordelius is a very strong brawler. And I think that this is definitely a map where I can see why you want to bring him in. But Zeta Division, they brought counterplay to the table, going aggressive whenever the Cordelius would, uh, you know, basically be out of the, the, the battle, leaving the other players on a two on two. The Carl was going super aggressive. It was paying off big time. A reply to them, they just didn't really have any sort of response to that counterplay from Zeta Division. And every single time Zeta Division, they managed to get away with it and just punish Reply Totem for, for going for that brawler. They, they were one step ahead throughout that set. And we have to hope that Reply Totem have learned some lessons here as you move over to set number three. There's going to be field goal for some brawl action coming up. Well, here we go. I see a bit of a willow ban for me here on this map, but we know both of these two teams can do with that particular brawl if it's available, but Reply Totem is certainly the team to bring in more tankier ideas. And we've been shifting away a little bit from that kind of meta, so let's see. Band of Cadillus there for Zeta, which I'm pleased, very pleased to see. I think I saw Shelly as well. Yes, Shelly and Nita. Great bands from Zeta. Sh uh, Stu, the Bonnie, and the, car uh, the Crow Band for Reply Totem, so this all looks well and good. M still on the cards here, could be a potential opportunity here, as well as the Willow pick, like I've already said, but um, no, Poco, okay, fair enough. There could be some tanks spelling then as well, uh, but Spike, obviously a very safe pair of hands in the eventuality of these particular bands and anything to do to show their face. Otis as well could all do a, a lot in regards to covering themselves when it comes to those tanks. Yeah, I like the, the, the idea of an Otis, potentially. I see where your head is. Let's see what Zeta Division decide to bring to the table. We'll see the uh, Shelly band, which makes a lot of sense as you see the brawler win rate with it as well. Ems is gonna be locked in by Zeta Division. I like it a lot. I mean, it's a brawler that, even though it hasn't necessarily been getting buffed a lot, it, it, it's been getting better and better. And with it, indestructible walls as well it, her, her, her super can really find a lot of value and uh, the overall you know tank awareness that you need to have currently to make sure that you have some sort of counter playing in case tanks are being brought into the draft it, it just makes it an incredibly versatile brawler that has some real stopping power but re regardless reply totem they are going out primo 
and I'm kind of down for it. Oh, I'm so down for it. This is like the, the most reply totem comp ever. I mean, the, the primo plays that they bring out are always so enjoyable to watch and they time the, their runs beautifully. I mean, some of the best plays of uh, some of the best goals in Brawl Ball this year have been in this region with them. And I mean, Ems is going to be able to shut a lot of the ideas down, but like they just don't hesitate to land the mark on the side of reply totem every single time. Surge coming in, finally. We, we, I'm kind of surprised that Surge has dropped off as much as he has, considering a lot of the maps and modes that we've seen already today, but he has dropped off a little. And I'm hoping that you know, Zeta can come in now and put my mind at ease and tell me the reasons why he shouldn't have. But it is a bit of a risky idea that we've not seen for a while coming in. I'm still down for it, but Reply Systems comp to me, it, it just, it, it, it smells good, Teddy. I like what they're cooking. I think that whether or not it's going to be the better comp is, is is tough to say but what i know for sure it's going to lead to a very exciting set full of action with that primo uh pick as well as obviously the max to just get that extra movement speed and off the bat it's a big push but it's going through on the side of zeta division as they are pushing up maru is going to go down meow closing the gap and able to Get up close, but not really commit to that fight. Mary has some good stopping power. As he can tag them up from afar, but Garo goes for a super. He does get shut down. Meow is also low HP, goes down to Joker, and suddenly it's only now he left alive. He'll reach stage two, which is going to be very important moving forward into this game. And he got it quite early on, which is quite promising for Zeta Division. Oh, look at this on the right hand side. Mario almost found space there. Thought better of it, but. It was a good time for Reply Totem just to get out of that spawn area and show some aggression of their own. Ball pass through to the mid, pass to the far left now as Mauri goes in, gets some great value onto Meow and might be able to break some walls in the process as well. And look at this, as quickly as that, the ball's coming through. Mauri doesn't hesitate. Oh, it's off the line! A bit of a missed shot, but can Reply Totem still rekindle it? There's my control available to Meow. A bit, oh, love that, love that. Little cheeky pass to Joker, he'll finish it off. And reply to him, get out of their hole. Incredible stuff, really. A bit of a missed opportunity, but regardless, Reply Totem were able to capitalize, were able to secure it. And Mari now, maybe even with a shot at scoring again, doesn't have mind control this time around either. And it's not quite going to work out in their favor. As Zeta Division are getting back that map control they so desperately wanted. 45 seconds on the clock. There's still some time for Zeta to cook. But Reply Totem are in the driver's seat. They have the upper hand. And despite Meru going in aggressively here, they're not quite able to stop that push just yet. Pressure mounting. And a takedown on Joker as well. Will smell disaster. Oh no! Off the line again! I don't see how that's not a goal, to be honest. But the shot into now, he should secure it. Zeta will get one on the board as they absolutely need it to in that scenario. The result, though, coming in 15 seconds on the clock. It's speed from Reply Totem. Look at this. They're absolutely pushing this forwards, but everyone drops like flies. And now two versus one. Zeta in a commanding position to potentially score when these boxes go down. No map control. There no ball control, I meant. Now we... I'm going to be getting to stage three and in overtime that's exactly where he wants to be Maru gets absolutely shut down he's going to be the player struggling the most in this overtime they had an opportunity on the side of reply totem to score just before overtime kicked in but they weren't able to seize it and instead it's going to be zeta division to pick up this game and as much as we had some robberies and gem grab it seems like this time around it's a bit more of a robbery in favor of zeta division I feel like that should have been a reply totem game, to be honest. But it was their own mistakes that led to it going the other way. I mean, they, their comp to me makes a lot of sense here and gets a lot of value, but they've got to match that idea of aggression and you know, and also defensiveness. They can't be overly aggressive with it as they will just leave things wide open for Zeta. And that's exactly what went wrong in the last game. Now on defensive, keeping Gary low there as well. And Maori just going to be getting a lot of value for his time in his position. 
big heels coming in there for Zayt to keep them in position. If Reply didn't do what they did last time around and just kind of exacerbate down the utility as Mario just going on an absolute push here, that would be slow, but there was a moment there where Zayt might have felt like they were uh, a little bit in trouble. Yeah, even though they did take him down with ease, he has a super now and it definitely deflated the push for a little bit. Let's see if that's going to be a decision that pays off though. Maru going in aggro. Maru goes down, but Meow will burn down too. 2-1-2 two two now. Now he's still on that first stage. It's not going to be the easiest for him to find any connections with that slow movement speed. And especially when Maru can get some tags from afar through the wall. Let's see if Zeta Division have what it takes to make a push here or if Reply Totem are going to be able to find some sort of counter-offensive. To the left, Maori is a great person to have it with the mind control potential here. If Zeta doesn't spot that, they can be really in trouble here. Oh, but the miss is huge and that is going to be the ball clear. But more importantly, another suit that Maori has got to earn back and he's out of position. He might have to get some damage, but the pressure is now on to Joker and Maru on the top of the screen here to get this ball clear and keep everything still taking over because there's no goal on either side yet. But if Zeta continue this up, it could well be going their way. Yeah, it does end up being a two on one. Now he does come back from the dead with 30 seconds left. This is looking like it could be a similar story to game number one, where the overtime is clearly favoring Zeta Division. Mari pushing up, trying to make a play, maybe, but he's not going to be able to connect the mind control. Instead, now he goes in. Swoops in, gets that kill. Only Max left in defense now. And with 10 seconds left, this is looking like Zeta Division are going to be with the upper hand getting into overtime. Such a crucial moment there. Ball pass through, but now he intercepts. Maru on the left, doing his best to keep the burn flying in. The ball lands in Joker's feet here, but Maru goes down. It's just Maori and Joker that have got to keep the pressure on. Face shift in the pass as well. Fires the spot, fires the angle. He comes in clutch! Reply to him, keep this cell alive! There was one play available for Reply Totem. When you're playing in overtime with a primo, as well as a thrower, you, 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 you need to be quick. You need to get that momentum in as soon as overtime kicks in and try to get that good position to translate into a quick and early goal. And that's exactly what they did. Beautifully done by Reply Totem. They're still in it here. There's Zeta Division, again, was a more dominant start. Let's see if they can keep it up. Yeah, Reply Totem just hanging on by the skin of their teeth here, but that final moment will give them a nice little boost here. As these moments on defense, they look very comfortable in. Big, important heal there from Meow to keep Gary in the mix. But Maru might not be as lucky. He'll go down the right-hand side. Maru trying to find the angle. Has the mind control. Oh, but beautiful delay. It's really can't miss this creeper. Now too low in terms of HP. Can't really go for it either. And it's good, solid defense there from Zeta. Yeah, really well played. Did not fall for the trap. The Willow had a, a plan. But Zeta, we're ready. And they knew how to deal with it. It seems like it's a little bit of the story of Zeta Division so far this year. They always kind of have that edge, that step ahead. But now he is going to be jumping in. Not really going to find the value he was hoping for, but he does create a little bit of space for Zeta, and they'll be happy to take that. Well, at the moment, this is where Reply Totem have been really comfortable. I want to see a bit more from this mind control. I mean, he's already got a goal, but nonetheless, Maru is in a dangerous spot with the speed coming in. Froze go over the over the shoulder, but nonetheless, will go down. And this is an opening. A big chance here for Zeta. Now he's going for it. Has got a bit more movement speed behind him. Choosing to slow down the pace, though. And stack up. Why not? More range to the mix and apply totem, though. Get out of that spot. And that was very important timing to do so. On the right-hand side, that's a great super shutdown from Garu. Perfectly timed, but Maru, no, thought it, but couldn't quite get it off. So now the aggression might be in their favor on the top side of the map. Now he gets to kill on to Maori, and that's the team wipe there. That's surely going to be a goal, but catch over the wall, but the trickles in. Disaster for a bright totem.
There's a final play here for a Blight Totem. They have the Primo Super to pass. Does not bull get to him? It doesn't seem like it. Joker gets the bull, but Garo is able to knock him away from it. And that is going to be set number three going the way of the Kings of the Region. Seda Division a set ahead once more. I would have given anything to see that be a goal. What an important push. And, and, and actually, Zeta had to defend it very, very keen, with keen eyes. I mean, that could have gone bad to worse very quick. A valiant attempt, but reply to them have got to be kicking themselves so much because they always just come in short to this team. And you know, when you look at it as well, in terms of the, the history and the narrative as well, you know, you're, you're, you know, last year's coach, you know, you're facing up against the, the knowledge of all of that behind it as well. This is the goal from Maori. I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful mind control, but that was the only one that really we saw. And for the most part, Zaytas were very good at keeping that particular bit of utility well out of the question. Great footwork for the most part all around from Zeta. And more than not, the ball was in that top side of the map, which is both a credit to reply to and to how they defended it. But ultimately, the more time you spend at that side of the map, you know, the, the more chance there is of there being a goal. But reply to him, you know, they, they should, in terms of the scoreboard, be looking more convincing, in my opinion, to be honest. I, I, I think that the problem we've seen so far with reply to him is that they're kind of main strategy is to hope that someone pops off somewhere and we started in gem grab where it worked out right they were not playing as well as at a division but they got those pop-off moments with the kills that mattered and managed to steal that sand and here in Broadway, kind of the same thing their biggest chances were those you know primo jumps in and max supers to go super aggressive like, it's it just really, really tough to be consistent with it. And when you have incredible plays, like we just saw from, from Zeta Division, that you have to face, it's really, really tough to make it work. Wow, well, going in then to knock out Bell's Rock and a very, very important one for Reply Totem. Again, if they can turn this around, it will just bring back so much more power into their momentum shift if they lose this they could be really in trouble i, I mean i you know i'm gonna be honest they could be in trouble here in terms of their points and be able to re rekindle things so they're, they're, they're in a good spot they're in second but they got 289 right i mean there's so many teams that can contest that this week or next month fans are in gray carl and sam for say it's gonna be shelly gus and rt for reply to first pick is a tick interesting stuff for zeta on Bell's Rock, tick first pick. I mean, I didn't mind it, but it's not that common, is it now, these days? Yeah, it's really not. I mean, when you used to see it, it would kind of be, a, 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 you know, matched with some four bands. So you kind of have like the only thrower on the table sort of thing, you know, like you take out like Sprout and Grom. Uh, it's not what they're going to be doing here. So it is an interesting one for sure. I, I'm completely with you. Uh, Bonnie and Max make a little bit more sense to me, but I mean, nothing too special just yet, to be completely honest. I like the, the, the picks across the board, maybe with like a little bit more flavor in our last three picks. Okay, range, or rather heels are the flavor of the day for, for Zeta. I, I don't know. I, I mean, Bell's Rock is it's not definitely a, a bad place for Pam. You know, longevity is quite key in knockout. But I prefer the aggressiveness of what Reply to some have. The, the Bonnie, I think, is great. The Max, you know, it's an idea which they've been floating around in every single set today, and it sometimes does well other times not i mean it's always good to have you know under the hands of reply to some with it i mean joker plays it best but they do keep they do keep pushing it and i just kind of wonder whether it's because they really want to because they play it best that way or is their play style or you know, not many other teams are valuing max nearly this much in the pick rates but brock is a much safer pair of hands i prefer that idea the, the bell though is probably the best baller in the hands of zeta and I just don't know with the tick in the, at the pan, whether it's my kind of rounded comp. I like what reply to some have here. And I would love to see this go to a fifth and final set, to be completely honest. I, I, I'm with you. I think reply to them here, to my eyes, might have a bit of an upper hand. 
Now, don't get me wrong, I think that they can still be very threatening, a lot of tanks across the board, and those tick heads. I mean, they're just so tanky, they take so much ammunition away from your position just to deal with them, and I think it can still provide a lot of work, but let's find out how this goes down here for Zeta Division and Reply Totem. Zeta Division all year long have been a step ahead. I reply Totem still hoping to get their moment of glory in the BSC 2023. Reverse polarity value there from Geru. Finding the angle there onto Maori, but in the meanwhile, now he's really in the tough spot, and despite the moment squeeze, can't get out of it. Let's see as well, on his left-hand side, how these shots will fare. There's no way, surely, right? Zeta, they're in an absolute terrible spot. No way they can get out of this, I imagine, unless Gary comes in super clutch. Meow's going to hold on to his super as well. They're just waiting for the gas at this point in time and trying not to feed, but feeding they are in the process. And Mario has super, Joker has super. Yeah, I, I'm not, I don't want to speak to you soon, but I'm not really feeling this draft for Zeta. And plateaued him off the bat. Incredibly aggressive. Need to be careful not to get punished. Meow has a tick hat now available as well. Let's see how and when they decide to put that to use. Maori It's considering whether he wants to go in there against Naui, but will show some restraint. Play it safe. I think that's why this reply totem. So far, I've shown that they have every advantage. Might as well make sure you keep it. Mari just trying to whistle down there on the left hand side. Both Naui and Gary would love to make use of that super, but can't really find the space for it yet. Gary keeping Mari back into the mid, but Joker's in a bit of a spot here on the right hand side. 480 HP comes out alive, but that was scary. Barry will take care of that ticket, and the speed comes in at the perfect time for it. But look how oppressive now he is in this position. Got the heals and so much power in terms of his position over Reply Totem. There's one, there's two, one left in this choke, but even he can't stand the might of that one versus two scenario. And Zay to bring one back. It's the next round, takes this first game. And well done by now. The healing station pretty much locked in that round. And now they're a step closer to a match point. Reply Totem needs to be careful. They've shown that they can do some really strong stuff with this comp. But Zeta Division also showed that they are ready and they have ways to punish them if they get over aggressive. Meru as super might want to go for a play, but not quite going to go for anything just yet. Reset's coming in, the bell pick is the scariest one on the side of Zeta, and that's why Karu absolutely popping off. Joker almost went down to it, just consecutive shots followed by a mark as well, and then moving his attention onto Maori, where he had equally as much success. In all honesty, it's getting scary. Reply to the need to start to come back together again, as we saw in this first round. The Joker coming in with some taps into Naui, but doesn't really avail too much. Rocket Rain at the top. The last hurrah from Yao will keep it all under control as he goes down as well. Now, what can Joker do here? Great face. It's a deflate the super, but 120 HP. He will surely fall. Three versus one. This one's a wrap. Zeta, move on to match point. One game is all it takes here for Zeta to win once more against Reply Totem. It really feels like they were always the team that, that comes out with a win this year against this Reply Totem roster that uh, it, we know their potential, but it is a scary end of the year for them. It's definitely not in a bad position either, still second in the leaderboards for now. It's something they can be proud of, but that last month might become really important unless they're able to turn around this game. I'm so worried. I'm so worried for Reply Totem because like below them, you no know, Navi, Humble, for all teams that could have good days here today. And then as quickly as that number second spot on the leaderboard is, it could be lost if they just got, don't get this under control. I mean, if they can get a win here, it, it would do so much for them, bring it to the fifth and final set, but they are got to be so cautious now in their approach, and their playstyle is aggressive. They love to go in and just cause a problem. 
but now they've just been forced into a position of having to consider their lives so much more carefully. Maori marked up, no super to hand, as Maori tries to get the pinch on the right-hand side between himself and Joker, but now he has got the tankiness and the healing ability and the ticket coming in as well. It's going to be a face because he wants to use it. Oh, my word, everyone drops leaving just Maori and Meow. I think Maori should come out on top, and he does somehow, some way. The round goes the way of reply totem. My goodness, that was an incredible fight. Incredibly messy too, but still incredible in a beautiful way as well. Meow has a super that should prevent any further aggression on his lane. Yarrow is low HP early on. He's going to go for a bit of a trick shot, but doesn't manage to land it, unfortunately. The rocket rain from Maru. Now we quite low HP. Needs to be careful and is forced to use that healing station. Yeah, also use this dickhead to just create a little bit more space. It's a lot of utility that's been used on the side of Zeta Division. And that could be the win condition for Reply Totem if they can capitalize. I take back. What's said about that pound pick? As Garrett falls here, making it two versus two. Joker just going to push in here, trying to find the angle. Scrappy Art Sucker will not connect with him either, which is a great result. 10 to 108 HP now, as the Tickhead coming in is taken quickly care of. Reply Totem should be bringing back a game here. In a while, see Meow just from trying to hold on, but what can he realistically do? Not more than that. That was exactly what Reply Totem needed as a response, but they are far from safe. They've got to keep this up, keep Zeta suppressed. And that is not going to be an easy thing, not at all. And you can kind of see it there in the face of Mari. He knows it as well. Both comps have very different ideas, but both have their pros and cons, really. Both have their merits, also their shortcomings, as both teams have showed their ability to win with them. Match point still for Zeta Division, but Reply Totem are so close from taking us all the way to a fifth. However, Joker going down this early might be putting them in a little bit of a tough spot. Yeah, big time as Gary just keeping his range perfectly in there. It's going to be on the top right hand side. Maru on 198 HP as well. Maru, though, coming behind, gets a kill. But Maru actually was the one who got the kill, but that's actually just opened up space. That was not a win that I expected them to get, not by a long shot, but that is a round going the way of Reply Totem, which should have really been Zetas. A 2v3 that Zeta should have been able to just easily secure bit of a mistake there we saw in the previous match what happens to teams that have the lead and sometimes just make some mistakes because they're not as focused anymore and look at that maru finds garo and suddenly things are looking very doable the saving grace here for zeta is the fact that maru is marked he will take just a little bit of extra damage and that could help even it out, but nevertheless, it's a troublesome situation. Now he is in such a tough position now as well. The ticket is going to be diffused quite easily, and it's only Meow left alive. Surely they will clear this one up and reply Totem are going to be sending us straight to a fifth and final set. Maori will zoom in <laughs> on that bony form plus the max speed. These are the moments. I've got to bring it back around. The reply Totem need. They were out for the count for all intents and purposes, but now back in the game. And this is where they will probably learn from their previous mistakes. But now I said that I'll probably jinx it. But to take it to the fifth is exactly what they had to do here. And after last month, you know, coming off the back of that grand finals, that loss at match point, match point, they will not be wanting to have that replicate in the second month running. I think this could be a really important turning point. This next set, I cannot emphasize the importance of it. And, and, and how much I was convinced that Zeta were going to tie it up in knockout, in all honesty. Because it just felt like the right time for them to seal it. And Reply Totem just coming off the back of those losses in the previous sets. If they were struggling to really find their chemistry, that was a great response. If Reply Totem win this next set, they will alleviate so much potential pressure on the BSC leaderboards. If they go on to lose it, there are so many teams that are in close succession behind them. You know, Navi in third on 232. They've got 289 points. They've got to retain it, and this is their best possible chance of doing so.
As much as the MEA is a region that can be incredibly chaotic and it's always so incredibly difficult to predict who's gonna come out on top, there's one thing we always know for sure is that Zeta Division versus Reply Totem is always a banger of a match and this time is no different. A fifth set is on the menu and I can't wait to see who will come out on top this month. It's the region that always keeps us guessing and I wouldn't have it any other way. But again, when I look back at the leaderboards, I mean, you've got Amapantasi there at 202 points, you know, that, that is not far away from a reply totem even then, and they didn't qualify for this month. They're going to drop down, of course, but Esports' fate will remain to be seen till later on today. They're on 211 points. Julie Beatles for Hot Zone be this decider. And for both sides, a huge opportunity for reply totem is an opportunity for themselves to stay in the conversation, to stay in the mix. If they can get and even win today, they will actually lock in a last chance qualification spot. But they've got to get through the top of the region first in the quarterfinals. Zeta Division, they have been winning back-to-back -back monthly finals, only losing out to that one month when uh, Navi took the win. They beat Reply Totem in the grand finals at match point, la match point last month. So it could have been a shift that we saw earlier. Can they do the unthinkable? Fans of Max, Poco and Sam, Cordelius, Shelly and Squeak. First draft in is Crow. An interesting choice, but definitely a good, strong pair of hands in those side lanes. The Fly Totem coming in now with a response. It's got to be a good one. Uh, those uh, statistics, by the way, in terms of the uh, roller bands and win rates in the center of the screen are taken from the qualifying stages um, on, on a global level as well. So it's not just the teams competing at this level of the monthly finals at play. Yes, exactly that. And it is across the world as well. We know how different regions can have their, their peculiarities and their own uh, preferences when it comes to, to the drafting process and some brawlers that we see much more often in some regions than others. Regardless, I will... I, RT, I don't know. I don't know what I think about it. It's a pro that was so dominant for a while. I feel like we haven't been seeing it quite as much recently. It's still definitely strong and has some, some legs to it, or lack thereof at times, uh, I guess. But I, I, li I, like the, I like the idea. I like the idea. I want to see how this plays out for Zeta. Stu is always a decent brawler to have here on Julian Beatles. I do quite like it. It can help out considerably so, but Bonnie coming in for Zeta. I mean, that is a scary prospect, actually, for me. How do Reply Totem respond with this comp? I, I, I think that a lot of it works out pretty well for me on the side of Zeta. I mean, do they, do they try a max? I mean, they've been, they've been championing in it all day long. I kind of feel like it might be something which they might consider, but Pam, I love it. Pam was often forgotten about on Dueling Beatles. We saw it time and time again last year, playing a, a vital role. It's kind of dropped off a little bit, but now I think it can really have a place. And it's gonna like cause a lot of problems. The Crow is gonna struggle into the Pam big time. So actually I think Reply to Toastman now have got a, a good solid chance. They've got to tap though with this B, uh, with this bell, sorry, into the mid. I want to see that. Speaking of B, actually, we haven't seen any of B, oh, B yet today, which is quite surprising. It Very could have been an true. option. Yeah, where has B been today? Sorry, just to throw that out there. My, my Freudian slip as my, my subconscious comes into play. Yeah, B is not a brother which has dropped off, so I'm kind of surprised, actually. That's a very good point. It's a very good point. It, it's been a, a very uh, B-less day so far. But regardless, this is our fifth set here to Decider between Zeta Division and Reply Totem. Those two teams that face each other three times in the last four monthly finals. And it's Zeta Division that's come ha has come out on top three times out of out of three in the BSC, which is an incredibly dominant statement, if anything else. But Reply Totem, they're here on a bit of a revenge arc. It seems like so far though, Zeta Division are able to get that early lead. Wow, it's an aggressive response to this left-hand side healing station. Speed from Joker, taps and fire, everything. Throwing out this, you know, for Reply Totem, this is a necessity set to earn. Slow though is huge. 
from Meow, who comes in strong, gets to take down the Joker. Mari, though, surviving on with the help of the healing station is key, but it is still 41% in favor of Zayf for the 30% of Reply Totem. Yeah, this is a nice position, though, for Reply Totem. Trying to close down the gap just a little bit, and they're able to overtake the lead now as well. Now he is going to be very low HP. That Mammoth Squeeze is brutal on the healing station. Joker able to get some good tags as well. Gary's one shot ends up going down. See that division was just the tiniest bit of a lead, but reply to them are right behind him. This is great for reply to them. So much utility, but now the speed zone goes down. Joker though will have the gas hill to keep him in the mix. And look at this. Now creeping forwards in terms of the lead. That healing station is doing so much work. As I said, that Crow is struggling so much into that matchup. But now the RT marked up as well, forcing back Maori. They're coming back around. This wall is staying in the moment. I love it. It's now 80% to 60 in favor of Reply Totem and the aggression of that healing station. It's smelling like Reply Totem want to tie us up right here. They want to commit and get this taken care of. And they should do just that match point. But reply to Totem and against all odds, they are turning this around. Wow. Again, three times out of three in this matchup, it has been Zeta Division that's won it. And reply to Totem, they've been making it closer and closer and closer. They have yet to get that victory in the BSC. And this month could be it. We've talked about how massive it would be points-wise as well for Apply Totem. Zeta Division, they don't care as much. I mean, they're still prize pool and seeding, and they care a lot about those things too. But for Reply Totem, they haven't even locked in their spot for LCQ just yet. So let alone Worlds, every single point is going to matter just a little bit much to them. They can't get points in the SPS either. So if they could get this win, it could be a game changer for Reply Totem. Zeta are waking up, depriving Maori is so crucial here as we saw the value that he was bringing to the last game and how little Meow could really do against it. This time round, he is far away from Super. He's not really landing much on the right hand side. It may be something for the consideration of a shift of lanes even potentially here as Meow jumps in, gets the take down of the Joker. And now it's a big substantial lead, big, huge slow there as well from the Crow. And what a time for it. It's going to give Zeta a lot of control of the mid. As Gary comes in, big taps on the super as well. Joker goes in on the aggressive, and he'll be punished too. Oh, to be back as well. Zeta are looking better. They definitely are, but it's not that big of a lead either. That is the problem. It's only about 20% right now, and we saw in the previous game, they had a similar lead early on, and Reply Totem in the long game were able to catch up and eventually overtake it. And right now, they're doing exactly that. They have a little bit more control. They managed to always have a man up, always have the upper hand, and percentage-wise, they are neck to neck. It couldn't be closer. It really couldn't, but that similar scenario we saw in the previous game is down. The speed zone plus the heels are there. Meow is low in the mid, and now he as well, considering the jump will go in, gets the speed zone taken care of, but not the healing station. And now everyone clustered together and trying to tank the shots in the sun reply totem. Jump in from Meow, not going to get any value for it. What a sweep for reply totem, but itching ever closer to surviving on in this series. That's surely got to be it. The hunger down, 50% remain, but they are absolutely all over this position. One final attempt from Naui. He'll go down immediately and reply to him and now to turn things around. And what a time for it. What a crucial moment that they have survived. They've broken the curse and come out on top. They proceed to the semi-finals and Saints Division will go no further today. Knocked out at the first moment. They've already qualified for the World Finals. This was Reply Totem's day to make it count. And boy, oh boy, did they make it count. It's taken five months. Five months for Reply Totem to get that all precious win. But this is the month where they make it happen. The July Finals, they take down the Zeta Division in quarterfinals. And this is huge for the storylines as well, Arik, because we said at the beginning of the show that Reply Totem could very much be going out in quarterfinals, and that would be quite disastrous for them because they get no point from the Snapdragon Pro Series because they didn't manage to qualify for it. And very 
facing Zeta first. I mean, they, 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 it's a really dangerous situation for them to be in, but they embraced it. Take down Zeta in quarterfinals, and now suddenly they can try to bank as many points as possible today. Zeta are that all or nothing team, aren't they? They, they even win the monthly final, or they go out in the quarterfinals, but <laughs> Reply Totem joined that club, that very exclusive club of being the second team in the region to be able to take Zeta down that stage. The only other team being SK Gaming. And I love this for the narrative. I've got to say, as a caster, as a talent, when you're you know, watching these games go down, all you care about is having it be the most exciting competition it can be. And looking at the points as well now, we now have got such an exciting narrative to, to occur because if Zeta won, great, they're going to be you know, depriving more points from other teams to be able to contest in those lower stages. But now it's blown wide open. This month could be potentially huge for anyone. It's all for the taking. MVP has voted for you guys over at event.brawlstyles.com. It is Maori. We'll be seeing more of him later today. Reply to moving on to that semi final stages alongside. Humble already in that huge upset in our first matchup for the day. And as soon as we came out of that first game, Teddy, we knew today was going to have it all. Oh, absolutely. So, I mean, we have a reverse sweep for our first match of the day. The second one here also goes all the way to the fifth set with another upset. I mean, it's looking like an incredible day. Everything is looking good so far today, except our predictions. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but at the same time, I'm happy to be corrected. Honestly, you know, we, we got to put out there what we think is kind of like the most likely thing to happen. And the fact that we are zero and, and what, zero and four, like, you know, brilliant stuff because it means that the competition is as wide open as it is. And we are not done yet for our quarterfinals. We are two down, two more to go. And I'm expecting more upsets to come. Not going to lie. We've got Foot Esports taking on Nita's Cubs. You do not want to miss this matchup because Foot desperately need those BSC points as well. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to switch up the casting disc. We'll be right back after a very short break. Welcome back to the Brawl Stars Championship, where we are two games down in the EMEA region, two more to go in our quarterfinal stages. Trav, welcome back. As I say so reluctantly, but well, welcome back. Um, what did you make of those first two games? Pretty intense stuff. I mean, myself, I feel kind of robbed, deprived of those games, at least as a caster. But for the community <laughs> and the viewers, I'm very happy for you because those were absolutely phenomenal games. Humble reverse sweeping out of after being flexed on, pinned on, everything. It was just beautiful for them to come back from that. Maybe a little bit of overconfidence from ANR and they were punished for it. Humbled, you could say. But Reply Totem coming out on top against Zeta Division, that was incredible because they needed that more than any other team in this competition today.
Yeah, I'm really, really happy for them. I, I couldn't be happier for them. Not for the downfall of Zeta, of course, but they've already been able to earn their rewards for the season, and that was the time to shine for them. Up next, Foot Esports to take on Nita's Cubs. After that as well, Navi versus SK Gaming. Plenty more bangers still to come. I'm no doubting uh, seeing more potential upsets as well. This region today is the unexpected. Expect it. Foot Esports, of course. Semantic, Drage, and Lenan. Taking on Nita's Cubs, Sawyer of Brezza, uh, as well as um, um, Omega there as well, and oh, uh, Gugu. Samantha Drage and Lenano. We've seen back and forth, haven't we, Trap, over the months with this particular squad. Obviously, that big roster switch up, leaving OPE for SK Gaming for the pickup, <laughs> bringing in Lenan. And we've, they've had plenty of time now to get things together, and they have had uh, a bit of success over the past few weeks. They've had plenty of semi-final finishes as well and that gives me some hope for them to hear today they've, they've definitely been up and down that's the thing you know in in, in the sps they started zero and three started to claw it back but notoriously against those good teams they've been struggling and following today's fashion as well they are you know the the favorites coming into this one which means they're probably going to lose but <laughs> against <laughs> latest cubs it's just going to be really, really hard to predict against for esports here. Soida Brezza, Omega, and Gugu. They're, they're, you know, they're not a bad squad. They've got some very seasoned professional players. Soida Brezza, top four at Worlds in 2021. It, it, he's, he's a very, very established player. And the same with Gugu and Omega as well. But it's just, I haven't seen enough of them to be able to get behind them against a match, uh, against for esports in this match. Yeah, uh, exactly that. We haven't seen much of them. That was why my brain was just trying to remember Gugu. And uh, it's a lovely, lovely guy. Nothing against him also. But the 9% of the community uh, feel like they've got the advantage here. Um, you know, we, we it, it's hard to not side with the kind of community poll here because it's their first probably final this year, realistically. But, but, okay, they didn't qualify in February. We'll let that one slide. But, you know, ever since March, they've always had a semi-final finish. And, and that, for me, is consistency at its finest, realistically. But they've never really made that grand finals and that's the day where they've got to land the mark i mean if they do that today it will help out considerably so they haven't quite confirmed exactly where they stand in terms of the challenge finals and sps until we find out later on next week if they come out on top today in the bsc it will be such a blessing for them Stu being picked up by nita's cubs the bands are also in as m's mr p uh, sorry squeak and uh crow sound coming in for foot now as well and on the side of Foot Esports, battling out the Shelly, the Squeak, and the Cordelius. So that's good to see that Cordelius is being battled. Finally beat the first time today. Love to see it. I was going to say, I think this is one of the first times we've seen Ruffs across this month as well in, in APAC 2. And Ruffs is a good brawl. You know, it's one of those ones that mm. hasn't dropped off massively, same as B. I mean, it's dropped off a little bit, don't get me wrong. But Foot Esports just instantly come in and pick three not unusual picks, but just picks that aren't that common. See the Nita coming out and Nita, what well, that makes sense. Nita coming out and Nita's cut. <laughs> <laughs> the support in the name along with the Mr. P and the Stu as well. Stu, going to be played into that roughs. Not the best of matchups either um, for, for that. You know, if the sandbags do come down, but needs to be able to burn through them quite nicely. I like for esports comp. Obviously, B's going to have some trouble against the Mr. P. Uh, if Sandy, you know, against that Stu, it's not going to be the best. And the same with uh, roughs against the Nita. But it's just all about those individual matchups. Because if you switch up the matchups, they're going to have a good lane. Yeah, I mean, Foot used to run Nita here a lot themselves, and I just worry about it if they got the roughs to be able to break things open. But that could deflate it a little bit here and there. But this would be great to uh, great to have against the B as well. So we're hoping to see that aggressiveness be able to prevail on all sides of Foot to be able to clear things up already. Omega taking a lot of taps there, falls back already, and almost went down. Amiga as well, by the way, it was a rebrand from Emma. So if you recognize or don't recognize that name, that might then make you uh, a bit more of a realization. Two gems, the, the Cubs, one to foot. So far, so good and pretty all accounts. Yeah, I mean, now the Porter does come down with Soy there over the right hand side. And it is going to be against Samantha, so that's kind of the matchup that he did want more than anything. And now Lenane just trying to get some work done on the left hand side. It is 3 3, 4 3 now, and Samantha did pick up the right as well. Going to be breaking up these home walls. A little bit more maneuverability for Drake, so we can't get locked into a certain spot and be caught off guard. There's another one as well, and that one's going to be coming off the side of Nita's Cubs as well. Shot for Lenane, and he throws out the super on the left hand side. Another gem spawning two to make it 6 3. And Gugu slowly trickling down on this HP. Oh, very nice up from Alain on the left hand side. He goes to take down a Gugu, and that's going to put a lot of pressure on to Emma, who goes down. 
One gem will be plenty for the taking for Lenan. I just want to be greedy all for it. Just the one needed from the mid now, and that sandstorm couldn't have come at a better time for it. The great probably sneak forwards now. Grasp it, come back. They are split, however. Nisa's Cubs do get a take down for Lenan. Well, now they're not. That's perfect. He can go on the aggressive now. Oh, oh my word. And but explode onto it. Absolutely beautiful stuff from them. Team wipe all round, and the first game goes the way of foot. And a sweet dreams was still in the pocket. Actually, two sweet dreams were still in the pocket of Lenane as well. So big play for him to not really require those throughout the game. And this is kind of we won't lie the way that we expected it to go. We expect this to be a foot focused game and that it was it was complete dominance for them in this first need to see something back from need to scope though i don't think their comp's dreadful i think it's definitely got a bit of a say in this one but i just didn't really see the stew actually do anything like it didn't actually have a fight against rage in pretty much the entirety of that game you as well getting scrutinized on the right hand side and the pinch is there perfectly done Drage there with the amplified shot onto Omega, following up again with consecutive taps and a slow. I mean, this is just for exploding into this game and it's giving no open door whatsoever to need this cup straight away. Just everything, throwing everything at this and just keeping the pressure on. Semantic now playing this run side, gets the shots off. Little super coming down as well to break up even more. Allow Drage to pinch these lanes if people do start pushing up. Now a seventh gem in the pocket, but they are spread out across the entire team. And yet again, Omega's not really having that much of a say in mid. It is tough at this ranged matchup against Drage playing this B, and we know how good he is at that brawler as well. So it's a tough matchup. Regardless, Donny Lass is going to tank those well, deprive him of his super and follow with some more shots too. Lenane going to throw down that sandstorm. Sweet dreams to send him to sleep. You're going to throw down the bear, and that's going to be a waste as well. But nine gems. At least it might stop them from getting it and allow me to come, to come back into the mix. Great time for Shelly from Drage juking these shots wonderfully well. The Honey Molasses for good measure, but still low HP with seven gems. He's got to be careful. But the connection was there. And now with a pickup. And now Omega there on 428 HP. Just about inches of going down as the supply drop slammed into Soy Nebrezza. And this should be gems being run away with. Especially these connections from Drage and just landing the mark at every available opportunity. There's just no way that Nisus can close the gap at the moment. With that takedown as well, surely it's going to be game. And then set for Foot Esports. What a showing to start things off. I mean, that's about as fast as a gem grab set can be wrapped up, to be honest with you. Foot Esports come out the gates swinging, looking really, really good. And it was a good draft as well. You know, we saw Lenane just holding on to these sweet dreams. Drage really wasn't touched. Like, he's going to have like a, an absolutely incredible KD, some great DPS as well, because it seemed like he was just hitting so many shots. And everybody on the side of Foot Esports there was doing their part, where it kind of just seemed like Nita's Cubs were being picked apart by the pinches that Foot were bringing in. Yeah, and I like that Foot are not underestimating the opposition at this present moment in time because we, we've seen that happen time and time again. And because we've seen so little of Nisa's Cup this year, I mean, which is a strange thing to say, to be honest, because we saw Gugu a lot last year playing with Humble and, uh, you know, and, and as well, you know, Soy Nebreza, Emma, these are all really notorious players and just haven't really been in this stage of the competition that much. But Foot still just do not give them any grace. And I think that's exactly how you've got to play it. As we've seen already today, what can happen is you, you know, kind of get you know, a bit overconfident with your position. Just got to make sure that it goes until the final game is done before you get those celebrations in order. But that is a great set to start things off. Not many mistakes on the side of Foot, to be completely honest. A big lack of range on the side of Nidus comes, which did prove around to be costly. And yeah, the statistics, uh, yeah, that kind of says a lot. Double donuts, under 100 DPS for Omega and Gugu, sort of breast the only one with a single kill and, and into the hundreds. But, you know, look at that on the other side of the coin. Five for Semantic, four for Drake, six for Lenar. And almost everyone into 200s for DPS. That's, that kind of says it all. We could have just pretty much shown those stats and just shut up, Trav. <laughs> Just just throw them up on the board and just be quiet and it explains itself. We didn't even need to watch the set at this point. You could have guessed who came out on top of that one. But we are on to safe zone in heist. Another pretty skillful affair, I'd imagine. You know, it's these long-range brawlers. Got to pick the right moments to go aggressive. So I think this is a map that... It depends on whether foot esports go overly aggressive. We've seen them at certain times pick brawlers that just run in a straight line and maybe over aggress rather than playing it smart. Nita's Cup's going to start things off with an Eve though as their first pick. I like it. Don't necessarily think it's first pick material on a map like this. We're going to see the Brock coming in from foot esports. I do like that quite a lot. Obviously, if you're going to get some shots on the save, you're going to rain down quite a lot of damage. Colette following up after that as well. Great pick from them.
Love that. From for, uh, but I do love from Nitsa's carbs that they banned out Cordelius. Clearly keeping their eyes on the Snapdragon Pro Series, but Lanan just popped off on Save Zone and made it look so, so easy. And I can assure you it is not. Shelly is still available here. It is a tougher map to make her work on, but Piper coming in for Nita's Cubs is definitely interesting. Haven't seen it for a while in a water sea. But I'm with you. I think the E first pick, not necessarily my kind of flavor. I think that the Brock probably is more to it, but this is interesting ideas. Trying to keep, obviously, foot at a, a big, big distance here. And I'm not sure whether it's going to pay off. It, it can be very, very hard to deal with. There's still a bit available here as well, but I don't really feel like that's necessarily what Nisa's Cubs are thinking. Maybe what foot are potentially lining up here. Or Foot could run with Sam. Ooh. They like Sam a lot. Cole. These are wild, wild ideas. And I just hope for their sake it pays off. Mate, Nita's Cubs out there thinking like mechanical genius or something. They're bringing the pipe and they're bringing the Colt. <laughs> this is this is a wild comp with Sam. Yeah, this is Sam, yeah. Right. Who would have guessed the foot would bring it Sam at some point? <laughs> they just love this brawl. They'll probably be Lenane on it. They'll throw him on that brawl and let him run a straight line. And usually it pays off, but on occasions it can hinder them quite heavily as well. Yeah, on safe side, I think they've been better with their success rate of it. Um, there she's impressed me a lot the last week running it and doing a much better job of running it in uh, Ring of Fire. But, you know, I, I, it will 100% be Lenan. Probably Drage on the Colette as well. Holding W. Um, but these Cubs have got all the range. So, you know, if they land some of these shots, I am all for, you know, impressive cult lineups and, uh, and all that jazz. But you got to land those moments. That's the key. Yeah, well, it's going to be that Piper versus Brock matchup in the mid, which Omega should be able to dominate, but it's just a question of, as you say, whether or not they're going to be able to hit these shots, or as it's going to be a pretty free foot game. Colt up against the Sam here, he's got that movement speed, gadget straight in, and I think we can say goodbye to Gugu instantly here, and, and then just going to wait this one out, bait a few shots out of Omega, and you know, this is what happens. He's in this position now, and it's going to be tough to get him out. Yeah, I kind of pray sort of Brethren and Omega just for, you know, contesting in, into the mid, not worrying about it, but they are leaving him on the safe. I'm still seeing damage raining down, and that could be the wrong play to make. They've got to have dealt with it and then moved up, but they didn't do that, and Google just went straight off the spawn into the mix, and already it's a lot of damage. I mean, he's still there! Someone please do something about the nun! You can't leave him on the safe on his own! <laughs> I mean, Respin's gonna miss as well. I mean, Lenane's just still cooking down this safe. 50% left, and we're even gonna see a Colt Super being missed here. Follow up shots, and that should be the game done. For Esports, they're on a speed run of this multi final at this point because they're not being stopped. Instantly winning in Gem Grab, finishing this one off in pretty much a base race, not the fastest base race I've ever seen. But at this point, this is not good for Nita's Cubs. Like, instantly we see the, the Colt go down to the Sam. And I mean, I'm not sure what that pick is into anything, but against something like a Sam, obviously, and the, the option of that last pick that Foot still had, I think Colt was a bit of a weird pick. See, Nita's Cubs are great players, but it's moments like that where there's like the decision making makes me question their ability to handle this quarterfinals matchup against a team like Foot. You know, Lenan got 100% of the safe on his own. I mean, no one dealt with him. And like, even after all that time, see, it's not the fastest of brawlers to shred it down, you know? After all that time, he was still there. You know, you can't do that. You really can't. But now, a bit more of a mid paced matchup as Lenan pushing towards the right hand side as well, laying down the knuckle busters for a potential gadget pop. Though, but Emma didn't time it right, he jumps up now, but he'll get the heel off the back of that as well. And there's the slam on the way down. 66% of that safe is all that remains. Oh my word, it could be going from bad to worse. Yeah, Samantha was just trying to eat all those parasites coming in there. Dre just got another soup onto the safe as well. Here comes the soup from Lenane again, and he doesn't even have to stop. He's just walking in a straight line, and Mega trying to bait that out once more, and he, he can happily do that. He'll just go and pick up his soup and throw it out yet again, get some heals, and might even be able to throw it towards the safe there, but Gugu's going to tank one of those shots from Semantic, and regardless of this control getting back, they don't have that high DPS, and Colt's on defense. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Semantic with a lovely pickup as well, as the, uh, the rocket left to save the situation. 30% remain and Drage on the safe, gotcha gadget inbound as well. We'll go down to a who's trying to tap Lenan, but you know, again, it's such a challenging matchup in the best of days, and Lenan knows how to shoot it best, and he's still there, going on the save, 14% remaining, and that's not gonna be a connecting super at all. He was on a slither of HP, but it's enough time to buy. The semantics are now come on the right-hand side lane and push his way forwards, just 7% remaining, and Furt don't miss these. 
Smurfs has got a super. That's surely going to be it there. Rains it down. Gets the safe on its knees. And I mean, Foot Esports, they take the second set. This is domination at its finest from Foot Esports. I, I don't even know if they've actually got any opponents at this point. Because they're just walking in a straight line and winning continuously over and over and over again. Didn't stop in gem grab. Didn't stop in heist. And I mean, I guess you've kind of got to be a little bit more passive in Flare and Phoenix. But at this point, they might as well just run in a straight line there too. <laughs> I mean, you go from like my reaction during that set to the after cam of Drage, just looking just completely zen. So in focus, just wired in to the Matrix. <laughs> I mean, like, they're not underestimating Nita's Cubs. Uh, from what we see and what we're talking about, a very different case on the faces of, of Drage. And I think that's a very important factor, you know, because I don't then see this being a reverse sweep scenario where they get over cocky and overconfident. I mean, they're just treating every game as it comes exactly how you should, you know. But, I mean, that was about as convincing a set as it gets. And for Nita's Cubs, I really just hope that they kind of reconsider some ideas going into their next set. I mean, Sony Press had a much better game, you know, but when you leave open opportunities like that in the first game, when Lennar just left on the same entirely to his own, I mean, you, you expect to lose regardless to your stats on the board. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter how good of a game you have if you know, you've just got the opponents on you safe the entire time. You can get kills, but if they can just run in a straight line and come straight back to the same position, get some damage on safe and continuously do that over and over, it's not going to be too good. But I mean, I guess you've kind of got to give uh, some level of well done to, to Soda Brezza there for getting those kills and getting the DPS down because he seemed like he was the only one really fighting. Just questionable drafts, I feel, from Nita's Cubs, and they're definitely going to have to iron that out, or is this going to be a straight 3 0 sweep for foot? Yeah, it really is. Let's see, though, as well, how they want to bring this one around. I want to see a Cordelius ban realistically here, but I don't think it'll be from foot, and it's not, and that's dangerous stuff because this map is wide open for Daryl's, and Cordelius can counter it so, so well. RT will be the first pick in from Nita's Cubs. I don't mind it. It's a good bit to have. Still, Bell going to be available. Throwers will absolutely still be an option, regardless of the tick ban, regardless of the sprout ban. Uh, Carl, as well as Barley, adds the mix. Brock for safety from foot, which is, again, very much to my taste. Shelly, tick, and another band out by foot as the body joins the cards. Yeah, I mean, it's safety. And the gene ban was the final one for foot. This is a solid comp uh, and a very, very safe way to start here for foot. I mean, Cordelia is still on the menu still there for the taking so i mean maybe it can happen we saw it on this map in the asian region this morning and there it is nita's cub's gonna pick it up i can't blame them for it either obviously playing against some range which makes it that little bit more difficult but if you can play the game patiently if you can wait for those late phases and the same with gugu he's gonna want to do the same build up his super wait for the late game and absolutely crush it with his legs like that's just how it's gonna be squeak coming out as the nita cub's last pick i don't mind that either you know the, the residue is gonna be able to slow people down possibly even get a mega into a position where he can get that super from them I think Bell would be a good shot shout here for me, just to be able to find Cordelius and have those shots ricochet off. And like I say, they keep their range. Grom gonna come in, okay? That does similar ideas as well. Um, they've got basically, yeah, like you said, use that range to, to eradicate the Cordelius in the early stages because in the late stages, that could go against them big time here. But Grom, pretty normally learn none actually on that Grom pick. Uh, obviously with the Watchtower gadget as well, you're able to you know, assert a lot of your authority. Um, you know, see where they lie within the bush or X Factor to just pummel down with those shots. It can be a dangerous thing. The Grom Bombers, we know, you know, can turn games more often than not. But timing that body as well on the side of foot is going to be quite crucial and key. Obviously, to you know, go in at the right times on the right Brawlers as well, because RT might be the wrong time and the wrong Brawlers to do it with. Let's see how they fare in the early stages. So far, foot, though, with a two set sweep, are looking comfortable. I mean, I don't really mind either of the comps here, that's the thing. We'll see who manages to come out on top. Squeak versus Drage over this left-hand side. Soy on the Squeak. And the name just waiting out. Playing it slow, waiting for Cordelius to show his face and scanning this right-hand side of it too. Wall break coming in as well. Not going to fully get that down, which is a little bit unfortunate for Drage there, as he will want this open lane. I mean, Lane stepped out, out of line instantly, but they might be able to get the trade jump over. Semantic's trying to trade this one out, and actually, this has gone perfectly for Nia's Cubs so far. Semantic's going to fall. Drage all alone over the left-hand side in a 1v3 and that's just not going to happen this is what i said you know if they wait for the moment and if foot are going to give them the moment nita's cubs can bring this back with cordelius yeah i was kind of surprised at the beginning that you know it wasn't banned out because i thought that foot would want to play it and they just kind of didn't prioritize it as their first pick clearly just want that range but there are a team that will adapt though under the, that kind of you know, situation now 
Well, I hope they will for their sake. <laughs> the Nan just not going to probably go out as far deep as he did. And just semantically there for support. But you've got to find their balance, haven't they, between these early moments. Because obviously, you know, Nita's Cubs want to wait down the clock. And both want to push into this, but at the same time, don't want to feed that utility at the same time. So it's quite a key balance to be found here. But regardless, that's the first time in our life from Nita's Cubs so far. Well... Watchtower goes down, and now should be able to scout out a bit of this bush, or just pretty much see where he is in that little bit remaining. And actually isn't making any connections anyway. He's choosing to stay a bit more passive, which I can respect after uh, what happened in the last game. But now he's starting to make a move, now that Watchtower's gone. Sliding through and avoiding some shots. Super available now, gets it onto Lenane, and that's got to be a kill right there. Not much chance of him bringing this one back, but on the other side, Semantic brings a Megalo. Gets the last shot off, but Grom was still in that uh, Shadow Realm. Couldn't get it done. Gugu's going to finish off Semantic there, and this is going Nita's Cubs way if we don't see something change from foot they can't play the early game and they're losing the late game yeah i was surprised because you know lenard did such a great job of fighting him the entire way through the game watch tower gadget goes down but then the inevitable push comes in and it's just gonna go one way i think it's swapped out yeah lenard will go to the left now which makes more sense obviously you know having semantic there or you know breaking some bush would go a long way as well they could probably use the rocket fuel to do just that Choosing to break the mid first, which they mind, but nonetheless, this this Cordelia's pick from foot has been the problem. And that's it. Break that right hand side. That helps out a lot in that early game moments. Actually, Gugu's gone to the left hand side now, but you know, I was hoping for that they can rekindle it because again, they didn't choose to ban Cordelia. I thought they were gonna actually prioritize it as a team in this region, which really have absolutely so jumped on the Cordelia's bandwagon. With some other teams, it's been a bit of a slow, sluggish start to that particular brawler in the EMEA region. Yeah, you know, Gugu's trying to push aggressive, actually has to jump away. Don't think it was going to hit anyway, but he is quite low. Choosing to just play it smart instead of taking the gamble. Now Lenain trying to follow up some shots. Semantic pinching in should help quite a lot as well. But Omega not really taking much fire at the moment, but eventually Lenain's going to get a connection. Soy pushing up this right hand side now. Did see that slow go down, but not really into the best of positions. Drage has the jump, might be able to use it on someone. Does not get a nice hit. Great from Lenain. Gugu's going to have to jump yet again. 2v1, it's winnable for him, but with no super, it's more difficult. And for esports, they're swapping, they're making the changes, and they're making it work. Yeah, straight away, those map changes. I mean, it has shifted the entire approach. I mean, great rocket fuels from Semantic. Just very early on utility, just to really shape the way they want to play this one. And, you know, Gugu now really can't get the jump on things. And But you know, over time, they just can keep their utility high. Then they've got the advantage more often than not. It's the way they change their approach so quickly. It just shows, like, at that level that you need to have to adapt. So he was trying to find a little bit of space here on the left-hand side and card. So that's still got the rocket rain as well, remember? And no doubt we'll get value for it. With the gas starts to come in and everyone starts to move forwards. But are playing much, much better for now. But can they contain, can they retain to do so? Yeah, lane has got this super as well. So the Grombob can do a lot when it does come down, especially if they're grouped up. Just trying to stay out of this range of feeding the super now and pushing forward. Drage coming across to try and help, but actually gets himself caught up in a 1v1 against Omega on the way. Super comes in from Semantic and gets one shot into this shadow realm. Now lane goes, and this might be a bit tough for them to win. Grombomb available, choosing to save it for the next round as just Drage remains alive. Wants to get his super, but doesn't want to feed Squeaks. Does get his, and now into the gas he should go, but it looks like Squeak might have been able to get his super there with those last couple of shots. We'll see in just a second. And I maybe don't think he has. Yeah, it's a tough spot. The Drage fell it quite a bit, actually, leading up to the moment where it happened, and you've got to spread out and just... Just stay away from Cordelius. Just literally just stay away the whole time. But kind of need to go on the bit of the aggressive now, I feel. A Grom Bomb and wouldn't be a bad idea to use it. Push forwards at the moment. Sneezes Cubs on the left there. Just staying so far back. And but haven't really responded to that kind of positioning power yet. Now moving forwards. But they could have really done a bit more in that time, really. As Omega on the right-hand side connecting really nicely with these shots. And he's really the one that's doing all the work at the moment. Yeah, I mean, we do see Cordelius with Super, so no wonder he's kind of staying passive. He wants that guaranteed connection and dragging someone into the Shadow Realm along with him towards the late game so that his teammates can win the 2v2. But Drage over this left now. I'm surprised we haven't seen... Oh, actually, we did see a little re-rotation from Cordelius over to the right, joining the RT. And Lenane's very low. Gets the Grumble off and gets the kill. But this Cordelius Super is going to be doing a lot. Jump comes in from Drage. He's going to get traded out, though. It's pretty much going to be a 1v1 between Grom and Gugu. Can Lenane get it done? He's walked out into the middle of nowhere. Super comes in, and that's going to be finished off by Gugu. They take the set, and they start the possibility of a comeback. 2-1 now to foot. The Nita's Cups are still in this. 
Great stuff there from Nitsis Cubs. They played it better, but they had also Cordelis to help them out. And I think that that is where Fit will go back to the drawing board to speak about the option of leaving it on the table and whether they want to, uh, yeah, just kind of consider that draft. That, that's been a weak point for Foot in the past, sometimes when they've kind of been considering their options of the draft. Sometimes they get it really right, sometimes not so much. And I just felt like they were going to pick it. Like, you know, we've seen them play it quite a lot over the past few weeks. And that's not like a good place for it. Bonita's Cubs, you know, to their credit, spotted the, uh, the, the, the uh, open door and walked through it. And Google played it perfect, honestly. I mean, more often than not, just playing it patient enough to make sure to land the marks. And then just, yeah, I want to see these stats as well, because I'm sure, no doubt, he would have taken uh, an affirmative position in the uh, the kills needed in knockout. But you can see there as well on the cam, Omega, just a big bump of pump there. And that will go into the next set. It's actually Drage with the five kills. Surprising. Gugu though with a seven. But the DPS so low. Because uh, again, the, they, they took a while to get to those moments of uh, of takedown. It wasn't too back and forth more than it was waiting the timer down. But yeah, Gugu did a fantastic job in that last match. And one set on the board. But for the sake, I think that they would hope that, that is the last. Yeah, I mean, they've kind of got to close this out in a 3-1. I mean, it's following the trend of the, the underdogs coming out on top and winning. Uh, because this could be a big game for them to lose here. Foot Esports desperately need these points, especially when we know they're not locked in just yet to those SPS finals. Uh, and that's where we can get BSC points as well. So they need the points on the board in the Brawl Stars Championship Monthly Finals, whether that be this month or next month. But semi-finals is definitely going to be needed for them to get uh, to get anywhere near those world spots and never mind retaining their LCQ spot as well. We'll be heading on to Pinhole Punt in Brawl Ball, getting the Brawl Ball in as possible last game mode. And I feel like Foot's aggression should be able to pull this one through, but they've just got to be smart with the draft and not let the things that Nita's Cubs are going to be able to use uh, to break them down. As a squeak poker and Carl on the side of Nita's Cubs, the first draft of Crow. On the side of Foot, Banning Cordelitz, wise move, squeak and, and Shelly as well. I mean, no. <laughs> Foot have been very interesting when it comes to Brawl Ball recently. Uh, experimenting a lot more with Willow and, and Buzz even on occasions too. Stu going to come in as their pin in-game does really shine them in a good light. Normally semantic on it. M's as well coming in for safety as potential for tanks and Nita as well. Not banned out here. I think that that is actually quite a big sign that Nita's Cubs are probably going to pick it. I mean, as we know in Brawl Ball, it can be such a great pair of hands. And I do worry a little bit for Foot that the M's might not be enough for it. I mean, it's got the range advantage for sure, but if the Bruce gets landed down, it could be a tough thing to defend with the Stoop. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, the M's is just so solid on pretty much all Brawl Ball maps at the moment. That it's definitely something Nita's Cubs need to be worried about. But Otis comes in, prevents that kind of possible Sam last pick, which we know Foot Esports love to go for. And obviously the Crow along with that as well, being able to slow things down. Nita's Cubs still have one more available. And... It looks like they're going extremely anti-tank. Bit of mid-range brawl, uh, bit of mid-range brawl going on, but I like the Stu and I like the M's. It just feel like they're both going to struggle against the Crow quite heavily once those uh, once those slows are still available. Ooh. Leon. <laughs> okay. Uh, different. I. I <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to comment on it either. I don't, want to, I don't want to slate it too soon um, because sometimes it can be moments like that which you know, take a team by surprise. Ooh. Tara, though, yeah, I, mean, I know you're all happy with that. Yeah, but keeps, I mean, that man's got it in my eyes. If he touches this ball, <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna not go well. <laughs> I mean, I, I've heard that you were quite successful when, land, when landing your pools with Tara, Trav. So I, I trust your judgment, mate. I trust your judgment. One of the best in the region, so I hear. Yeah. Yeah, it's just factual. I mean, at least you know it. That's the thing. At least you're not opposing my opinion on this one because these guys should have learned from me back in the day, I'm telling you. But that's that's when you know where we're absolutely, you know, you're seeing eye to eye on it. <laughs> this Leon pick, though, I mean, it's kind of wild. It is, yeah. I mean, honestly, I kind of hope it works just to prove me wrong. But at the moment, I'm very much on the fence about it. See a quick aggression coming in from Drage. Ball going to be passed up there by Lenane and quickly burning through that support from beyond. Trying to get some remnants of his super here. Another gadget going to be used as well. Get to Mega and actually brings Gugu quite low. Drage on an absolute tear so far throughout this game. 
Yeah, I agree, but there is only one more gadget left, and that's a bit of a concern, but in the same time, I think that Foot know that they quite favor these early moments of the game, and definitely over time-wise, that Leon could prove costly as well as the Crow. There's a lot which they could struggle against. That short range to the stoop. Now invisibility coming in. That's the last gadget there for Drage. Taking no chances and cautious around where Gugu is. Gugu is a very good Leon though, I do recall, so I don't necessarily mind the pick, but it's uh, definitely not what I was expecting to see. Yeah, I mean, footy spots are in control. Drage just trying to not get stunned out and slowed at least. Good jump from Omega, but there's the pull from Drage. We're not really going to get a lot done. Keep it off him as well, but now the pass coming through and that should be the goal along with it. Footy spots going to take the 1-0 lead. Still a minute and 20 on the clock, so nothing Nita's Cubs can't come back from. But at the moment, they haven't really got out their half of the map. Yeah, challenging stuff for Lanar, though. Low here and burning down, 490 HP. For the press, though, on the other side of things, gets cleared up by Semantic, and that's an opening on the left. If Drage wants to go for it, but Gugu's using that invisibility it's again. And look at the way that Foot responded. Everyone coming together. The communication absolutely on point, and they took care of business. So the press on the right, 900 as well. Omega 166. Everyone on the side of Nisus Cubs, low more off than not. And now the pass through from Drage. The super the follow. The potential clear, though, is there. The depriving valuable time. It should still be a goal here for Semantic, and it is. So Esports heading on to match point. It's looking good for them. They started so strong. And yes, those gadgets were used pretty early from Drage, but it got them control for the rest of the game. And I think it's probably worth it, you know. And even when Gugu popped that super, uh, didn't get a lot done with the Leon. And I don't think it probably was the best of picks here. We'll see if they're able to bounce back from this and maybe take it to that set number five, as it seems to be our common trend throughout the day. Lenane taking some hefty fire early on. And an early gadget once more from Drage coming through. Can't work out whether Drage is preparing for a boxing match, match or a game of brawl, honestly. Like, he just looks so in the zone. And it's only when it's over when he tends to crack a smile. We see that more than not. But that's the second gadget. Goes down himself on that, that right-hand side. And that's low here. And yes, the match has got to come back. He's got to realize the situation, regroup with his team as Gugu. He's really getting some good value at the moment on this right-hand side. Lanan healing up now. But, yeah, semantic low. Lanan low. This is getting a lot of momentum for Nita's Cubs. That clear up is at the crucial moment in time, and that will at least slow down the advance. Yeah, Drake got hit by that shot then, and now being slowed down. Lenane as well has his super though. Eventually it wears off, but that's going to be Lenane burning down. Drage looking like he wants to try and get some super here off Gugu. Shots coming through. Does feed the super of Gugu, but gets one himself. And we know how influential Atara super can be. Just needs to hold on to this one. Now he's going to burn down, but come back from spawn and use that. And they'll definitely be in a good spot. Semantic. I mean, they've got oh! open there, but they don't know where Gugu is, so they couldn't go for it. Right right choice to kind of stay passive, but Lenane choosing to go for it now. Shots come through. Pass to Semantic. Super goes towards the goal, but Omega manages to catch it. Nice stuff from him and a good friend zone from Lenane to keep them away. Great connection from Drake as well. An easy pickup there for him. Just completely on the side of Gugu, not able to do anything about it to defend it. Catch a pop there from Soda Brezza into the mid, but do not really serve to get much value to show realistically where Lanal and Drake are likely to be. This is a great spot here. So the Mantic knows it goes in with some consecutive taps from the Soda Brezza. Super break from the mid from Drake, and there it is. So now we want to score it. And it's now 40 seconds for Nisus Cubs to get a goal or they're going home. Super off spawn and Gugu trying to find the first successful super. And even at that, gets absolutely melted upon coming out of it. Lenane's going to burn down thanks to that crow shot though. And Drage just trying to play this defense. Not going to be too close to a super as he won't have cycled it from the previous uh, from the previous goal. Semantic just trying to get some shots through. Get the gas to heal off. Nice from Lenane off spawn. Jump comes in though. That might leave an open goal. Super's there. And Soida Brezza finds it. Opening. And they had to take it in that moment or the game was over. What a shot. What an opening. Great stuff from Nia's Cubs. But they're going to keep it up. And now it's one right hand side takedown. Less. As Strange now will pick up this ball surely and score it. If they push it through now, the wall's going down. As easy as that. But put an end to it. And Nia's Cubs, well, they showed a bit of the size of life. But pull back hard and shy down. And they will proceed to the semi final sport today. And finally, a little bit of a crack of a smile from Drage. So focused. Didn't underestimate their opposition and didn't allow that reverse bloop to take its toll. Kind of what we expected to see coming in, Trump, but still some good moments from Nita's Cups. 
I mean, they won the set. And to be honest, that's more than I expected them to bring out of this game. It was quite heavily thanks to that Cordelius. And I'm surprised for esports, as you mentioned a little bit earlier, let that slip through the draft when they've been so successful with it. But to be honest, it wasn't kind of just like slipping through. I, th I think it was like the fourth pick overall. So I'm surprised it got that far through the draft as well. But thought maybe thought they had an answer to it, maybe scrimmed against it and managed to get some wins with those counters and kind of made Trump baiting them into it. But it didn't pay off in the game. And Nita's Cubs brought that set back. But overall, the set doesn't really matter if you don't win it. And I think that's definitely what Nita's Cubs needs to focus on for the future. You know, we've got one month left. There's still a possibility of them coming to the monthly finals again. And they need to improve this one out because a performance like that's just not going to get you very far in the monthlies. Really love this Tara pick. Honestly, and Drake's just popping off with it time and time again. It's a great pairing, isn't it? The Tara and the Stu. Such aggression. They're now playing a bit of control, which is a nice thing to see. He's rarely in that sort of position, is he, really? Yes, eight kills for Samantha. Actually, still some glory from Drage there. The seventh of Drage. But, I mean, a good showing on the side of Nia's Cubs. Not terrible stats by any means at all. But just what we saw in the field looked a bit more convincing on the side of foot, or very more convincing, if you want to say that, too. But I hope we see more from Sonya Brezza, Omega, and Gugu, because honestly, great players. Just wasn't really a year where we saw much consistency from them. But they've been present. That cannot be denied at all. Semantic, so the MVP, voted for you guys over the event.brawlstars.com. And we finally, on the casting desk, actually got a prediction in right, Trav. I mean, imagine that. Imagine casting team being actually right for once. Who would have thought that the supposed experts <laughs> would actually get a... Uh prediction right but at the end of the day we managed it somehow we managed it in a in a day of upsets we finally managed to get one right and i mean those first two definitely didn't go to uh to anybody's plan i imagine other than reply totem and uh and humble so i mean i'm still i'm still faithful in my uh, my future picks a little bit further down the line but i think this one was probably the most clean cut yeah i agree well up next we have got navi and SK Gaming to finalize our semi, uh, our quarterfinal stages rather. And again, this one is so, so important. This region is so locked in, so tight in that mid spot for points. But Navi, they are monthly final champions. Let's be honest. And that will not be something that SK Gaming will be forgetting anytime soon. MMA, Cube, and Angel Boy, they know how it feels to be out on top. Back in April, they did get the win over this very team in the grand finals is a 3-0 sweep, very convincing stuff. So for SK, they do want to get their revenge and they would need to get it this month as well to so be in a good spot for contendership for those BSC points for the last chance qualifications and the world finals because Trav, they haven't been the most consistent at qualifying this year. I mean, that's the thing. SK, they, they desperately need this. You know, they're not guaranteed just yet to be going to the uh, finals for the Snapdragon Pro Series. They've got absolutely no guarantees of next month either. And they're sitting down in eighth place. That's not even an LCQ spot at the moment. So not the best position for SK Gaming. They desperately need something on the board. And let's not forget, in the SPS, Navi beat SK Gaming just a week ago. So that was kind of my reasoning for why Navi over SK Gaming. But they have been looking pretty good. So it definitely is more of a 50-50. Yeah, I would say that SK are looking the best they ever have this year, actually. They've been growing a lot with OPE on the roster. And that definitely seems to be with it now situated and, and locked in with. And it's been working better with OPE and Yoshi and Chaos. But Navi are relentless, you know? This is a team that are slow burners every single year. You know, they take a while to find their pace, but when they find it, they just are able to look back upon all those that doubted them along the way and say, well, you know, we told you we'd come back stronger. And it's a very powerful thing for teams to be able to do that as convincing as Navi do. They really don't take to heart what people think about them. And they just let it show in their mechanics on the field. In this quarterfinal stages though, you know, I want to see how they fare. A time and time again, I have seen them get two sets ahead. It looks very convincing and then they start to get slack. And SKR are a team which will capitalize upon that as well. But SK today, I mean, deep focus clearly. No signs of smiles. They know what's at stake here and I respect that.
Yeah, I mean, you've kind of got to respect it, right? And they're going to respect it as well because they know everything's on the line today and over the next couple of weeks, the next month, they're going to be deciding whether they're going to be going to even the LCQ, never mind thinking about Worlds. So a much needed victory for them today. And even, even more than that, they need to get further than the semis if they want a good shot at those World Final spots. It's going to be a tough one for them. But as you say, with OP, they've been looking better than they ever have this year. And I think they might be able to do it. Well, we were united on the casting this for Navi to take the win, but we all said that this could very well be one of those moments where it is a lot closer than meets the eye, and very easily SK could do another upset on our predictions and put us at even more risk with the community and the uproar that could follow. But again, for SK, this is one they need. We saw it once already today with Reply Totem gaining the win over Zeta at just the right time for them, at a crucial point. And we could be seeing a similar story here today, but Navi Nation are out, Trav. You know what that means. 72% in their favor to the 28% of SK. Our first map doubles wish for Gem Grab. What do you make of that? I I think it's a very unfair prediction from the community. And yes, we're always going to be on the Navi Nation side. I'm pretty sure Navi would come out on top of a prediction against any team in the world, even Crazy Raccoon in the uh, in the World Finals at this point. But we see the Surge coming out as the first pick. And I don't think it's first pick material, right? We've seen it here. We've seen it do well. Uh, but I think there's better picks. Yeah, for me, it's definitely a map where it can work. I actually quite praise it. I I'm surprised I haven't seen more of it. The is being banned out in there, and that's really quite key for me. But we s we've seen a lot of brothers which can have the surprise attack. Well, Surge is just that, you know. It's getting right up in people's faces, and then just being able to circle off the back of it. One pop of a gadget, you know, and you're able to survive the transaction more often than not, and come out better for it. And if Angel Boy is the one on it, that makes me a little bit concerned. But you know, a lot of the battle is won and lost in the mid hit. And we're going to come in for SK. Love that particular brawler. But both signs, both sides kind of being a bit hesitant. There's Gene. There's also Bo, which is a really, really strong one here on that mid. Um, and I think now is the time for Navi to have to commit to one of those ideas um, as both sides just being a little bit sheepish around it. I, I love what SK are rocking, though. Do quite like what they got so far. Yeah, I, I much prefer SK's comp so far. And I don't, like I said, I don't dislike Surge, but it's not first pick material. It's something later on down the line that you play into a, a tank or something aggressive like a Carl if that does come down. Maybe they're preventing that for the future, but they're going to be the one taking the tank. They're going to go with the Sam. We know this is Navi style, uh, but it's into an Ems and it's into an Amber who can break down the bush, who can slow him, and it's going to be difficult. Yeah, I quite, I quite like Sam, though. If they if they play it well, that's the thing. It's not an easy map to make work, but there's still a chance to respond for SK. I mean, B still available here, not banned out by any side, and that could be something dangerous. How did Navi even go about... I mean, they've got to have a mid. This is not... There's no, there's no brawler here which is a mid brawler, right? I mean, yeah, finally, poker comes in. One well, that they tend to play quite a lot, but not necessarily here. And it's not really my preferred mid, to be honest. Obviously, they're kind of committing to it because they have the Sam. But I kind of prefer, I actually like Bo here. I, I think Bo is probably the best mid you can have. Uh, hot take, you know, not, not for everyone's ears to hear, but uh, you know, Gene's perfect now for SK if they want to go for it. There's no Bo to be able to go up against it. That's why I prefer Bo when they're both available, but um, they might even choose to have one of their other brawlers go mid and really double down with some aggression, counteract it, neat up. Okay, it's interesting. Not sure about it. <laughs> I mean, who's going to go mid? We can see an M's mid? <laughs> yeah, I know. It doesn't really have the best peak, I don't feel, and I don't think it's the best gem carrier, but they're kind of going all out just trying to counter that Sam. If you bring in, you know, Nita Bear, get the stun off, get something like that going, then it can be very good against the Sam. And obviously, Nita's going to be pretty good against the Surge once you get that bear as well. But I, I, I feel like they needed a mid here. I think both sides need a bit more of a mid, really. I mean, poker's not bad. Uh, no doubt about it. it it's it's, it's going to work better to have it and the Sam on their side than to not. But a very weird draft. A strange draft in Devil Swish. Not that I kind of was expecting much of what I'm seeing, actually, to be honest. Oh, well, Navi going to run it down the left-hand side instantly. Ope just trying to find Anita Bear early on, but at the moment... Navi got backed off and yeah, taking some serious fire on MMA there as he went to pick up those two gems from mid and still 2-2. Just a lot more feed, I feel, has gone to SK so far and Angel Boy giving even more. 
Yeah, there's gonna be shutdown here. Nice, he's up between Chaos and Yoshi. And now the burn goes down at a perfect spot. And that crossover completely naked. There's not really much that Navi can do except just try to commit or go and swap to the right hand side. But it's just a very risky comp. Angel Boy will go down on the, on the left hand side as well. The gems will report on the MMA. Who strains the pocket of Chaos. And Cube now in a one versus three. Can't defend them forever. I would say OP hasn't actually got any shots towards his bear yet, I don't think, because now Cube's got level 3 after taking some shots towards those gems when they were running towards it, but actually gets his bear now. Must have missed something in the early game. Throws it down. Not really getting the best value as it falls pretty much instantly, and up top, Angel Boy's on a tear. Gonna get taken down surely, though, by Chaos. Throws out his knuckle busters, try to get some dying damage onto him. But this level 3 surge is gonna be a bit of a difficulty now for SK. Look at that, all those bushes down. MMA did survive away and just didn't get affected by it, but there's a nice gadget from Angel Boy and again, a takedown for it. OPE's low as well in the mid. Oh, great, protect the tunes as well. The gadget pop from MMA and now Chaos is under scrutiny. Cube's surviving on, but this bought a lot of time. And now as quickly as that, as unlikely as that, now we've got a much better position in complete control of things, more or less. Angel Boy, though, could go down here. The slow just cancelled out. Q with the pickup, though, and it's coming, crumbling down for SK. Chaos is low, and the jams go into pocket. A cube it is done, surely. No time for a pushback now. No Angel Boy there. That was a complete and utter steal. I mean, these protective tunes have been flawless. Every time we see a Nita Storm coming through, every time we see an end slow, the protective tunes get hit, but nothing is happening. The stuns just completely get negated, and SK Gaming are just left watching as they run away with all their gems and may feeling as composed as ever there as well after winning that first game and you know i say i'll stand by i don't think surge is a good first pick but it was played brilliantly there i was saying to teddy backstage before the show like you know uh, and he said exactly how i feel you know navi are that team where it's really hard to predict with them as to whether it's going to go for or against them because some of their drafts are sometimes a bit weird and wacky and out there some of them on paper should work and they just play them badly and then there's drafts like this which take the entirety of the game to really show much resolve and then they actually come out on top and and for, for the most part sk were playing it perfect and shutting it down time and time again and it just took a little bit of a moment to slip and it all changed immediately but this time round, three gems for mma two for chaos now three to three and the angel boy gets some value on the left hand side gets to take down the yoshi and a stack already for cube it's looking better for navi actually but it's more than last game this is worrying now. He's got his speed available and Amber's coming to his side as well. He's finding some shots whilst he's level three thanks to this gadget. Now actually has level three as well. This is just becoming worse and worse for SK Gaming. But do we even out the count? Angel Boy's going to come back, retreat, use these supers to heal up and obviously fall into his arms of his Poco to get some heals. But level three is there now and this is where they should start excelling. Poor on lane side, but OP shuts the idea down. Now, Chaos with super as well into the mid. And that's going to be a key moment in time. Got to get some value off the back of this. Got to get some takedowns. Angel Boy's lurking on the right-hand side. Bruce Bear coming in. That's a perfect time for it. They can now seek him out and destroy him. And everyone pops their utility and wipes off the face of the Earth Cube. 60 HP gets taken down by OPE as well. And now OMMA is forced to super. It's all he can do. What a, what a turnaround. SK took complete control of that. And now they're on countdown. Great stuff from them. I mean, complete composure loss there from Cube as well. Used his last stack when he was guaranteed to go down, but Gadget comes back. The knockback's there, though. The friend zone knocks him away, but he's got his knuckle busters back. There's still a possibility here. Ope's low, and all it takes is one, but no gadgets remain, and no shots will come through from Navi just yet. SK Gaming will even it out in this first set, and you know, Navi looked good in the first, but SK looked better in the second. Yeah, that was a solid response. It really was from SK who know that they've got the better comp for the most part, you gotta, you, you can't not say, you know, that they are defending time and time again against the aggression of Navi. And if anything, Navi sometimes getting a little bit overconfident with that. They've got to go aggressive, no doubt about it, but against the M's and what is clearly great team communication, look at Angel Boy here, just depending upon these hills. Eventually though, yeah, Yoshi will exacerbate down and Yoshi comes out, uh, Chaos comes out on top rather. But in the meanwhile, it's now OPE on his own. Gets take down on Cube and the gems dropped pretty favorably actually into the hands of MMA. One aggressive opening starts. Yeah, stunned out though, and that's two protective shoes gone already, which isn't the best for Navi. Knucklebuster thrown out, tried to get some heals off, but not gonna get it. Maybe should have gone for that dying damage instead. But Yoshi's gonna burn down this grass and actually make a connection onto MMA as well, which brings him 
just a little bit lower. Takes about half of his HP away, but Cube now has this permanent level 3. In comes the pullback from Angel Boy, though. He's going to get the shot through and get the kill down onto him. And surely can't get out of this position, though, but they've got no ammo. And he's staying alive. The heal comes through, and he remains in this aggressive position. But now Nita's back. Surely they go down, but he doesn't go down lightly. Brings them so low along the way. It's incredible. Oh, the value of the back of that, honestly. MA pushing forward, as well gets two gems, and the takedown of Yoshi is swift. Now they're going to be with uh, Angel Boy, it's not perfect, but the countdown is theirs anyway. It doesn't matter. SK have got to push against this now. It's either Cube or Angel Boy. Cube with the Knuckle Busters, Cube as well, might be able to jump away if you need be, but Angel Boy might go down the hill, comes in just the nick of time, but SK are not done. Angel Boy surviving on, goes down finally in just the nick of time, but can SK come out on top? I don't know. It's going to be a tough ask for sure. Look at this. It's all reset. I mean, I think Chaos got out with the one gem they needed for the count as well, so they don't have the count. Beautiful from him to get out of there. But OP just going to throw down this bear. Stun used as well, not going to get anything from it. The gems drop. Steel comes in, and Cube's got to make something magical happen. Can't do it in a big turnaround from SK. They take the gems, but the drag bag's there. Angel Boy might get the kill. He doesn't get the knuckle busters off again. Chaos there with the slow as well. op has got 10, and this is tough for Navi. What is happening? <laughs> Chaos don't look. It's taking down. It's still a race. It's not a race. Yeah, it's 11 to 8. There's one on the map. Angel Boy picks it up, but it's not enough time. And SK respond in the biggest way possible. Oh, my word. How did they get out of that spawn? I, I, I actually don't have a clue. <laughs> so, you know, Surge was there getting some shots in, but they couldn't get anything done. Couldn't get enough DPS. And I don't know how they managed to take the Samite in the first place with all the heals he was getting. So much DPS must have gone down onto him. Well, that is a big win for SK Gaming. We know, you know, they're, they're very capable of reverse sweeping, but if they can take it fast and quick, they're not going to complain about that one either. The protective tunes have been so big throughout this game, and Cube doing such a good job in there as well. But it's, it's just tough for them to take this early loss because they looked so good whilst winning, and then they just got turned on. Honestly, like, when you watch other players with Sam, like, they go down swiftly. I mean, obviously the poker is there, but Angel Boy just seems to just, I don't know, just source double HP from somewhere. Like, that's how it feels. But what, what, this moment's crazy, honestly. And Navi running away with the gems, back in the spawn side, and they got 11 there in the pocket. And 15 seconds on the clock. I mean, to find it within them to get that kill in the final nick of time here. But Cube's still there, just tempting to jump in. The burn there was what so successfully helped that situation. And they just come back in to reset the whole thing. I mean, honestly, SK did so well there to come out on top, but they deserved to. That was a grueling first set there. Yeah, I mean, there's just so many times where Angel almost got the kill onto the Nita as well, almost took the gems back in their spawn there. And I mean, MMA just getting two kills. I mean, obviously, was, wasn't playing the most aggressive of brawlers, but still, in comparison to everybody else, who were some of them playing passive as well, not really getting the same amount done. Kills 10, 8, and 6 on the side of SK Gaming, 10, 6, and 2. So not too far apart, but SK definitely winning on the side of the DPS and kills. 331 for Chaos, and that is substantial DPS. <laughs> I mean, getting, getting into the 300s is relatively rare, I would say, and that was a great showing from him. And at a crucial moment as well, objectively, you know, that was his shot, which got the reset as well. And for SK's chances, that's, that's about as good as you can get to start things off. Hot Zone up next will be the mode. Open Zone, of course, the map. And this is going to be a very, very important draft. I mean, so many, it's quite a, a wide variety of brawlers that can have moments on this particular map. I mean, I kind of want to see a stew ban, but Shelly Ban kind of needs to be up there as well. Cordelius kind of needs to be up there as well. Pam can have some great results. Crow, Bell, I mean, there's, there's a lot. Amber, let's see what the bans are. Crow, B and Pam banned out by Navi. Bell, Squeak and Bonnie banned out by SK. Already good signs, but Shelly available, Cordelius available. It's worrying stuff for me on both sides here, Trev. <laughs> That's the thing, I was going to say, what do they pull out first? But they come with Amber. And I mean, I don't know if they're like gearing up to take on Cordelia Shelley, but this is not what I would have gone for first. The win rates as well, there's still quite a few of those available. Car's still available, I mean, Meg's still up there. Amber's first picked, obviously, but it's just not what I kind of would have gravi gravitated towards as a first pick. We're going to see the Shelley come in, and now I question if we're going to see the Cordelius as well for Nami. I mean, 
artistically as well, Lou. Yeah, I love Lou here as well. Great pick. Um, I think playing it safe a little bit, having something of an objective denial, but I mean, SK now, you got an opportunity to double down here, pick or deal and have something of a longer range affair. If you don't see it, it's kind of interesting to me because um, surely if you get into position, you know, into the mid using that wall as coverage, you can't really push up against that. You know, it's just go through the wall. You know, we even saw earlier it goes through utility as well. Um, you know, there's not much in the way. And they're going Lola. I mean, I think the bell was banned from memory as well, right? By themselves, so that makes a lot of sense. But definitely carries more weight when the bell is banned. It's often easy to forget just like what Lola can achieve in that regard. But let's see what they follow up with is their third and final pick. As you know, he can't go to yeah, Stu, it's a great thing to ban, actually, the speed zone as well, but interesting draft. Um, yeah, you could say that. So I'm coming in as the last pick, and I mean, I don't know how I feel about this. I'm kind of lost for words about this draft overall. SK have definitely, in my eyes, got a bit more of a well-rounded comp, but you never know what Navi can pull out with a tank in the hands. Yeah, surprised with the poker not being banned as well, whether they might have actually looked to maybe combine that with a poker like we saw previously, and that would have been like, even harder to shake actually on the zone. But picking the loot, I think, was quite smart in the order of proceedings too, just to ensure that they had you know, out of the way there, they kind of tap the, the kind of tap counter. Great gadget early on. Yoshi's just going to go down immediately Ooh. here. Moby is switched to follow as well. The double. Oh dear. What a terrible start for SK. As now Navi goes straight up into the top right. Keep the pressure on. Find out a super friend of time and just waste the clock. What value from Angel Boy. You can't leave that guy alone open. It's just too dangerous. Yeah, I take everything I said back. Angel Boy's literally cooking on the side over the left hand side. Left to the right and he got two <laughs> kills along the way. Can't complain about that. Lucy super on the zone. Keeping him at bay for the moment. And they eventually comes back up. Didn't get much of a cycle, and Angel Boy does go down now. Gonna use the gadget and not get value off it as well. Cube gonna take this right hand side down. Follow with the clear pigeon as well, but should fall with no trades at all either. Angel Boy's lurking on that left, and the spray of chaos will help out quite a lot actually with the ego able to widen the radius of awareness. Down to the right hand side onto Yoshi. Just trying to keep back there, Cube, as best he can, but now Angel Boy goes down. It's better. Freezing the zone will deter SK from being able to capture much in terms of the objective, but they are now at 50%, and Navi are behind here. They're the ones that have got the aggressive. Got to push, got to get the team wipe, and Angel Boy is surely going to get burner here. I mean, there's just too many bodies around it. This is this is tough for, for Navi now. MMA trying to come back up, but he's actually going to be slowed down by that mythic gear on the Amber Oil, and MMA should fall as well with a little bit of aggression from Ope, but Angel Boy's going aggressive. Can't do much himself either. Surely going to get taken down by the three of them pinching in, but actually does manage to get one. Throws that backwards as well. Cube's going to burn down. Angel Boy's going to fall. MMA needs to make something happen. 13% required for SK Gaming. <laughs> MMA can't hit a shot. <laughs> it's difficult for Navi there, and Ope should be able to get this last drizzling percentage in as they take another game back home. My word, I cast this like exuding confidence there at the end, like just tiny body movements, but I mean, if it jukes the shot, it jukes the shot. And SK honestly are working together very well. You know, it's not a, a common thing to see when up against the might of a team like Navi and their aggressive ideas that they're actually outsmarting this quite a lot with not necessarily some of the most meta ideas, but just what works against the situation. And what a time for it. I mean, they're one game away from taking two sets up as a lead. But MMA low, can't really contest this OPE wins it. Q goes down as well. That is going to be a good start for SK. I just don't know what to say. Navi have got some wild drafts and they're just not working. Chaos now on this left hand side as well, able to scout out so easily. And Angel Boy scouting himself out by throwing the super down over and over again. So now the super comes forward and the gadgets there as well. Does get one, throws it too far away, I feel, though. It's across the water. He was going for it, but couldn't quite get to it. We see the super coming down now from MMA, but a little portion over that right hand side still available for them to stand on without sliding and getting frozen. MMA goes down. Hope he's still staying on that zone, like you're rightly saying. Like, that is really moments that Navi can't afford to let slip through the cracks. But they're this far behind. I mean, it, SK 
Skier approaching 20% needed. I mean, they're still in the zone, shooting everything that they've got to throw them. That's a huge moment right there, though. The catch on point, but SK survive. This one is going to be Joe Overtramp. That's only 10% needed. What a result for SK. Surely two sets up. One last ditch to turn from Navi, but that is not going to be enough either. It's over, and SK are running away with it. I'm, I'm lost for words. I mean, it's not like... We, we ever see Navi play this poorly. We never see them draft this poorly. When they pick the tanks, it usually works. But I think maybe it's time for them to just change things up and go something normal. Because Sam on the open zone is literally in the map name. Open zone. It's open. Maybe don't play tanks. Ah, uh, you summed it up perfectly, Trav. Your brain there working at full capacity, clearly, to put it in a way that's so simplified. And I appreciate that. I really do. But you're right, you know, I mean, they left it to the final pick. At that moment in time, you can see the big picture, you can see what you're facing into. And that's where sometimes Navi do come a bit unhinged. Their confidence of these tankier ideas and these big, you know, brutal, you know, comps that are designed to bully, you know, don't necessarily always work out, you know, especially with this much space. And SK are reading like a bit of a book today in that regard. Had its moments in the previous set, but, you know, <sighs> Just not in open zone. Chaos to get on 10 kills. He said 20 kills in two sets. That's really strong stuff. So the one ever made, one of Cube, four of Angel Boy. And Navi do not look at all like themselves. I mean, we saw this very matchup in the Snapdragon Pro series, and it was a 3-1 in favor of Navi to SK. Well, SK took it personal, and it shows today they're not missing the trick. But it's far from over. Third set still to come. But Navi have got to make a change, like you say, because it ain't working. I mean, we were talking about Chaos with his low 300s DPS. Now he's high 300s over that side. And I mean, <laughs> was MMA playing Lou? Was he, was he playing? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I know he was playing Lou and he got 72 DPS and one kill. <laughs> I, don't, I think that kind of explains why we're seeing the results we're seeing. SK Gaming on an absolute tear over the right hand side. Look at their DPS. I mean, it's just unparalleled by anything we're seeing from Navi. As we go into pit stop, it's definitely more of a Navi map. They have defended so well, and SK needs to, to ban these brawlers, ban the Willow, ban the Cordelius, depending upon what they've got in terms of picks, because Navi were fierce on pit stop. I remember the comp so, so clearly, except for the third pick. And it's, it's Nel Primo, they went up in terms of the pick. They they did the best game of pistol I've seen in such a long time with a, a Cordelius, a Willow, and a Primo. Obviously, it depends what's on the options and what they're facing into. But yeah, SK banning out Cordelius wisely, so Barley first pick for Navi. Interesting stuff so far. The Spike ban, the Rika ban, and the Edgar ban. That's that interesting bans from Navi. SK related bans, I like that. The Bonnie ban, the Cordelius ban, and the Shelly ban for SK. Let's see how this one fares out. I was going to say, I'm quite glad that we got the Cordelius ban because when Navi picked that and Willow up, it was... It was actually, I'm, I'm quite sad it's because it was an entertaining game when Navi picked that up. They played it so perfectly yeah. with the Willow-Cordelius uh, combo. We're going to see the Max. Max on pit stop is not something I've seen in a while. I do like the Nita, though. Might struggle a little bit against the Barley in that, that kind of early game and obviously pretty much all the way through. But once she gets a bear, she can start to push back a little bit. Now back over to Navi for their two picks. We'll see what they do choose to go, whether they add some tanks and stick with what they've been going for and I'd understand it here right I'd understand it on pit stop but it's just a question of which ones they want to pick up and even if they do want to interesting ideas from SK who have been pretty on point today Ems can have his moments for sure but probably would prefer the map to be a little bit more open so a wall breaker would go a long way here and that's, yeah, I mean, I wasn't thinking necessarily Buzz, but I was, no, I was thinking El Primo, but it's much more a Navi thing to pick, isn't it? Let's be honest. But SK have got final pick, and, and they've been pretty on point today at, at proving that they can handle what Navi bring. But Buzz, I mean, that is pretty much the defining brawler of this team this year. So it's going to be a tough one to, to put in its place. And coming with a third and final pick, to shut that particular brawler down, Daryl's the answer. With Cordelius banned out here, it, it makes a good time to bring it in. But with OPE on it, it often is. He's a very, very good Daryl. 
I'm not sure though. It's going to be a tough one to call. This could be Navi bringing this one back or the way that SK are playing today, that is my brain telling me that they will clear this one up here and make it a 3-0 sweep. I mean, their, their mechanics have been what has been giving them the wins more often than not. Not necessarily the drafts, but just simply their ability to come together as a team and communicate the, uh, the way through. But this buzz pick, Trav, it's a scary one. I mean, it's the best buzz in the world against probably the best Daryl in the world, so... I mean, it's going to be an entertaining battle at that at least. So we'll see if SK Gaming managed to finish this one out in a 3-0 or if Navi will bring it back to make it 1-2. Obviously, the enemy's going to have quite a good time against the Nita early on, but Ope pushing quite heavily down this right side now. Needs to try and get a roll off Angel Boy, but MMA, oh, they're all pinching him so hard because if they leave Chaos with no bear, that's fine. Exactly. He, I mean, he's not a danger. Wow, what a face shift from Yoshi. Oh, my word. I mean, the stumble's going to come in, but he actually absolutely evaded it, but now left with the damage gear as well. And Cube, they've got to clear this up on defense. First of all, SK can do anything at all. They've been pretty good. The revoke PE being able to match the damage. I've already got a, a rotating royal kit. The, the, the Daryl Gadget on the safe. <laughs> it's such a tongue twister to say. But nonetheless, I mean, they had to return that damage. So important to do so. Yeah, I may throw that onto the safe now as well. I'm not going to try and correct you on the gadget because I wouldn't get it right either. Doral <laughs> available now, but the stun comes through. Does have it still, but actually cycled out by Angel Boy. Some great connecting shots. Chaos just came to the soup, but I don't even know if he got a shot in there. Maybe it was Yoshi doing all the damage. Got his speed and going to provide it to Ope. He's going to roll forward. Surely he'll roll towards MMA. One of those options goes to left, but Angel Boy looking for the cover does miss his super. He might actually leave him here as he got such a successful lead. Barley's on the safe. He does go back, and now Cube can maybe join him as well. But this should be finished off by Navi right here. A few balls away, and that should be it. Six percent, one more lands, and that will be a game. Finally, for Navi, one on the board, and all it took was the buzz. <laughs> but nonetheless, they got to deflate this from SK, and that was a pretty good way to go about it. Very close, though, for the most part, until the later stages. And for SK, it can still go their way here. They could move on to a match point very, very quickly here. They're one. Recoiling rotator <laughs> on the safe from that Daryl, and uh, this can turn around quick and fast. Yeah, Angel Boy's low as well. Okay, maybe going to use his roll into there. Does actually get him down and doesn't actually take much damage thanks to it either. Chaos looking for a super. Didn't actually maybe got one bear in that previous game, so not the best, but a knockback comes in from Q. That's already using one up, and that's friend owner as well. He's going to use his super and waste that also, but Angel Boy's got his super here, and Chaos just not hitting much at all. Gets stunned down there, and now Angel Boy pushing down the right side. Still 100 to 100, though. The roll comes through, and the pinch is there. Great stuff from Ope, and we kind of expect that from him at this point. Last call for MMA. We'll get a little bit of damage on the top. Six, seven percent. The damage on the return is greater. And that puts SK into the lead. As OP is doing a great job of just cycling in with this Daryl pick, but Angel Boy now coming in. This could be a terrible spot for SK. SK will be very cautious here by going on the offensive compared to the defensive because Angel Boy's he's got through. Roll in though, time perfectly, but still alive. It's now tied up pretty nicely, but MMA should be able to get some value for it as well. Just surviving on 996 HP. And now Cube trying to make his way through. He'll probably go to the left hand side. Just get this take down on OP, which is doing really well. SK uh, are stuck in the spawn cycle right now. Navi is starting to really make this comp work. Yeah, face shifter there from Yoshi. He almost helps him stay up against Angel Boy, but not quite there. Shots coming through now, and Cube and MMA still alive. OP trying to find something, but this just the, the slow, the shots and everything coming through. It's just so difficult for him to make the move. Super's there, but actually maybe a little too early, as OP didn't get any effects of it. I agree, yeah. Yoshi maybe just mistiming that a little bit. The pressure possibly gets into him, but good takedown there on to Cube. We'll open up some space on the right hand side. But again, if Chaos has not got bare, he is no concern of Navi's. And look at Angel Boy just popping up with one, two, and now the last call as well. Damage raining down, and SK have got no answer for it at the moment. They are at the moment looking a lot different to the previous sets. They're looking a bit more, you know, stumbled around the situation. That is damage done, done, done. Navi will take a set in convincing fashion. I mean, that looked a lot better. And I think, you know, SK, they can put it down to this just being a Navi map. You look at this map and you think, okay, Navi might have this one because it's exactly what they want to play. They want to play the aggression. They want to play the tanks. They want to just run at their opponents. And that's exactly what they got to do there. Even with the Barley, even with the M's, they were going in a straight line. Add a little buzz to that as well for Angel Boy. And that's going to work out perfectly. Great performance from Navi in that one as well. And I don't think they could have asked for that map at a better time.
Yeah, and also, you know, being able to see the big picture. There's no wall break on the side of SK. I mean, it's the perfect time for a buzz, you know? I mean, the map has got, you know, coverage surrounding the whole thing, and they were just very observant to leave Chaos when they could. You know, like, if he's not a threat, then just kind of continue walking past it. OP as good as he is on that Daryl pick. You know, it's always a troublesome thing to find the angles and the, the moments that you can really gain. Angel Boy was the flavor of the day for me on that map. As always, he is. MMA getting some great damage as well, no doubt about it, but, you know, I mean, he just made their life so much work. Yeah, I mean, they just really did play it very well, and I think maybe Nita was the misdraft for the most part on the side of SK Gaming. No real good bears. I think maybe one bear across both of the games, and it was just defensive, I believe, so not the best. And as you can see there, 41 DPS. That might be almost an all-time low, uh, but at this point, it was Nita not into the best of matchups, so I'm not sure where that pick kind of came from. Obviously, against the Buzz, it can do decent. But against the other two, it definitely struggles quite heavily, and MMA making a bit of a redemption arc here from his, uh, from his very low DPS and one kill on hot zone to be able to get seven and 166 is uh, quite a good performance it's interesting though isn't it like how often we see anita ban on pit stop and how often teams really value that particular brawler and the danger of it that it can bring but it, it's it's a high risk thing in that sense as well because you know it can even do so much and it can pretty much win the game with just it, the bear on the safe or you know, it can do quite the opposite rescue just didn't quite get it right and that is a worrisome thing because they had such momentum going into that set and they don't want to let a single draft get in the way of what was going to be a convincing win as Navi now starting to pick up the pace, starting to get it right, most importantly. But the question is, map mode wise coming up next. No, I mean, it, it really does come down to those moments where the brawler picks and drafts either favor Navi or go against them a little bit more so in those longer range open spaced maps. Nonetheless, though, SK, as always, looking very calm and collected, as you'd expect. Bounty, Canal Grande. I kind of hope to see a buzz ban here. You know, yeah, you got to ban it. you got to ban it. If you're SK, you've got to ban it. Yeah, they're definitely going to be jumping on something like that. I might as well just ban out triple tanks at this point. I feel they might want to prefer to face Shelly Cordelius and some of the tanks that are, uh, uh, Navi will probably run on this map. But <laughs> at this point, I feel like this is a Navi map to win again. You know, it, it, for the most part, it's cr close proximity. Uh, it's going to be tough to play against for SK Gamer. We'll see if they're able to do it. They get rid of the Cordelius and uh, the Shelly on that side. But Squeak's going to be the first pick coming in from Navi. The other ban on the side of SK Gamer was the Eve. And then up top, we have the Carl, uh, the Barley. Mr. P being picked here by SK Gamer is there for uh, and obviously the tick being banned out as well. So we see a little... Ooh, ooh, Maisie coming in. I mean, sure. <laughs> I don't like it. I'll be honest, I don't like it. I mean, if they're trying to have the knockback against the buzz or something along those lines, then you've got to time that sort of thing so well to get value from it. Will it coming in from Navi? Um... I don't think the Macy's competitively viable. We saw it actually work out, I think, earlier today in the uh, East Asia region. And that was the first time I remember seeing it in pretty much her release, you know, except outside of SA in the BSC. And it didn't get any wins in SA. Uh, I mean, SK got a plan. I respect that. They're drafting Macy second. You know, that that's the, the thing. Mr. P and Macy. I mean, MMA bringing in the Lou in the eventuality of a tank for SK to be able to shut it down, but they're going to sprout. Thoughts on Macy, Trap. Thoughts on Macy. I'm, I'm not going to make any comments because anything I say usually goes against me, and uh, I don't feel like I want that right now, but overall, not the biggest fan. I feel like SK maybe are lacking something. I don't know what it is. They've kind of gone with the, the only two throwers remaining, one for Navi, one for SK Gaming. But none of these are really that conventional, really. It uh, definitely feels a bit off for me. Lacking inspiration. <laughs> no, I think the Sprout here is great. Mr. P is great. The combination of all these three things, I'm just a bit unsure of, a little bit. The loop from Navi's pick there might actually go against them because, you know, SK didn't feed into the idea anyway. They had to have, like, an insurance policy. You can have a lot of area denial, but, you know, it's, it's not a bad product to have here, even against, you know, uh, a lack of tank. But the Sprout, I think, is where SK can really thrive off things and... They're pretty close for the most part. That's going to be a great value super there for Major Boy. Locking everything off on that side, but 
this is the dangerous, dangerous, dangerous place for Aske early on. I mean, did someone did someone say reverse sweep? I mean, he's on here right now. A little dashy <laughs> going through, but it's slowed down thanks to that residue from MA being placed in that corner. And they're completely pinned in, but nobody's going down. How are they surviving so much? Little port comes through as well. Wall coming there from chaos, and eventually Ope's managing to get a bit of a rotation, but gets hit quite hard on the way around. Yeah, Ope did a wise move in there to go through. That's the gadget pop. That's gonna be sealed off now, and that will slow his advance through. And so far, you got to hand it to SK to defend the way they have. They haven't given away any stars, despite all that pressure. And that gives me a good feeling about this so far, because there have been kills and deaths going down. Different story, but OP is doing his best on the left-hand side still. Ports are going down, and there's the first sign of movement. It's four stars to Navi, two to SK. But, whew, what a start. Yeah, I don't think they're going to complain about that quite positive trade there, but Cube is quite low. And I mean, even if he goes down again, it won't flip it. Thanks to that blue star being over the head of MMA uh, after he picked it up early on. And a loose super is available from Angel Boy. They're going to rotate fully over to this left hand side now. And that could be a bit of a bad thing as now they can get pinched in. Squeak coming up top. Maybe it's just trying to get a little bit of a flank around the bottom, but loose super might be their saving grace here. 22 seconds. It's going to delay them a little bit longer. Oh, Angel Boy low. But. Can SK get a moment here? They're pushing through the left hand side. Chaos has got a good angle on things. Gets the shot, gets some splash onto MMA. Big shots so on the right hand side to Yoshi. Angel Boy low. But look at this, MMA even lower. He might go down here. If they do, they can be disastrous. The blue star. Ooh. Not enough time. Not enough time. Chaos at 156 HP as well. How did Navi hold on? That definitely should have gone the way of SK. And I mean, some great tanks came through, I will say, but that trade just was not enough for the side of SK Gaming. And Navi, somehow they got no kills early on and then somehow survived the defense on the opposite side as well. So I will say a little bit underwhelming off the start, but very good towards the end. I hate to watch that replay back on slow motion, honestly, because what a moment. OP gets to take down on, on Angel Boy. There must have been a porter, I think, then. It did so. <laughs> Not a great way to go down. Chaos pushing forwards. Has to be the hand as well. Taking some shots on the side of the Widow. I want to see uh, a bit more, honestly, on that side of things, but Angel Boy pushing more aggressively into OP. He did pretty well in the last game to do as well as he did. Let's see what Q can bring to the table here. The mind control. No, I want to see some more value from it. Yeah, I feel like it's tough to get value with, with no brawlers who've got that kind of instant DPS coming out of them. Maisie would be the best to control, but if you control in a sprout or something like that, you might as well just stay as the Willow, you know, in that kind of position. But they are behind now by three stars, and SK Gaming have the lead. Yoshi's going to be searching for a super, but some great connections by the Lou here to get this super. And Cube obviously still with the mind control. Does fall low, though. Chaos okay, going to throw down a wall and try and get a bit of a pinch in. It's a good spot to do so. Just don't want to over-aggress though because they are in the lead by three. Well, hope he's still up top here and still staying alive for the most part. Yoshi coming down. He tries to get some value, but no. I'm really a bit concerned here on both sides because there's very little in it. Angel Boy creeping forwards now, and OB can't push the super, but Angel Boy's too low here. He could easily go down. So what? How does he do that? How does he shoot the shot, come out on top, and give the lead over Blue Star with, with Angel Boy, with Navi? I mean, they are the same team effectively at this point in time. Super going out, gadget pop as well there from MMA. I think we have to hold on here. I think they might just hold on. I think this could be a set going the way of Navi, and then it's a huge explosion to end it. We're going all the way. It's the fifth and final set. And that is bad news for SK because they should have sealed this in the third set. I mean, how is that 1v1 lost in in the back? Like he had a porter down, he had the porters spawning. And I mean, he was on about 1,800 HP, two shots and he goes down and he somehow survives, gets the kill, gets out unscathed. And that flips the game on its head. It's 2-2 two -two, and Navi are looking better than ever. I don't know what to say. I'm actually kind of a bit speechless, to be completely honest. I mean, 
I, as from the beginning, those first two sets, SK looked so convincing. So convincing and, and focused. And everything, the drop working, everything now we had to throw them was being repelled. Look at this moment here as well. Where did it all go down? That's what I want to know. There was a transaction here. Look at everyone on the side of a, a Navi. All so, so low here. And then Cube comes in. It was, was it Chaos that went Almost went down. I mean, like, how do you survive that moment in time? How did, like, SK not get out with more value for it? I have no clue. There were some great tanks from Cube, I'll tell you that, to keep him away alive. And he was the one who had the blue star, obviously, as well. So it's exactly what they needed to happen at that point. But that last game where Angel Boy just played that 1v1 matchup so, so well. And I mean, we're going to see low damage. We're going to see low kills because we're in bounty and everybody wants to stay passive. But back to 52 DPS for MA there. Doesn't matter because they came out with the win this time. 1 and 2 for Angel Boy. 2 2 1 for the side of SK Gaming. So even across the board in terms of kills, it was just when they got them what was what mattered. Well, there's one thing I'm not too surprised about in that set, and that's the Macy didn't do anything. <laughs> As you say, month by month, it's just not the play. I mean, I'm still open for it any time I see it, but I have yet to be convinced. And you know as well as I do, Trevor, how long it takes me to be convinced by a specific brawler, you know? If it's coming into the meta, it does take a couple of months before I'm on side with it. Mr. P, you know, being one of them, it's it's just it's just not the move. And now SK are in a tough, tough spot, but one that they put themselves in. Can't forget that, you know? Brawl Ball is definitely a mode that says SK to me, but I want to see a Willow ban for that same reason, because Navi really can cause as much of a problem as they can on these kinds of maps and modes. Bill goals the map, Brawl Ball the mode. It gets decided here. One of these two teams going home in the quarterfinals. I'm sorry, did you just say Brawl Ball feels like an SK map? But Brawl Ball feels like a Navi mode in my eyes. Give him, give him, they're both give him both. And, they're, and they're gonna be all right. Like, I feel like these three maps in a row could not come over could, could not have come at a better time for Navi. And now it's SK, we're heavily on the back foot. Momentum all on the all on Navi's side. And this is a rough, rough spot. Bansby and the Shelly, the Crow and the Cordelius from Navi. The Squeak, the Crow and the Willow. As you say, Willow was banned out, so smart from SK Gaming. First pick of the stew, I like it, but I don't love it as that first pick. Yeah, I'm with you. I think it's just kind of one of those brawlers that buys a little bit of time, but I hear a lot from the pros. You never pick stew first. Stu first pick can be a dangerous thing to do when it comes to the drop. I've heard multiple pros say that. Bonnie, love that. Really nice pick from Navi. Got some range, got some assassination attempts. With the Crow Band on both sides of here as well, it still carries that same idea. Cordelius Band, very, very smart from Navi. Again, the Willow Band, very, very smart from SK. Gonna potentially bring in some tanky ideas, but for Navi, they've got the better... Well, I was gonna say they could save it, but they're not gonna save it. El Primo coming in for them. I really like it. I do like it, but I mean, there's an Otis spike. There's a lot of potential return here for SK, but that says a lot about Navi because they just don't care. They're picking it no matter what. Listen, Navi will, Navi will play triple tank into Shelly Cordelius if they got the chance. Let's not pretend like they're trying to hide it up in here, and everybody knows it's coming anyway a little bit later on down the line. So might as well just give it to SK uh, in the first place. Two picks now for SK Gaming. Whether or not they're going to be able to make a counter play to this. They're going to go with Anita down one of those lanes. I really do like that pick. Going to be good against the Bonnie to tank a lot of shots, and obviously the possibility of it being good against another tank on top of MMA as well. But I imagine they'll go for something a little bit different now that Anita is in play. Something like an M's still on the board. Very good against tanks. Pretty good against Bonnie if you're going to get within range as well. So I wouldn't mind if they do bring something like that in. Just play that stew down the mid. Um, but they need to be careful about Navi's last pick because they might just be able to pivot on the spot and choose something different. I don't like this. It lacks so much DPS. It lacks so much range. I mean, I mean and it's not even over yet. Mm. Oh, okay. Now I see where SK are like, you know what? We're just going to take your brawler and play it against you. But I... I they're so, they're, they're lacking in so much on this comp. I, I don't know. I mean, now that you've got range, they've got tankiness, and they've got the third and final pick still to come. It's, <sighs> Search coming in for Navi. It's an aggressive one. It can also counter out the buzz. It, it, over time, will only get stronger. It's hard to side against this Navi draft. I think SK, if they play it right, they get the Bruce Bear cycling in. Their shots are going to tickle. They're going to tickle the comp of Navi. <laughs> They're not going to do much. 
I mean, in my eyes, this game is won or lost by the Nita. Those bears have got to be coming time and time yeah. again onto the surge, keep them out of the way, and it needs to be Buzz who makes the big plays. Need something flashy. The same for the Primo. If you make a jumping play, something like that, even if it's just once in the game, that can win you it, and that's what needs to be done, I feel, for both these teams. It's the one moment that's going to change it. And here we go. Such an important set. More so, arguably, for SK. We're lowering the points. That's a huge moment there. Oh, Chaos goes over the shoulder into the back of the goal. He's still going, still surviving on, actually, and now able to heal up, and that keeps his teammates in position. May trying to push through now. And what could be a great time for him, because, again, these shots are not going to land much of a punch. But the ball hands over, deflated, and a chance to defend for SK. Great position for Navi, I will say, though. We've got level two already for Cube as well, and didn't take him long to get that, and can't be far off a level three now as he gets that hit onto Yoshi. All of them clumped up, and we've just got to be waiting for this body to come back. I believe, actually, she might have super two, so that's an aggressive play. And May's going to get his from being hit, so not the worst of positions to be in the face of enemies here. But if they can just tickle him down just a little bit more and get the jumps in, there's one. He gets one onto Yoshi, throw over his shoulder as well. Might be able to cycle it, but Angel Boy's not going to go in. Just waits it out just a little bit longer. Cube going to get that level three almost going down and that was a good defense from SK great stuff and I love that shot from OP here as well they're just predicting where cube was gonna be and almost got him fully taken care of a super on pretty much every Navi head though but no breakthrough on the side of OP running the speed zone so some ease of concern on the side of Navi but OP is low chaos is low Possible all around, but I mean, Navi at full HP just holding W at this point in time. It's gonna be a moment. The shine, stun there from Chaos, carries a lot of might, but there's a jump return. It's very back and forth for all three members, and now he survived. It's gonna be a guaranteed goal. Cube, just checking. <laughs> knock, knock, anyone home? I mean, that was BM more than anything, I think, and that is dirty. You know what happened to the last team that BM'd in this monthly final? They got reverse swept, so taking that one goal lead doesn't mean too much, but the jump comes in, going for the ball, thrown over the shoulder. Angel Boy joins him as well, but the stun's there. Cooper joining him as well. All of them go in. 30 seconds on the clock. They're not playing this defensive, as you'd imagine. They go all out aggressive. Crazy. There's so many interactions in those moments in time, but it's Yoshi trying to pass the ball around here. The OPE trying to get the aggressiveness, take care of this HP, but oh, the pass to Yoshi was on point, and now he didn't see it coming. With 10 seconds on the clock, the perfect retaliation. I mean, <laughs> deserved after that QBM, I will say, but we've got some supers here for Navi, and the little super pass forward and the jump onto it might be the play they choose to go for. He just goes for nothing at the end of the day. Give him the ball. mma has got the jump, only goes in on Chaos, though. Ball's got to go in the corner. They've got to play for a, something late game or a draw here. Yoshi's got his bear as well. That's going to take a lot from Cube, and this has turned on his head. Chaos gets the stun, the dash forward, and SK go to match point. It was like building up for so much, and then Navi just didn't do anything. I, I don't understand. Like there was, there was utility to hand, the body jump, there was this and that, the other, the pretty much. They didn't do anything. <laughs> and SK just respond perfectly. You, you've got to seize those opportunities. I mean, but there was a goal for Navi waiting to happen. And they just didn't know what it was to be. I mean, you play your passive or you go full out aggressive and they did nothing. They didn't even, they didn't know what to do with themselves. Super yeah. miss from Chaos there, though, over the left-hand side to the mid. And MMA just trying to get some super off being hit by the looks of things at the moment. Going to be feeding Chaos throughout the majority of this interaction, though. And Yoshi got a good side here against Cube and doing it very well. Oh, big job, though, from Angel Boy. Just cancelling out there what Chaos had to bring to the table. But... Pushing the ball around, giving it a lot of value to Yoshi as well. Probably not one way away from a bear now, and there it is. 1v3, and at the moment, he's doing a pretty decent job with the wasted gadget as it was taken down so, so quickly. He's staying in position. His teammates now coming into the mix as well. This is great stuff from SK. Yeah, quick eradication of that speed zone, though. Chaos got a super here as well, and that's dangerous. Ope just trying to get some gas to heal. Heals off Angel Boy. Jump comes in from MA. Got to push forwards. Gets the kill before the stun can come through. Cube trying to make a break down this right hand side, but has Chaos and Ope waiting to answer his call. Super is available now. Level 3 is there. But MMA just going to go for Chaos. Gets a good kill and a good amount of cycle as well. Not a bad spot for Navi, but they are still one game down. Collecting themselves up now. He smiles from Cube. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I know he likes that pin, but I think it does take away from the moment. The moment. 
Navi are not smiling at all. Look at this. Chaos going in. Swift takedown onto Angel Boy. Cuban MMA still to come with a speed zone there. And he's gonna close the gap faster on that side. Double star from Chaos and the pass to Yoshi. Just in the nick of time. Beautiful plays from SK. They are landing the mark and Navi have got egg on their face. 40 seconds left for them to make an answer then. They need to get something done. MMA's gonna go for the jump. Not gonna get the cycle just yet. Should be able to get the throw, but it's towards his teammates right in the middle of them. Stuns there, but the jump forward from both of them. Neither of them went for the ball. That might have cost them there. Angel Boy goes for the pass forward. Maybe a one, two. He grabs the ball. He finds it. The goal's there too. Now the answer back. 20 seconds on the clock, and it's 1-1. One, one. <laughs> Oh my word, literally the entirely similar situation, Angel Boy just getting his feet to it, and here we go, pushing it forward for 10 seconds on the clock, supers all around, Chaos goes in, might not come out, low HP, and this is the push, a big one of that from Navi, OP over the, head, over the shoulder, but if Angel Boy can get his pull up, and they can stay in the mix, this could be Navi's. I mean, level three surge in this spot is tough. Bonnie in there as well. They've got the super same scenario as last time. Will they make it happen this time? They're going to play for it. Cube's going to get the pass. It doesn't get the pass off. Yoshi's still there. The defense is as well. And Navi don't make it happen yet again. Still on to him. The super, the Ganji is there. Chaos, he goes left. He misses. Cube saves and keeps Navi alive. There's Archer Spirit escape with this. Not over yet. 30 seconds on the clock. And they're in a great position for it. MMA jumping in. There's the Ganji. There's the goal. Chaos. Comes out strong for SK and sends Navi home just when they need to bring in the results. They did it. Back in June, it was a quarterfinals exit. It will not be a quarterfinals exit for July. What a game. And you can see how disappointed MMA is there. They're, they're, they're top three on the leaderboard at the moment. And now they're out in the quarterfinals. That is disappointing for them. But a lifeline for SK in the Brawl Stars Championship. They needed it most. They are down in the lower stages of the of the leaderboards. I mean, you know, you want to see it clustered. One thing we know is it is coming down to the final month in this region. There's no, I mean, regardless of what happens next, even today, this competition has just got blown wide open today with so many results. And again, we'll we'll take a look at our predictions later. <laughs> <That's not. laughs> what a day it is in EME, but I felt SK were deserving of it. You know, yes, they saw faulted a little bit in that third set going into the fourth set. And they did look like they were gonna get reverse swept, but they just brought out some mighty ideas in that look at this. Just in the nick of time. I mean that really was. But the response was equally as strong from Navi. I mean, it, it was so back and forth. That that stun carried so much value. But then like that moment there, I thought, is he gonna even score it off the back of that? I mean, just, I mean, you can make a highlights reel of that set of, of, of its own. So many moments, great stuff from both teams. I mean, it really was absolutely incredible between both of these teams. CMA going for the jump here as well, but that just in time. The gadget just before he picks up the ball, so it flies completely under the radar and Navi aren't thinking about it. Gets it off just in time. Ball slot straight into that round side. The tiniest opening as well, and it really was beautiful from SK Gaming. Stats, Chaos with 11 kills. No surprise there. 5 and 7 for Yoshi. 5, 7, 4 for the side of Navi. Tough, tough game for Navi, tough series, let's be honest. I mean, it's the same uh, same result for them as it was last month, leaving in the first stage. Chaos, MVP, I think absolutely so. I mean, had so many great early sets, didn't he? I mean, the, the stats, had 10 kills in the first uh, set, 10 in the second, and the DPS was just through the roof. I mean, what a day for him. As voted for you over at event.brawlstars.com. And by a pretty decent margin as well, 46% looking over as well above his head. And yeah, what a day for SK. This could be a very, very important one. I, I was expecting to see Navi in the semifinals. I think you were as well, Trev. That's not going to happen today. I definitely was. But I mean, now they've got through Navi, they've got a tough opponent ahead of them yet again. And this is you know, one of the battles that we've been seeing throughout SPS as well. This SK versus Foot and Navi included as well. All three of these guys all locked in this qualifying stage and this is where we're going to get BSC points as well not just here but there also and this is all coming down these three teams in this bottom bracket now the SK foot and it's actually SK who come out on top here and honestly they did deserve it
Crazy stuff in the EMEA region today. We are done now and dusted with the quarterfinal stages into the semis. Four games down, three more still to come today. Up next, do not go anywhere. It's going to be a humble versus reply totem. Another banger. Do not go anywhere. We'll be right back after the jump. So, Angel Boy, today we are going to record an AMA session with you. Are you ready? Oh, yes. So, who is the best drafter of EU region? Jacob Pascal. Oh, Jacob. <laughs> best friend. Then it's Celery. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's for, for, for real. It's not biased. Uh, I think so. Maybe even the best, best uh, drafter in the world. Um, he's doing his work amazingly. And I, I say a lot of casters don't really understand why is he, why is he picking certain brawlers. But uh, in our game sense, the brawler X brawler counter, counters X brawler, but in other um, teams, mm, that's not how they see this matchup. He's doing it better than anyone in your function, in my opinion. How did you become so good at Buzz? Asking Bobby Bass. Do you like Do you like him as a brawler? Yes, sometimes in some matchups, yeah, I like it. But a couple of months ago, Slavi gave it to me uh, in some very weird matchups. At some point, I really like the brawler. I think it's good in this meta. So yeah, I enjoy playing with. Bus, on bus. How did you decide uh, to become a pro player? Well, I saw some stories, some clips of the CSGO scene, some stories of the players, and I enjoyed the vibe, I enjoyed uh, the idea of becoming a team with uh, same goals, three uh, different persons. It always keeps motivating me, so yeah, probably that's why I chose to play eSport. Do you remember your beginnings at Navi? The first uh, weeks in Navi was really, really painful, um, but we make we get a good vibe because we are making progress, we see the potential, so yeah, we keep playing, keep playing, keep growing, a lot of um, unfair events happened in the previous year and keep happening but we are not uh, saying it in the public you understand that it's not uh, the maximum of uh, what we can do right now who is the best newbie in uh, brawl stars esports in NA it's probably zeus uh, but in eu i think uh, lucky he was unknown to anyone but at some point he became a really tough opponent what should he start from to become an esports player Every success comes with the mindset, uh, and so you should um, understand what you should believe, what you, uh, how should you work, how people, what you should expect from people who are you working with. So I think yeah, mindset is the key thing in every business you're starting with. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you plan to add the fourth player to your team? And if yes, uh, who can it be? The thing that annoys a lot, uh, MMA for example, uh, that he lives in Uzbekistan and it's hard for him to fight uh, every qualifier, at every monthly final um, from Uzbekistan to bootcamp place and back. And we had uh, two options. Either we take a fourth player uh, that uh, will not require uh, MMA to fly every tournament. We decided to do another thing. Uh, instead of taking fourth player that we need only because MMA has pink issues, um, we decided to make a bootcamp, and now we're living here for a month. Yeah. Okay, so you also can uh, implement this practice in your, I don't know, future tournaments, right? We just don't see the idea of taking the fourth player this year. Maybe the next year, but this year we will finish in the in this roster, probably if nothing changes uh, and. Uh, yeah, I think we're doing pretty well right now. Big teams into action. We gotta mix action with the passion. Time shit, 
Without further ado, let's get rolling! Welcome back to the Brawl Stars Championship and what a game that was, Teddy. I was jealous of the first two, but I'm sure after that last one, you're a little bit jealous as well. Yeah, absolutely. So a fantastic match, a fantastic start of the day. I mean, it's not the start anymore, but dude, we've had reverse sweeps, upsets. We've had it all filled reverse sweeps now too. You love to see it. It's just a day full of action. Yeah, you really do. And I mean, the next match we have up is Humble versus Reply Totem as well. A little bit of a route to how they got here. Humble took down a &R and Reply Totem just took down Zeta Division. 3 2 is almost all round today. We saw Foot Esports beat Nita's Cubs 3 1. And then SK Gaming just re preventing the reverse sweep and taking Navi down in that 3 2 as well. So the match up next is Humble versus Reply Totem. You know, what do you make of this one, Teddy? Well, to be honest. I think I speak in the name of the entire caster desk when I say that we didn't expect either of those teams to be in the semi-finals. So it's a bit of a tough say, but we all went for Reply Totem. I think it makes sense, just, you know, experience and success-wise, they have been in a better place than Humble so far. But Humble, I mean, they caused quite a bit of an upset against a and a &R, &R team that beat Reply Totem in the uh, monthly qualifiers. So it's definitely possible for Humble to pull an upset there. Yeah, I mean, looking at the rest of our predictions, I'm not sure whether you should trust any of us at this point. We're one and four at the moment, but me and I went for that totem foot and you went for that totem SK, which I can't blame you for either because SK pulled out a brilliant performance there. But the next match is Humble versus Reply Totem, and it's going to be an absolute banger. We've got the number two seed Reply Totem and we've got the number four seed Humble, so it's a very, very, very close match. Tomzy, Cyclone, Luki versus Joker, Mori, and Maru. Let's focus down a little bit more on Humble. Tomzy, Cyclone, and Luki. Luki. And as you said, we didn't expect either of these teams to be here. So what do you make of Humble's chances of taking that reply totem, considering how good they are? Humble played really, really solid. It was super impressive against ANR. I'd say it's probably like a, a, a 40-60 in favor of reply totem. I think to my eyes, that seems reasonable because Totem is not in the best form recently. Now, yeah, they did just beat Seda Division, right? Which is definitely not a small feat. But regardless, I feel like, you know, the last couple of months have been all over the place and that would be in Humble's favor. But overall, Reply Totem is still Reply Totem to my eyes. Yeah, the thing is, I kind of feel like Humble maybe won that ANR match because of the overconfidence that we saw ANR come in with, start BMing, start flexing, and that kind of thing. And then they just took advantage of that um, that overconfidence that they were bringing in. But Reply Totem, they've always been one of the top teams. They sadly didn't make it into that SPS Challenge season, and therefore won't be getting any points from the SPS. So Brawl, uh, the Brawl Stars Championship is only where they can get points. So they need great performance this month and a great performance next month if they want to be, uh, if they even want to be considered for that World Finals. They're going to be in a decent spot at the moment, but they likely going to be moving down to LCQ unless we see them move on to the finals and qualify and do well next month. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, getting those uh, points is going to be massive for Reply Totem if they can make it. 93% of you guys at home going with Reply Totem. I mean, I, I get the sentiment, right? Reply Totem is a favorite, but... The, 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 the actuality is a little bit different than that though, right? Like Humble is a very solid team and we saw how much damage they can do to teams that get a bit careless, teams that get impatient or that maybe felt like they already won. They're, they'll punish that. And I feel like Reply Totem is the kind of team that sometimes can get a little bit overconfident too. I think so too. We see Bonnie coming as the first pick. Humble are going to return that with the 8-bit. Uh, and another one should be coming up shortly as well. But I like the pick so far. They're going to go with the bell, doubling down on that range, which is uh, the smart approach into uh, into that Bonnie, I'd imagine. You know, with how slow she is, obviously Abit's going to be slow as well, but Bell should be able to connect a good few shots. And we've got the Cordelius, Colette, and Brock Bands from the side of Humble over Reply Totem side, the Carl, Colette, and the Grom as well. Shelly sneak through and Reply Totem pick it up. Hmm, Shelly is an interesting one because it's in a really good place. Okay, it's going to be paired with that Sam. Just take the counter out for the Sam as well. This is the wild comp from Reply Totem, but I wouldn't expect any less from them, really. 
I'm not sure what to think of it because we did see some Shelly action already today, but it wasn't necessarily the most convincing uh, either. It's a brawler that can still get countered, can still be kept at bay and at range, especially once the, the, the walls are opened up a bit more. And there's already not the most walls on this map in the first place. They'll go Griff, which is going to be a great anti-tank, and also have that ability to open up those couple walls. He really just needs three, right? The, the top one, the right one, and the... Um, and then and the left side and they should be fine really but it's still a, a, i mean there it's always going to be a big threat when you have a sam and a shelly on the same team yeah that's the thing if they can keep at range they should be all right they're going to need constant marks constant dps coming out of eight bin and uh, grip and i feel like they just need to get the kills rather than focusing on getting the damage and just try pin them in spawn uh, and just play the long game rather than the uh, the explosive dps like you usually would yeah, I feel like on paper, Humble, they have to come to deal with them, but in practice so far, they're just not quite hitting all the shots they should have, and they are being punished with quite a bit. 5% damage on safe, make it 10 now. It's a decent amount for a very early game lead, and so far, they have yet to really get them out of position. Joker getting a little bit more damage, really just being a distraction to let Maori get some more connections onto that safe, and connections he will find as it is all the way down to 56% now already. Humble have yet to hit their safe, and this is kind of gonna be the strategy from Reply Totem, just spam, die, I guess, and go all in, create some space, eat up that ammo, and in the meantime, get some damage on safe, and so far it's working. Yeah, that's the thing. You can't blame him for either. Still a gadget there as well. Almost got it off in time, but Maru's got this super available. He's going to be low, though, and now this is where Humble need to start getting damage on. But Mori's got this super and just keeping pressure in there. 9% was all that they managed to get off that big 8-bit turret coming through and also the follow-up behind it. But really, not a lot done by Humble and Reply Totem. As you say, the respawn cycling out just all the way through this game, and it's working an absolute treat. Maori and Loki up close, but a wall separating them. The jump from Maori is not quite going to make it far enough. Doesn't find any value off it. Tumsy is low, though. And as Joker does end up going down, it's going to be some extra damage on save from Maru. A big lead percentage-wise. It's looking better and better, though, on the side of Humble. Even though they've taken a good bit of damage, they're building up more and more control. That's because all those gadgets, the clay pigeons especially, have ran out, and it's a bit harder for Reply Totem to get in range and be as threatening as they were in the early parts of that game. The problem is, damage has been done. Is it going to be enough to keep them in the lead or is Humble going to be able to pull a bit of a comeback here? This is going to be risky now for Reply Totem. Damage should start raining down. Mori's going to tank quite a lot of it with his invulnerability there, but no 8-bits were available just yet, and they're going to need it to get the damage done. Sam's going to have the super back once again, just moving up bit by bit. Super comes out from Griff there, gets a lot of damage on all of them, maybe even cycled it. I believe he did, but he actually went down. Just 8-bit surviving now, and regardless of all the control they got at the end, it was not the ending they wanted. Reply Totem do manage to take this first game in a very, well, I wouldn't say convincing, but for the most part, it did look convincing. Yeah, I think they did a really good job. I feel like it took them a little bit too long to adapt on the side of, uh, of Humble. I think, though, that, that they will probably be a little bit more ready in game two and potentially three. So I, I would not be surprised to see them uh, play better and, and actually be able to pick up this next game. Well, they need to get a bit of a better start and not have them dying one by one, but it seems that that's exactly what's going to happen. Just now delaying, waiting for the Sam to come back up, and with Maru on this right-hand side, it's tough for them to really move up, and Joker instantly back up already. A little piggy bank coming down on the left-hand side, breaking up some of those walls, and couldn't have really come any sooner considering what they're faced with. Yeah, so far, it's still barely even, but the map control is going to be favoring Reply Totem. Joker does go down, creating a little bit of an opening. They've not taken nearly as much damage on the save compared to how much damage they took in game one. So by comparison, it, it is looking better for Humble than in game number one. Marie does jump on save, gets a little bit of damage done. Luki and Cyclone are able to retain some of that mid control and things are starting to look better on their side. 
Yeah, this is much, much better for Humble now. Cyclone just surviving out there, narrowly avoiding that shot from Mori coming through. But Joker, once again returning, and Clay Pigeon being popped. Still another one in the tank as well for Maru. Gadget comes out of Joker, but a great, great super coming out of the Griff. But jump in from Mori. Joker and Maru are going to join him here as well. Super shot onto the same, but he gets both of them in it as well and cycles it out. That's a lot of damage added on, similar to what we saw in the last game. But can Humble cling on and get some damage down on the other side? Maru. Coming in, there's a little bit of a flank on the right hand side. Super from Luki, but he gets pulled by Joker. It's a one for one trade. Maru is marked, however, he goes down. Mari able to get that trade off, but at the end of the day, it is Reply Totem that's going to be happy to get those trades because they eat up so much ammo every time. And so far, with this big of a lead, they don't mind just playing for a bit of a stalemate and let the clock decide the winner because that would definitely be looking much better in their favor yeah super comes out of griff but still only seven percent del another three percent added on by cyclone but this turret's not high enough up tomzy needs to get this kill on joker quick and move it forwards maury's there though and he's surely gonna be able to take quite a lot of it down gonna put it up in this corner now as well maru sliding up griff super gonna be used but nine seconds on the clock i mean what can they do here really they can rain down all the damage they want but it's not gonna mean anything reply totem take the first set and humble fall short well played by reply totem really well played it, it, it was an interesting draft on their end but we definitely see why it works and if you look at their stats at the end of that game it, it shows exactly the idea i said it at the beginning you know just spam die is what they did they pushed forward didn't really get the most skills but they got the value onto that safe and because they are so tanky and their dodges were so on point all the fights were happening near uh, that, that that bottom safe which means that even when they go down, Humble Day take forever to travel all the way back up, and then suddenly there's another, uh, you know, uh, brawler back with full HP and ready to just die some more, I guess. Yeah, well, I'm intrigued to see the DPS in this one, I'll tell you that. We saw the kills, a little glimpse of them, at least, KD. Uh, and I believe Cyclone actually got star play on the bell there when they did actually lose as well. So big performance at him, but just not enough for his team to be able to pull through and get this win. We head on to Crystal Arcade next as well, so a bit of gem grab. I feel like that kind of brings Humble into it that little bit more, but they need to be careful of these drafts that are coming out of Reply Totem, because that's not something we expect from Totem at all. You know, that's a that's a Navi comp, that's a foot comp, something like that. And Totem just adopting it, it, uh, it, it threw a bit of a bit of a spanner in Humble's uh, works, I think, because they didn't really seem prepared for it. Yeah, I mean, to, to be honest, it, it is uh, quite a surprising comp. I think most teams would be uh, at least caught off guard a little bit. I, I think that Griff as an answer wasn't even the worst of ideas. I, I really could see the merit to it. I mean, look at that DPS, though. One player, Luki, at 415. They have, what? over double the kills together easily over double the kills uh this is uh this is a statement here from reply totem that kills and stats don't matter when you're the one completing the objective and reply totem they certainly did that yeah, I saw someone asking if we'd ever had a DPS over 400. This might be the first time, but there you go. 449 coming out of Luki, and he didn't even have the most kills either. That's the thing. So a good all-round performance from Humble, but it just doesn't matter. Like, if, if they're just respawn cycling and getting the damage on safe and you're not, you're going to lose. A bit more objective focus, though, Gem Grab, and you can turn the game around with something like a Gene Pull, Tara Pull, something like that. So maybe a bit less control needed for Humble if they go something uh, along those lines. But we will be on Crystal Arcade, and I do like this map. We've seen, we've seen quite a good amount of, uh, uh, of games on this, and the comps on this, they didn't really seem too normal. We'll see if they come and slide back into what we're used to. Ruffs is coming out yet again from a reply totem here. I do like that Ruffs pick. The Shelly, the Squeak, and the Cordelius are there from Humble. Stu going to be the first pick of Humble as well. I do like that pick. We saw it play out um, at the last time we saw this foot against that uh, Nita Cubs team. And the Stu really didn't do a lot against the B. So we'll see if there's a little bit of reparation here from Humble if they can play it better. But the Crow, the, the Ash, and the Gus going to be banned out reply totem on the other side. Yeah, so far... Comp-wise, this is lining up to be something a bit more traditional, but there's still four more picks to go, and a lot of unexpected things can happen by then. Humble, I have their second pick now, and they're gonna be going Penny, which I think makes a decent amount of sense. Again, I, I touched it up a little bit in our, our quarterfinal matches. Penny has fallen off a little bit. It's still playable. It's still played 
in a, a variety of maps, but not nearly with the same amount of success that is, uh, as it once did get. I feel like against Ruffs, though, it's a great opportunity to get that extra little counter effect against his sandbags, which is pretty much going to force him to either play the other gadget or to be incredibly mindful with how he uses those sandbags. Yeah, I like the penny pick, and you know they can they can always change things around, right? And pivot who's in mid, rather that be whether that be Stu, whether that be uh, Penny, depending on who the rest of the brawlers are. But we see the B coming out, and this is almost uh, exactly the same as what we saw from Foot Esports earlier. The B just dealt with that Stu so perfectly, and even when he had speed zones and stuff to tank, if you hit enough shots, there's not a lot the Stu can do if you keep it range and don't feed. Yeah, I think Penny also is going to have a decent matchup against the B. You know, being. Uh very careful about that honey pond that you can't just place it down you will get one shot as a bee if you do that so it's an interesting decision to bring the bee in right after the penny but obviously uh, they should be facing off on different lanes so not as much of a threat the sam is where things get a little bit more unexpected here we did see a bit of sam already in the previous set it worked out quite nicely Let's see if Reply Totem can play the same kind of Sam once more as Nita is going to be our final pick for this draft as Humble irons out their comp and I don't mind it. I really don't mind it. I think it has some, some good merits here on, on, on this map. I don't know if Humble have enough stomping power to shut down that Sam. What, what, what do you think? I agree. We're maybe going to see some some stuns coming out of the Nita, and that can work quite well. Salty Barrel in the face and that, but I kind of agree with you. I don't know if they do have the DPS required to bring him down, and regardless, even if you do have the DPS, we saw in the last game, sometimes it just doesn't matter. Sam can just walk through and get the damage done anyway, so we'll see if that's the case here as well. I believe we're maybe going to be seeing this Stu in the mid here and Penny down the lane against the Ruffs, and he is bringing in that Meteor gadget, so not going to have anything to splash through on the side of Tomsey here. Oh, Maru going for a flank, but through the mid. Interesting. It works out for them as they pick up first blood here. Gem lead also quite firmly in favor of Reply Totem early on, picking up all four of the first gems. But at last, Humble find one for their own. Maru just trying to eat up some ammo, buy some time, create some space, and find some opportunities. And with the fast movement speed, it gets every time he uses this super it's something he can afford to do quite well it's quite interesting to see him roaming so much and so swiftly change lanes and change locations yeah did miss the wall there and Nisa's is going to be following up behind him he used a gadget and didn't really get a lot from it so the bear's going to be wasted not much of a cycle there from cyclone but seven two it's the gem count and joker's got eight of them but he is low luke's coming forward honey molasses to tank Ma now he's gonna to have to pick these up that's not a good spot for maru at all he doesn't want these gems and you can see he was even considering just going down and trying to drop the gem back to joker there but now reply totem this isn't what they want now this is a uh, terrible he doesn't even have his gloves either so he's pretty much just a sitting duck at this point and at last they find a kill and that is going to be three gems for humble to steal countdown locked in and reply, reply totem they're going to need a miracle to shut him down well maru might be that miracle coming forward with his gloves now and these thrown out there and that's the stun onto him joker can't do a lot about that gets two shots to his face and gets taken down maori was going to be close behind him at the time it didn't hit zero again humble have an answer this time to what Totem are bringing in and take the first game of Gem Grab. Man, that was an interesting one. How the gems ended on a Sam that doesn't have super. Like, it, it, it can't get much worse than that. You know what I mean? As in, like, who picks up those gems? That was rough. That was really, really rough. Not much they could have done from there on. We'll have to see if Reply Totem are able to prevent that sort of situation from happening because until that point, they were doing really well. They had like a five gem lead at that point. Yeah, well, Humble definitely not to as good a start this time, but Joker gets double tap there and Tomsey has an answer to it. Mori's going to now have to pick up these gems and it kind of seems like Reply Totem can't catch a break with who's got these gems. Obviously, it's better than the Sam. Wall break coming through here as well. Breaks down that and a little bit of the grass as well. Joker has the power up and might need to use that to get these gems returned back to him or um, have his teammate go down so we can pick them up. Luki finds Maru, and that bear is going to take a second to take down, but eventually they will. In the meantime, it is Humble that has all the map control they could ask for. Maru gets some good damage, but he goes down without finding a kill. 
which means that by Dota more struggling to really show much presence across the map. Maru is again low HP. There's just no opportunity for him to shine at this point. And Reply Totem, even though they still are a gem ahead, I don't think that lead is going to last for very long. Well, now Joker has the slow. Another super veiled from Mori. Maru's actually got his gloves this time as well. Break comes down, and Mor Maru just pushing aggressive. Gets him down, gets the bear down here as well. Lovely performance from him. Managed to pick up his knuckle busters yet again. So that's a great thing for him to have. The turret's going to fall as well, and Tomzi not in the best position on this lane. Maru coming back once again with the super, gets it off, gets the speed, gets the heals, and pretty much getting all the work done for Totem. Yeah, Maru creating so much space. Just look how much space he created for Joker to just be around at mid on the enemy side of the map. But now the countdown is locked in. Beautiful snap from Joker onto Luke. He probably thought that he'd be out of range or able to dodge that. However, that's not quite going to be the case. Reply to to pick up that game. Even things out here in Brawl Ball and Humble. We, 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 we've seen that this is a chance here for them in this set to make something happen. They did so in game one, but now game three needs to be going their way. I don't like their chances if they're two sets behind against Reply Totem. Yeah, neither do I. This is a big turning point for the game here. It's either going to be 1-1 one, one or 2-0 oh to Reply Totem. And they've, they've already reversed sweat once, so I don't count them out of doing it. But it is against someone who's just beaten Zeta, so they're at their top of the game as well. Good shots from Tomzi coming through, though, and does drop those two gems that Joker was holding onto the floor. Luki now trying to go and claim them with this movement that he's going to have with the super, but B is there already and ready to fight. Tomzi going to be pinched here, but somehow gets out of there. Beautifully done. Good use of his utility, and he's able to win his lane as well. That was an incredible play, to be honest, from Tomzi on the right hand side. And a humble are building up a gem lead. Kind of the first time out of the three games so far that they are able to build a lead early on into the game. But it's looking good for them. And this is exactly what they need. Yeah, all well, the swaps are coming out now as well. So swapping back as Tomzi now over this left-hand side. Turret thrown in his face as well. Maybe a little bit of a waste, but through goes Luki. Is low and almost get taken down. Maru round the back gets the kill. And oh, just like that, all the gems that Humble were holding drop to Maru. He picks them up and 13 seconds between Reply Totem and set two. Maru was so low HP so many times in that fight. And yet he comes out with a double kill as well as the gems. What an incredible play from him. Reply to We'll take this one and humble. I mean, it's a tough set to lose for them. But they've done it today. They can do it again. They, <laughs> they're still very much alive in this game, I'd say. You know, they might be 2-0 down against Reply Totem. Any other day where they hadn't just reverse swept A&R, I would not have faith. But for some reason, I feel like Humble have still got a bit of a grasp on this game. They, they didn't look bad in that one at all. They had some great moments. They carried a lot of gems. In that one, Maru turned it around, and a couple of the other ones, they turned it around. They still looked good in safe zone, regardless of the quite vast loss they took. They had a lot of kills, a lot of DPS. They were still playing well, but it just seems like Reply Totem are more focused on just, just the objective. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. It, it feels like even when Reply Totem are not necessarily getting the kills and you know, winning as consistently, they have just that X factor and that ability to turn around situations so brilliantly. Really well played again. And man, Maru, I mean, on the Sam, uh, he, he goes sometimes, look at this, uh, 1400 HP, still quite low HP now. He could have gone down there, surely, if they, you know, shot him together, but just so much action across the, uh, the, the whole map and he's able to roam around get so much value and, and take down that gem carry that's a huge play from him yeah i mean that's sand for makes those moves with really no thought behind it four two and five from the side of humble six two and seven so not too far apart between humble and reply totem in the second set but it did go the way of reply totem i mean looking at the dps as well that was kind of sided towards the humble guys but hot zone Open Zone is up next, and it could be the final one that Humble see throughout this um, throughout this monthly finals. And both of these teams desperately need wins at this point. Certainly so, certainly so. I mean, right now, Reply Totem, definitely in the driver's seat, definitely in a favorable position. 
and making it to the grand finals would be huge for them they've mostly just lost to zeta division this year in monthly finals now there's no more zeta they've already taken care of them and this could be reply totem's monthly final but the first pick is going to be this two matched by a gus for reply totem our bands are going to be shelly max and cordelius on the side of Humble, Reply Totem banned out also Max, and then Crow, and also Shelly, actually. So we have two double bands. Yeah, well, I like the fact that Shelly's double banned, I'll tell you that. But Max, a little bit of a different one. It's kind of been sneaking back in rather than falling off like it did just prior to it. I like the Gus and I like the Amber picks. But Stu is a first. I do question it a little. It is very good, but still. Bonnie going to be the second from Humble here, and we're on to their third now. They're going to go with the B, doubling down on that long range on the last couple of picks. And now it's down to Reply Totem to, to, as you say, reply to this pick from Humble. And it needs to be a good one. I feel like that B kind of solidified a very good comp for Humble here. And Reply Totem, they're going to need an answer. I like the B. I like the B. I like the, the Bonnie. I mean, good synergy between them, as in the B can counter the Bonnie quite nicely. So I, I like them being max together we saw a lot of good pam stuff so far today so i don't mind the pam here from reply totem i think comp wise personally humble's comp is a little bit more my taste but i don't know if my taste actually means better at winning you know it's just more <laughs> exciting so i don't know what's your take no, I actually feel the same way. Like, I genuinely don't know if it's better, but I kind of like the look of it more. Uh, I think exactly. Reply, Totem, Reply Totem's comp is good, but if B starts hitting and hitting hard, then it's going to have a bit of a difficult time. Same with Amber, uh, outranged, and Stu can kind of weave in and out of those shots quite nicely as well. So we'll see if Humble managed to pull through or if Reply Totem will shut this one off in three. All right. So far, Luki going aggressive in the mid and it's paying off. They've created a good amount of space. Look, he did get tagged up a little bit. Needs to be careful, especially if a cookie popper comes through. Not so far. So good for Humble. Reply Totem with some more mid presence now as well. Joker low HP. That slow was brutal. He goes down. Tomzy is very low HP as well. It's only Luki left alive. Can only barely escape with his life and only survives with 300 HP in the meantime. It's all Totem in the zone. And that's the problem here. Poor Humble, they don't want to give away any free percentages like that. Yeah, B's hitting some good shots, but at the moment they're just sat in this healing station and it's doing God's work for them as Tomzy's fallen low yet again. Might be able to jump in shortly, but actually going to go down another healing station available. Honey Molasses gets taken down quickly and Joker's low, needs to retreat once again into this healing station. But actually choosing to pursue Luki and that might be the downfall of him at least, but jump comes in from Tomzy now and the Scrap Sucker was there, avoided nicely and a good pinch coming through from Humble now. Yeah, that was a huge jump from Tomzy. Just created so much space. Finally took care of the healing station. There is another one, but at least Maori is not going to have yet another one ready to just cycle out as he died quite shortly after placing this one down. Percentage-wise, it's still quite close. The reply totem with just a little bit of an edge. Tomzy going to get tanked by that gadget as well from Joker. Luki also low HP. So Humble need to respect it and heal back up. Problem is, in the meantime, Reply Totem, they extend their lead. Joker gets jumped on, pops his shield. Might still go down. Indeed, Cyclone will find him. Luki is so low, but eventually falls to Mary. And Tomzy should be able to at least stay in that zone for a little bit longer. But eventually, the pinches come true, and Mary and Joker are back in the mid, and Mary will take down Tomzy. Yeah, Cyclone's so low over the left as well, can't really aggress, and Maru keeping in that way as well. Aggressive healing station from Mori over this right-hand side and puts them pretty much on match point now. 2% needed and Reply Totem win this game, heading to match point. And although Humble got 64%, I don't feel convinced by them in that one. Reply Totem just looked so more confident with those healing stations, and I just felt like they played it better. I'm with you. I mean, if I had to sum up this, the, 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 this game and... Well, two words, I guess. It would be Healing Station. It provided so much value overall for Reply Totem. And th there's just no answer. I mean, the only way they can take care of it pretty much is either by 
getting enough skills around it to break it down, but usually, you know, the players are able to survive thanks to that healing station or if they get a bunny jump in. Now, this original uh, first team fight for Humble is looking excellent. I mean, they just took everyone down at Team Wipe really early on into this game. That's going to help them build a massive early lead. Problem is, now that healing station is back, a shield as well onto Maori, and Luki is in a world of trouble. Yeah, vertical jump from Tomsey there as well, not going to be the best, but Joker should be able to outheal this damage coming in, does get taken down, but there's another healing station available, and we know how much of a difference these things made. Got the super still available, and that oil's going to be down on the floor as well, blocking off this mid portion, or not blocking it off, but slowing them down when they go through it. Burn comes down on that home puddle there by, on Maru, but only 20% down now for the side of Totem, and they're not looking too bad at all. Healing station still up and still doing work. Problem is, so is Humble, and they're doing work in the zone. Cyclone has been brutal on that game so far on the beat. But they need to lock this one down. Cyclone taking quite a hit. Tomzy trying to pull a sneaky in the right bushes. Not sure how that's going to go down for him. As Mari, yeah, Mari will take him down. Eventually, it's only Luki that's still standing. He will fall as well, and that means that Murray is going to go now for an aggressive healing station. Try to stay as long as possible in that zone and get Reply Totem up to par percentage rise. Yeah, I mean, that aggressive zone, or that aggressive healing station was needed, but they just he just didn't have any help to be able to get any of these guys down and stop them from pinching it off. And shield available from Joker, going to use it on himself, though, allow Mori to go down. And it doesn't really matter, there's 10% left at this point. I don't think Totem are going to be able to do it in this game. And Humble, they looked so much better just off that, that, that first uh, initial interaction where they got all three down, all three of them are surviving. You're going to get a lot of presenters just off that, a lot of supercharge, and, and, and they just looked great after that. Yeah, they absolutely did. I mean, I, I I think the big difference makers here were that first fight, right? Where they somehow got a team wipe. All three players surviving, I believe, as well on Humble. And also Cyclone, to me, has been playing much better. Just getting so many tanks as, uh, as B. And especially connecting those charge shots, which make so much of a difference. They hurt so bad. Reply Totem. We'll see if they're able to dodge a little bit better this time around. Yeah, I need to bring this Honey Molasses down. Scraps looking came in there for Mori, and now that springs Joker into action. Healing Station there, gonna tank a couple of shots. Not that many though, only two from B as he did have that 3k to start with. Tom's he gonna get the kill on the right, on the left hand side, sorry, and now Pam on the right, just trying to stay alive. Luki's gonna get that gas heal off, and Humble are in a great position again. Humble was just as much of a lead as they did in the previous game. Eventually, Tomsy does fall. He went for a bit of a risky jump in. Didn't quite pay off. Our two players are scarily low. Only to fall back and reset just a little bit. But Luki resets quickly, especially with the Gasso heals. And there you have it. Joker goes down. Maru and Maori getting pinched. And even though they have the healing station, they're working around it much nicer this time around. Eventually, though, this is looking like it's going to be a team wipe in favor of Reply Totem. Even though Luki just stays alive forever, gets in a couple extra percentages, it is Reply Totem with three players in the zone now. Yeah, but they're going to need to hold off for so long if they want to be able to take the win in this set. Cyclone going to throw that 3k. I'll actually hit Maru there, I believe, as well. And again, backed off so fast. Follow up with more shots as well. Cyclone popping off. Maru trying to get the work done on the right, but Joko on the left, not able to connect too many shots. Slow around the right there, but not enough. Healing the station thrown forward. Going to tank a few shots, but jump in from Tomzy should bring Pam down, and Luki should be able to do the rest. Does get taken down 3% needed, but I think they're going to be able to do it. They should be able to. They should be able to. It would be quite shocking if they don't. It would be a huge missed opportunity because it is match point for Reply Totem. It's getting a bit close now, but they're going to walk in the zone and eventually they do get it. A bit closer than I'd be comfortable with, but a win is a win. And Humble will pick up their first set. We are going to set four. Well, it's still alive for Humble. They're not looking too bad after that one. They looked uh, a lot better after that first. They, they won both of those initial fights in, in the second and third games on Hot Zone, and it did look quite good. They managed to reverse sweep in the first. They might be able to do it again now. 2-1 to reply Totem. They need to close this one out here because if Humble starts to get a bit of wind in the sails, we know what they can do with it.
Man, if Humble managed to pull off two reverse sweeps in a row, that would be incredible. That would be incredible, and, and not just that, they would make it all the way to the Grand Finals. It would be their first time this year going that far. And every point matters. It really does, especially for Humble, which, I mean, is not in a bad spot in the rankings, but this is their shot as well to just capitalize on the on, on the fact that our teams are going out early we didn't qualify this time to either get more points to secure LCQ or maybe even still be in contestants for the world final spot. Yeah, I mean, humble. Not able to get any points from SPS, so it comes down to both of these last monthly finals for both Reply Totem and Humble. So, wins are much needed for these guys here. We're heading on to Flaring Phoenix in Knockout. I do quite like this map, it's quite passive. Cordelia snuck through in the last game that we saw on this, and it did pop off so, so heavily. So, I think both of these teams are kind of going to ensure that it's not going to happen again. I like Flaring Phoenix, it's a bit of a different type of map I guess very bushy middle area or middle like on a vertical standpoint I guess like the middle middle is not that bushy it's a bit more open I think you guys got the gist of it we will have the squeak first pick from team humble they banned out Cordelius as well as Daryl and Jean reply to them banned out Tick, Shelly and a double Cordelius ban here two picks in a row now for reply to them and I like the squeak quite a bit. I think it can just do really well around, around those bushy areas. And as it is a, a map with a limited amount of choke points and some pretty annoying uh, unbreakable walls, I feel like it can do well. But what it doesn't necessarily do too well against is hyper aggression. And that's the sort of thing that Reply Totem could bring in with that calm. Just play something safe like, like Bonnie and Gray. But when you want to go in, you have the ability to do the, that, whether it is with a TP or a jump in. Yeah, I mean, I like what Reply Totem have got so far. It's very good for the late game, that grey teleport, where you can get that 1,000 heals. Uh, and Bonnie jump in as well. It's always going to be very good against that Squeak, who doesn't have the best burst DPS. Pam going to be the return pick from Humble, taking a bit of a leaf out of Totem's book from the previous set, but hoping it works a bit better for them. And on this map, I think Pam's good. Going to be able to soak up a lot of those hits from Grey and Bonnie alike. Uh, but when it's jumped on or TP'd on, it's going to be a little bit difficult, especially that Bonnie jump coming through. But Humble, they have their last pick now. Reply Totem obviously going to be waiting for theirs as well. So we'll see if they're able to pull something smart out of the bag and uh, bring this to set number five. Yeah, I'm really curious what they're going to go Ooh. for. They'll go Maisie, and Maisie is not in a bad place right now. It's still a brawler that can be a little bit difficult to pull off mechanically. Like, it's just not the easiest to hit your shots and find the most value with. But in the right hands and in the right situations, it can be incredibly deadly. It can. Brock is what they choose. And I like it. It's going to be able to break up, get rid of a lot of this uh, Maisie's grass that she's going to be able to fly under the radar. But if she can get super, the dash forward, uh, the knockback, it's going to be tough for uh, Bonnie and Gray to teleport or jump onto her. So I don't mind the pick. I just think it's a bit out there in comparison to what we're usually used to uh, from from. The, the teams on Flare and Phoenix. Yeah, it's a, it's going to be an interesting one. It's going to be an interesting one. Do you feel like either team has much of an advantage right now with this comes? I feel like maybe Reply Totem's comes a little bit better, but that's maybe just because I like Brock quite a lot. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, I, I was feeling kind of the same way, to be honest. I just like the ability to just, you know, confirm a kill. Whether it's going to be a rocket rain or the fact that they, they, they have, well, not only the pulls that Joker is cheerfully teasing right now, he's not quite going to connect it though, but the, the, the jump in and the TP, there's just so much uh, abilities, uh, so many abilities for Reply Totem to just confirm a kill. If they get someone low, they have the opportunity to just take him down, whereas I feel like on the side of Humble, they don't quite have that sort of playstyle available to them. Yeah, well, nice Walking King going to be used again. Missed once more by Joker. And Cyclone just going to walk through a bit of that incendiary, take some damage, get scouted out. Yet again, does the same, but feeding Joker a little bit this time as well. So they've got to be cautious about giving these supers away. And Tom's going to throw a residue down the right hand side to cut that part, portion of the map off for Joker in the meantime. 
Yeah, he's been quite patient with his ready to use. I think it's just his first one that he used now, and that is a bit scary. But look at that. Double kill here for Team Humble. It's only Joker left alive and not really a situation he can win it. And even though they don't quite have that same level of uh, explosion on the comp of Humble, they do have a comp that will do really well in the end game. The Maze is going to be brutal with those unbreakable walls and Squeak shutting down Joker early on into that fight. That may have been what just secured that first run for them, to be honest, keeping him completely isolated and apart from the other two players. They killed both of them and then he was left in a 1v3. Let's see though if reply to them are gonna allow them to get to the end game once again. I will say, with a lot of this grass gone, it's gonna be harder for them to sneak up and get those shots in. But we might want to see another residue coming out of Tomsey, because as you said, that was a big turning point in that previous round. Luke getting hit pretty hard now, and Maru has that super. So got to be cautious, but obviously has his dash if he needs to avoid something or wants to go forward and gets the, uh, the, the knocks out. And now super is there and actually gonna connect onto that Bonnie, but not do too much. And I feel like that was a little bit of a waste, I feel. Uh, Cyclone gonna be eating that rocket rain to the face, but is that gonna be enough? Maru is the jump in to confirm it. It's only Tomsey left alive and Joker will be there to take him down. That's two supers carried over, I believe as well for a Ply Totem. Not half bad, none for Humble. That is half bad. So things looking not too bad here for a Ply Totem. Yeah, Maru's gonna get a connection shot to Cyclone there and try and get use out of his super again. And I feel like he might be able to if both Tomsey and Cyclone are clumping up on this mid portion. But Luki looking for another super now. Found one shot, maybe two on Tamori. But nothing more. TP available from Joker too. So they need to be cautious of that. Specifically Tomsey, I feel. I'm Bolton going to try to maybe get a super or two before the final end game of this first game of Knockout. We need to find some more connections for that. Everything would be valuable though, and Luki will be able to find his. Also does feed into the Bonnie Super. They'll have to be careful, there's just a little bit more util available for Reply Totem. Maori not quite committing to that fight against Luki just yet, but a beautiful gadget from Maori locks in that kill. Cyclone in a 1v3, finds one, but the other two will take care of the rest. And Reply Totem, just like that, are back with a match point in their hands. Humble, they fought off countless amounts of match points today, but can they survive this one? Yeah, this is the one that's gonna change everything in this one game. And they didn't look bad in that previous one, but once those gadgets were used up on Squeak, it started to look a little bit more bleak. Mario gonna instantly go for that break above the mid. Leaves a little bit of bush at the front, but Tomsey did get hit by it as well, so maybe he was just aiming for a li little bit of a different spot, and Tomsey did tank that one a little bit further up. But Luki needs to work for his super, and I feel like we need a dash towards the enemies and use that super rather than kind of the, the, the defensive dashes that he's been using in the past. Cyclone taking a lot of damage. The pull is not going to connect, though. That would probably have been a guaranteed kill, but they'll get him regardless. That three on two is very promising for a play totem. They find another one. There are opportunities for Humble. They could probably have turned this around, but now it's going to be a little bit late as Tom's is all by his lonely self just trying to maybe get a super of his own doesn't really care about feeding maori his super but especially not when he's in clyde form but back to bunny form now tumsy runs for the gas and gives up for that round reply to him round away now for making it to the grand finals well shots coming down and as you say just a round away from the mid and the Finals, TP comes forward, Joker feeling confident, gets the kill, but the super might trade out, actually misses, sadly for them. And then the raining of the super coming down from Maru, just stopping Cyclone from following Joker into that position. luki has got the super though, and that's going to be the thing that can clutch this one up. Cyclone getting some good shots in, Joker's low, does have the TP out if it gets too close though. And both Cyclone and Luki in a bit of a tough spot now, as they need to clutch this 3v2 or it's all over. They have two supers to work with now. Maze's super will ensure that no one really goes over aggressive against her. Oh, well, never mind. Joker does it, then it pays off. They get the kill. It's only Cyclone, and surely they'll shut him down too. Reply Totem will prevent 
humble from getting another reverse sweep today. One is all they'll get as Reply Totem secured their spot in the grand finals of the July monthly finals for humble the streak is gonna end here and they'll go home and after some pretty solid matches today to be honest but their their journey ends in the semi-finals yeah it, it's a tough one for humble they played some great brawl stars today especially in those quarter finals against anr and knocking out one of the favorites in the region at the moment i'm sure total of totem will have thanked them for that and uh, gone on to win this game and move on to the grand final so a big congratulations to totem but i do feel for humble they put on a wonderful performance today and even in this game uh, they played very very solid too uh, managing to avoid a couple of match points but in the end not what they wanted to happen losing in this hot zone here close to bringing it back but not close enough we see them knocked out the competition completely great performance from apply totem in this one they'll be going to the grand finals once more they lost last month grand finals to zeta division they already beat them today so it's gonna leave a bit of an open door and i'm very curious to see which other team is gonna try to squeeze in Stats aren't looking good, let's be honest, with Humble's 1-0 one, one, and 2, 50 DPS for Cyclone, not looking the best, but on the other side, 8 kills for Joker, the real um, shining light there for the side of Reply Totem, 4 and 1 for his teammates, so not the worst from them either, especially Mori, but Mario got a lot of damage, not so many kills, uh, so that is even in, even itself out, but as I say, Reply Totem moving on to the Grand Finals, going to be facing either SK Gaming or Foot Esports, which is the game we will have up next, it really is. Uh, going to be great to see who is going to be MVP. It's going to be Maury, and I think that's that's deserved. I think uh, across the Reply Totem roster, every time I watch them play, I feel like it's always a very good team performance. Not really that one shining light, but Maury did play uh, pretty well throughout this series. Yeah, I'm I'm completely with you. I think their team synergy is just really strong, and uh, the beautiful thing about Reply Totem is that each and one of their players is completely capable of popping off and doing unbelievable things when they need it the most and i mean we saw that against zeta as well earlier today yeah we'll, we'll take a quick little look at the bracket to see what has been going on throughout the day and where we're going to next in just a second we've seen some absolutely phenomenal games i will say and uh you know to start things off we saw that humble take down anr reply totem took down zeta division foot beat nita's cubs and sk gaming took down navi then we've just seen now that first semi-final where humble did fall to reply totem after a heroic victory in the quarterfinals they could not quite pull it off against one of the favorites in the region reply totem up next we have this Foot Esports versus SK Gaming roster, and this is where our predictions kind of differed, Teddy. I went for Foot Esports, you went for SK Gaming, and I can't blame you. And I'm sure you can't blame me for going Foot because it's a very, very 50-50 matchup. It's uh, such a tough one to call Foot Esports. They didn't really have the start of the year they were hoping for. They had a shiny new team that was incredibly exciting and a lot of expectations, but didn't quite manage to meet them in the first half of the year. But slowly and surely, they've been getting to a better place and getting more and more consistent. I believe they're sixth right now in the leaderboards. They're looking better and better, but honestly, I feel like both teams are kind of facing the same issue where they started the year quite awfully and now it's looking more and more promising, except there's only one team out of the two here that's going to make it to the grand finals today. Yeah, I mean, that is the thing. Only one team will make it, but SK Gaming, iChaos, Ope, and Yoshi being the roster that we did just see take down Navi, preventing themselves from being reverse sweeped. It was a big win in that last set for them in an extremely climactic ending. It looked very good throughout that brawl ball. Couple of, first couple of sets, they walked away with it. Then Navi started to claw things back, but SK Gaming did manage to put the nail in the coffin and finish them off. We'll see if they're able to do the same to Foot Esports and move on to the grand finals, or if the opposite will happen. And we'll see that Foot Esports versus Reply Totem game that we love. We're going to be starting things off on Gold Arm Gulch in Knockout. I like this map and I feel like it's uh, it's going to be quite an aggressive battle between these two teams. Certainly so. We'll see what kind of uh, drafts we'll be expecting. Maybe we'll see some Rico show up on, on IKLs or at least some roughs or something along those lines. We did see roughs here earlier today. I don't think it worked out for them, but we'll see if uh, it's going to be the case in this one. Our bands are lining up and Looks like Foot, they don't want none of that thrower action as they ban three throwers. It's going to be Grom, Sprout and Tick out of the equation already. 
As our first picks are locking in, just quickly, SK's bans are gonna be Cordelius, also the tick, and I believe it was the Shelly for their final ban. We have a first pick, Gus for Foot Esport, SK Gaming matching that with the Bonnie and the Squeak. I like these picks for SK, I will say. Uh, the Bonnie and the Squeak are always very, very good, but the Gus also a great pick. Early game, late game, when you have the shield, it can be very good. Foot Esports definitely against the throwers. SK Gaming kind of agreeing with banning out the tick with Cordelius and Shelly, uh, with Foot Esports having the first pick. Uh, pretty. The, the bands that go without saying, I feel, for the side of SK Gaming there, but for Esports have the next two picks. Three seconds on the clock should be coming through in just a second. You're going to see the Fang, and that's a bold pick this early on. It's a very bold pick. It's not a brawler we see a whole lot at the moment, to be honest, and sometimes I do wonder why, because he is still very threatening. His gadget, the, the, the stun, can be really, really strong at just shutting down one or multiple players up close. And his super is still incredibly strong at, at getting him up close to the fight and get some massive damage with it. So I kind of like it, to be honest. I'm really curious about what the reaction is going to be from SK Gaming to that Fang. We'll see if Brock for Foot's final pick just, you know, open up the walls they want to open up, get some nice damage from afar as well, and I mean, all in all, just a pretty standard knockout brawl. Yeah, uh, you know, as I said, we were, we're probably going to see quite a lot of aggression between these two these two teams, and Fang, I think, kind of solidifies that. SK Gaming going to need something to defend against it, otherwise they're going to be pretty much hung out to dry against the aggression that Lenane's going to be bringing in on this brawler. They're going to go with the RT, can drop the legs, and... Uh, Deal some serious damage if the Fang does land on him. So I can't blame Chaos for that pick. I think it's pretty solid. Uh, obviously got the range to be able to combat them uh, through that as well. I, I like the RT. I like the RT. I think you can do some good work. And yeah, if the Fang gets over aggressive or finishes his uh, dash chain onto him, that's where things can go really wrong if, uh, if the RT has a super. We we'll have to say and the field, how it all plays out. I think both comms have their own merits, and I see a little bit more of a pop-up factor with that Fang, but at the same time, I feel like his strength can be also his uh, biggest demise, as if they're able to keep him at bay and shut him down from afar, he will not have as much of a DPS to provide his team as the other players. Well, it's all of SK were on the right to start with, but we see Chaos rotating over now as well. And then gets the roundhouse kick, gets the stun and gets the kill. Nice stuff for him against Yoshi there. It was meant to be brought in to be able to deal some decent damage against him, but that's clearly not the case so far. Does get hit once though by OP and needs to kind of prevent feeding that super and actually does manage to get it. So the jump should be coming in, whether that's now or in the next round. He's going to go for it now, but actually get traded out. And this is a definitely a matchup that should be won by foot. Yeah, they should be able to do this. I can not really care about feeding the Brock anymore because you're already at his super anyway. So for SK, it is actually better that the Brock gets the kill there rather than the Fang. Regardless, the first one will go the way of foot and they'll be quite happy about that. And instant rocket rain from Samantha gets some good value and he gets another rocket rain now. Not quite gonna use it just yet, but actually he will get some more tags onto Ope. Lenai is too low HP to commit though and Semantic is just tapping from afar with that bra keeping multiple players on the edge of their seat and on the brink of defeat. Super came in there from Lenane. Drage didn't manage to grab that ghost, but Ope should go down. Good pinch from Semantic and Lenane, and with how hard Semantic's been tapping so far in this game, uh, should be all right. But RT does have that super. If Lenane manages to get his, he's going to want to stay away from that. And obviously, Chaos will be his target anyway, thanks to his uh, no burst damage. Semantic has a super. Not sure if he really wants to break up that much because of Lenane and his super. We're going to be the ones mostly using that, but super comes out of the squeak as well. And that's a lot of hits on Semantic. He's going to go down, but the follow up's not there from Lenane. Residue's on the floor and he's going to get slowed down. Gets his super, but gives Chaos his back as well. Yeah, this was a tough one for Foot. I mean, the squeak kind of just popped off there for SK Gaming. And Chaos getting the connections he desperately needed. It was really well done. Now suddenly it's one round each. Super here from Akios is gonna find a connection as well. But there's not really any opportunity to follow up for SK Gaming. They'll have just a little bit more control for now and they'll have to be satisfied with that. Yeah, well, 
the lane can find his way, or at least end up on Chaos, then it's going to be a good position. No residues left either, so kind of solidifies that position. But Yoshi just staying so firm on him, marking him up with those shots time and time again. And it's going to be difficult. Even used a gadget there as well. I'm not sure about that from Yoshi, but I don't feel like you use three RT gadgets in a game like this anyway, so I can't blame him for it, especially with it being the last round. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. He's probably not going to have the most opportunities to pop them at this point anyway. It's a dash in from the nine, gets the one kill, the follow-up as well, and Opie gets knocked back into the gas. I think that may even have been a, a triple there from the nine. Well played. Well played. Foot was a really, really fun comp so far, and finding exactly what they were looking for in that first game. Let's see if they can mash that again in game two or if SK Gaming have uh, something to strike back. Yeah, we will see. This is going to be the first set if Foot Esports managed to win this game and Yoshi. Not in the best spot early on, but a little bit of a wall break from Semantic there. Lene's trying to make a break once again. Might be able to find Obey. It's the same thing has happened in the last game. He finds a way through. He gets the kill and he looks good whilst doing it. Lene is going to go down there though. That did so much damage. I'm not sure if the gadget came through as well there from RT just after, but that was a 3k squeak show if not. Yeah, I didn't really see it to be honest, so I'm not entirely sure how much damage he took there, but enough to take him down for sure. And he seemed healthy enough until that point. Regardless, it is a two-on-two. Two. Drage gonna pop super, and he makes it a two-on-one now as Yoshi is left alone. Not much of a chance. Never mind. Yoshi finds him. Does get tagged up there. Gives a little bit of a free tag to Semantic. Semantic might just go for a super, and he'll do exactly that. Yoshi running into a shot, and then the fire will do the rest. That was almost too close, to be honest. If Yoshi had the time to heal up a bit there, that could have been very problematic for food but they will take that round and sk now need to be a bit careful they're gonna lose the first set yeah it really was a worthwhile super there from semantic get him down and get the round back in their hands because now they've got a bit of wiggle room uh they're not gonna be too bad on the lane i believe has another super down the bottom here as well but doesn't really want to use it on Ope. doesn't really want to use it on yoshi Shen. maybe you might rotate over to the left hand side He's actually going to go for Yoshi there, gets the stun off and gets the kill, jump in from Ope. Can't do much now though, he didn't have any ammo left and Semantic just looking to try and get his super as Chaos. Pretty much already has his and it's not as influential anyway as that rocket rain can be in the closing seconds or getting out over the walls. So Lenane starting from square one, back trying to get his super. Drage has his, Semantic has his, Chaos got his as well but SK looking a little bit more bleak on the super side. Yeah, I don't have quite as much to work with right now, especially as well with uh, the star power choice on the on the squeak. It's super not gonna slow anyone down anymore, so not necessarily as strong as it once was. Let's see if either side are gonna be able to find an opening. Is there's all three supers available now for food esports? And they can get a little bit of a wombo combo. Shielding up that fan that goes in with a rocket rain to close out some of the kills or make the players clo uh, a bit closer to being low HP early on. And yeah, everything comes in at once. I think the super from, from Drage was missed. And that's going to give away that round and game. That's got to be disappointing there for Foot Esports, but Escape. They're going to be pretty pleased about that if it was just that one super that changed it because I'm sure Latrez provided to Lenane when he was going in because if, if he didn't, he uh, definitely could have used it. And that's a bit of an issue there for, for esports. But SK Gaming come out on top of that one. Now it's just this one game to decide who takes the first set. So Manta going to instantly break up that back portion of the map and not even get the best break on it either, to be honest. Yeah, I'm not sure if Drage either missed that super or just you know, died regardless of, of, of uh, landing it. But Lana is going in and he's going in for a second kill. I mean, SK need to be careful because they're not playing bad, but every time the first round, they give away a free kill to Lana. <laughs> and they can't do that. Yeah, it's not a round they want to be dropping, but Samantha getting hit hard and actually forcing the shield out of Drage there. A little break coming down as well. No more rocket fuels left from Semantic, so we won't see that much more wall break unless we see a super coming down, but Chaos feeling confident about this one. Maybe even going in and feeding some more supers to the side of Foot Esports is, uh, he doesn't seem to be backing off just yet. 
but he always has the option to go for the gas but if you can find a connection or two he might consider going for it actually it does connect the super arm to drage but again no slow means no real follow-up and he should be going down here i'm gonna feed a little bit more super he's not a crazy amount either but not sure if that was worth it because now he doesn't even get to carry his own super over yeah for esports in a good position now in a bit of a stronghold on this map as well the name pushing aggressive doesn't really want to uh well at least for the side of sk they don't want to slip up and have him take down Ope yet again just just after missing a couple of shots and scouting the lane semantic gets a shot into chaos though can't be too far off getting his super and drage working towards his as well Lene, though, he's the man they really want to make the moves. One gadget left, though, I believe, as he did use two quite early on in the last. Yeah, well, I mean, two gadgets, two kills is not too bad either, so I'm sure he doesn't regret that decision. But you're right, though. It would be nicer for Fruit if they can just close that here. As he, more likely than not, will not have any gadgets left for the third round. Yoshi has super as well, and Lene gets absolutely destroyed the direction the gas for the rest of the team and i'll try not to feed too many supers they're still too carried over for sk well this round will decide pretty much everything supers all available from foot esports and sk they do have two so it's not going to be the saddest of things for them only missing out on that squeak one and chaos i'm sure isn't that far away from it either so comes down from smatic she's just going to break those walls I'm not sure I feel about that. Is it? I feel like that's quite an influential super to have a little bit later on down the line if you're trying to finish a kill. Tanking game from afar, trying to get some little poke damage here and there. Get closer to unlocking those supers. There's two for each now, and will be available for the late game. Now it's the waiting time for some opportunities or for the gas to create them. I mean, foot better hope the Drage doesn't miss his shield this time as Linane, I'm sure, is going to be wanting it. Gets provided with it. Super going to be going in and jump over it from Bonnie. Drage gets the kill there. It's a 2v1, but Yoshi can do this definitely so. Gadget comes back. I mean, the Super goes back onto Drage. Yoshi in a good position. Linane's low as well. This could be a win, but he gets it. He walks into the big kick and gets taken down. 800 HP decided the first set, and it goes to foot. That was a tough one. As you said, definitely winnable for Yoshi, but it's a lot to ask for as well. And a little bit too much, it seems like, this time. A set one will go to foot, but that was a close one. And it, it, it's kind of crazy when you think about how close that set went, considering the amount of free kills they've given Luna at the beginning of rounds, where they just don't clear the bush well, and he just sneaks up on them and gets... Like, I think it happened three times, maybe even four in one set that that should not be happening lots of mistakes there and something they want to be careful of moving forward in this series i mean that was such a close game every every game i believe out of three went to the last round as well so it wasn't exactly a one-sided affair towards for esports sk gaming arguably had some of the better plays but as you say we just saw a few little slip-ups in the early game that allowed uh Lene to just push straight down one of those sides and get an early kill and that is not something they're going to be complaining about. But from this point on, for esports are one set up. Need to try and solidify some more as they need these points more than anybody is. They've got no future secured in the SPS or future months either. Because we'll be going back to the qualifying stage after this monthly final. And it all resets and anything can happen. Good first set for Food Esports. SK Gaming really not far behind. I mean, look how close that was. As you said, he took the big kick. If he didn't, he probably would have had his shot in time to take Lenin down before he supers into him. Looking at the scoreboard here, very even stat-wise, to be honest. I think they're one kill apart. Yeah, they're one kill apart. And DPS-wise, food is on top, though, so a little bit of an edge there. They were able to get the rounds, and that's really what matters. Well, it is going to be Kaboom Canyon Heist up next. And as always, second set, it's a decisive one. It's hard to come back from being 2-0 down, but 1-1. 
definitely sounds a lot better. Kaboom Canyon, I feel like we need to avoid some of the Shelly for at least both of these teams because it does do quite a lot. I believe we may have seen the Shelly actually lose earlier though. Um, as, as those range comps can really pull through if that grass gets broken up and that mobility is lost. We'll see now what they do ban out. We've got rid of the Crow, the B, and the Eve coming in from Foot Esports. Makes sense considering they've got that first pick. Eve, Cordelius, and Shelly going to be banned out by the side of SK Gaming. Bonnie as the first selection from Foot. I like it. I like it too. I mean, the speed gear, I've said this, I think every month this year. But I still love it, the speed gear, just mitigating that slowness in that mid-bush. There's just so much bush, so basically you go to a normal speed and that helps Bonnie quite a bit. And overall, just very, very good sharpshooter with that extra little level of explosion. If you want to go for jumping on the safe or to eliminate a threat somewhere. Brock is going to be a, a very good addition as well for SK Gaming. The free wall break is ever so valuable to destroy those uh, mid walls and just get some better positioning for your team some better timings as well for that initial fight where usually uh, your opponents if they don't have wall break will just not have a mid player for a little bit so i like it for sure it's also one of the highest dps brawlers on safe in the game especially for a more long range brawler that can just stay literally in that mid area and still be able to hit that safe for a ton of damage with the the incendiary damage that just adds up really nicely onto the safe yeah the colette as well going to be very good against the bonnie and add a lot of damage to the safe as well it's kind of a question of whether or not foot esports are going to be able to keep control in a position like this and uh because if Brock gets the save, if Colette gets the save, it's going to be difficult. They're going to go with the squeak up next. You know, if you throw one of these residues down one of the sides, that's going to be difficult to push through. Um, not difficult. They're just not going to try and do it. Always, they will be taken down. Footy Sports on their last pick now. Third and final for them. And then we go back over to SK Gaming. They're going to go with the Griff. A little bit of a wall break. And I think that might help against the Colette quite heavily. But also, I feel it kind of defeats the point of the residue. You know, if they're only breaking their side, I'm fine with that. But if they break the opposing side, it adds an extra choke point to walk through. That's a good point. That's a good point. Well, they can't break the other side though, right? Because, I mean, the Brock will probably break it anyways. That's true. <laughs> I just thought about that now. I was like, a very good point, but maybe not. <laughs> well, clearly I didn't think of it, so you've done better than me there. <laughs> it happens, it happens. Now I go for a Lola as their final pick. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. Lola is uh, in a pretty decent place at the moment. It's the role I play the most because I'm trying to get that uh, mastery. Uh, but yeah, it's quite a grind and I'm not good enough at the game to, you know, get enough <laughs> wins to, to get there. But it is in a, in a fairly good place. Not the most dominant brawler, but definitely one that can do some good damage here and there. And especially if you leave her on safe with an ego, uh, that is going to be a problem. Yeah, I mean, it, it really is. And the DPS that SK are going to be able to pile out onto the safe here is going to be an issue for Foot Esports if they lose control even once. Glare Supers, Brock shots, Lola shots. It's it's dangerous for them. But they've got a very controlling comp, I feel. And if they, can, if they manage to do it, then I'm sure they'll be fine if they just get rid of some of these bushes and, uh, and don't allow those those speed gears to take effect for, uh, for the Kalea at least, who's already dominating. Yeah, that's a, a, a strong start so far from SK, who is... There's so much control already, a team wide. And another super from OP that connects on the save. I think also hits Semantic once there. That's gonna help OP chain his next super. He's a connection away and he finds it now. Another super and again finds a tag onto Semantic in the process. That means some extra supercharge. Even though he does end up going down, it's a 41% lead for SK and they still have more control. Yeah, well, Yoshi gonna throw out a gadget down the left-hand side there. Jump forward from Lenane. Great stuff from him, and he actually does get the kill, but no damage has followed up yet. Ope, he's gonna be close to a super as he's going very aggressive. Gets hit a little bit on the way back, or at least the way in by Semantic. And only 9% done by Foot Esports. And on the other side, 52% for SK Game. And Drage is gonna fall, Lenane's gonna fall, and it's just Semantic left alive. Semantic has taken a good chunk of damage there. Ope. I'm gonna pop a nice gadget. Doesn't quite make it back from his super, but still gets the double connection on the save. So he gets it all the way down to 38% now. Foot Esports finally have a shred of control. With 50 seconds left, they're still quite a bit behind damage-wise. 
15% is all I've managed to get so far. Lenane trying to make something happen now as that residue nearly on the safe uh, by Drage. Keeps on slowing them down. Does have his jump as well, but Colette not the best matchup for him in this tanky form. Needs to play the short game, but super comes in from him. And he does get eradicated very, very fast. Drage has a super as well. Can do a lot of damage on the safe, but choosing to use it defensively and try keeping the control. But at this point, they need the damage. Yeah, they still need a lot of damage. This is looking problematic for Foot. So far, SK's defense has been absolutely on point. I mean, their offense too, really. Yoshi takes down Semantic. And now Foot Esports with that final push is just not gonna be happening. Not enough damage in the world to make the difference here. SK Gaming take the first game of highs in a pretty convincing way, to be honest. That was very convincing. Instantly off the start, they had all three members of Foot Esports down and a lot of control and a lot of damage. So I kind of think they're maybe going to take this set. The composition maybe seems a little bit better than what they brought to the table on the side of Foot. But if they get that early control, who knows? Maybe it'll be a different story if we don't see, I don't know, three Colette Supers before we see anything from Foot. Wall break takes just a little bit longer for the Griff compared to the Bronk. But regardless, it is foot with the more mid control now. SK playing it very defensively this time around. But now we'll get tagged up a bit by that gadget from Yashi. Some early damage on save. Just a little bit of attack for now. And that chaos will take a good bit of damage from that shot from Drage. Eventually, OP does find Lena and with a gadget. He'll be staying up and healthy for a bit longer as well. 7 HP survives, but Lena will make sure that he doesn't get the chance to heal up. Well done. Another trade here, and the action just doesn't stop. Yeah, I mean, SK are already in the lead, even after that slight push we saw come through from SK. Three shots from Drage connect and gets down OPE, but Samantha's just outranged and outclassed a little bit by the brawls on the opposing side. Get some HP back from the from the star power, but Drage getting hit hard. Super needs to be used and residue thrown down. There goes the Griff Super. Actually does go down, but I think that's one connection, at least in one direction from OPE. Smetic hasn't had the easiest time on Griff so far. Trying to get up close on the left hand side and find some more value. Drage has super once more could find some connections that would be helpful especially if you can land it onto the save Drage takes down Ope but the trade is there Lena is able to find another one and gets a couple shots off onto the save survives for uh, an absurd amount of time to be honest but in the meantime SK also have some presence towards that blue save and for now they still have a 6% lead yeah, residue plays down, that's stopping the Brock, and it is only it's only 6%, so it's not that much. Lola Super does go down, doesn't really get much done. So, oh, there's the Griff Super, and this could be the big turning point for Foot Esports. Lenane not got jumped just yet, Samantha's going to avoid quite a lot of that Brock Super, but he does go down 15 seconds on the clock. Drage has got his Super, it should get a good connection on OP, should bring him down, does. Lenane needs a jump, he gets it, the jump on, the damage comes through, they take the lead, add a few more shots as well. Lenane's still alive, he's keeping him at bay for so long, Samantha's going to join him as well. One second left. And Foot Esports bring a game back. One more to take the set, or one more for SK to uh, even things out. Strong performance there, to be honest, from, from Lana and in general the Foot Gang. Let's see if they can repeat that success in the third game. SK's defense is not holding up as nicely, and you can see the difference as well between that first game where SK won the opening fight like hands down incredibly dominant first fight with a team wipe and some opportunities to get some early damage on safe and then the second game where it was kind of the other way around and it, they just didn't have that flourishing of a start well now Lenane does have this jump maybe be able to get connect shot OP does actually survive that one out great from SK to have him still alive here so man's gonna use that super not get a lot from it does get it back and it brings chaos low but they do have control and they are going to take the lead it only it, even if it's two percent it's still a lead at the moment oh we've seen many games come down to even less than that semantic getting some more tags onto the save it's fairly even still as yoshi 
is going to come back to defend. Semantic eventually gets caught in a crossfire between three different players. Lena is able to at least make sure that he gets that trade. Still a two on one and slowly SKR building up just a little bit more control. Good super from Semantic. 7% lead now for Food Esports and even though they have the man advantage, they haven't really taken all that much control from that situation just yet as Semantic got tagged up heavily by that Brock super. Lena gets some more damage on safe. And for now, it's a 14% lead. Nothing too drastic, but they do need to take care of Semantic and they will find the connections. Yoshi with some beautiful Brock shots. Slowly, things are looking better and better for SK Gaming, but they're still behind damage-wise. Yeah, even out now, and Drage needs to try and not avoid OP here, but the name very, very low chaos. I mean, everybody's low on the map at the moment. Gets good shots from Semantic there. Nice connection from Lenane and Drage, even things out, but Yoshi trying to push forward. 20 seconds of the clock. He's going to get a lot of damage, but he's going to fall as well. That's going to give control to now for Esports. Even though Colette's going back to the mid, they can't really let him get the super off, but they do. A lot is going to need to come down in this last 15. Yeah, I don't know if that's enough damage from SK either. Because there's three players coming up with a bunny jump as well. The squeak super that will get a connection. Opie oh, trying to tank it, but it's not enough. Damage pours down and SK Gaming are not able to defend that save off. It's going to be foot to take the set and that's going to be a second one locked in. I mean, that's rough for SK, and as you said, just not enough damage before that last push came in from Foot Esports. It's the same as the game before as well. Not the position they wanted to be in. Great stuff, I will say, from both Semantic and Drage to open it up, because Brock was just holding super. He was flashing it at Linane time and time again. It was only on, like, 2,000 HP. So, great from them to bring the Brock down and allow him to be the one who goes and gets the jump in, because they know he's got the best burst DPS uh, close to safe on the team. So, I think that's a really good team play overall from Foot. But, yeah, again, I can't... I can't reiterate enough how close this game is, and maybe the SK should have even won this one because they looked the better team throughout both of the games, I feel, at least in my mind. But, oh yeah, foot one in the end, and this is something we'll learn in time and time again in Brawl Stars. A lot of the time, the kills, the DPS, it doesn't matter if you don't get the damage on safe. Absolutely so. I mean, it's a marathon as well, right? Especially highs. It doesn't matter how you're doing in the early to mid game. And even the late game, what matters is how you're doing when the, the, the countdown ends at a pro level, or unless you fully destroy the safe, I guess. But regardless of that, looking at the kills, 19 for Aikios is a very impressive amount, but across the board, it's high on both sides. SK Gaming definitely was the more kills though, and doesn't seem like it's gonna reward them this time. And I mean, it makes sense a little bit as well as some pros uh, used to say back in the days, is that you, you know the damage you don't deal uh, or rather damage you deal on safe is damage you don't deal to players right so that could justify a little bit of that as well as food did have more damage on safe at the end of the day yeah it was only a little bit though and i will say you know that from that first game it was full in control uh for the uh, for the sk gaming guys and they just looked so much better but as soon as foot started to get that control uh into the into the mid off the start and had that early pressure coming through and not allowing Colette uh, four supers on safe without even dying, that's when they started to play a little bit better. And even at that, they were behind at the end. But both games, at least the second uh, second and third games, they just pulled through uh, really, really nicely. And so we'll see if they're able to continue this or if SK Gaming can do a massive, massive reverse sweep. It's going to be a tall order for them. But for Esports, only one set now away from closing this out and moving on to face for Ply Totem. Foot are hungry for those grand finals, but uh, to be honest, SK Gaming are just as uh, hungry as well. I almost said hangry, uh, <laughs> but at this point, kind of, kind of, because it's been a tough year for both teams. They've both pretty, pretty much disappointed themselves in the first half of this year, as we know how high their expectations are, because we know how talented those players are, and how capable they are of, of wonderful things, but it just hasn't quite paid off so far this year. They've been in the shadow of teams like Reply Totem and of course Zeta Division that's been kind of uh, ahead of the competition so far this year. This is the monthly final of the underdogs as Zeta is out and either SK or Foot are going to be joining Reply Totem in the grand finals and right now it's looking a whole lot more likely that it's going to be Foot Esports making it.
I mean, Tara as a first pick is not something that I'd expect on a, on a map like Hard Rock Mine. Yes, it's a good pick, but I don't know if it's really first pick potential, at least in my eyes. Uh, we're over to foot now with two picks, and we'll see what they do choose to go with, but I'm sure there's a lot on the table that's not playing into Watara's hands. Sandy's still uh, very good against that as well. Um, it kind of brings Carl off the table and a lot of those other picks as well, but they're going to go with the Gus through the mid, and I like it, picking up that mid early on and um, making sure that they've got a solid one. Yeah, I don't mind it either. I, I, I kind of agree with you for the, the Sandy idea. I feel like it could be something interesting for foot but we'll see what they actually decide to commit to pick wise we have a sandban as well here from sk i mean we saw I, I believe it was the last match day from sps or the second last where lunar popped off like crazy on the sand and uh well that's probably why he's banned right now <laughs> is what i'm trying to say and they'll go call instead and you, you kind of warned us about the, the Carl pick and how it could be a bit dangerous against the Terra, and I agree, it does deal well with the Terra gadget, but I mean, the super obviously is absolutely brutal up close. I, 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 I'm not sure about it. If it can, you know, get the other matchup and play that well, then I think it'll be fine. But at the moment, just into this Tara, if that's the matchup that's going to be playing, I don't feel too confident in it, but they're going to play the B through the mid here, SK Gaming, to see if... Uh, if they're able to beat this Gus down there. And they do have one more pick as well. And we can't forget, Foot had the last pick, so they got the possibility of countering or trying to counter uh, all of all of what SK Gaming brings to the table. So I feel like they're favored a little bit more here. But the Carl into the Tara, I wasn't sure about it. And if he can get a flying hook onto the gem carrier, it's always going to be good. But they're going to have a solid defense against it. Final picks about to come through. And SK is going to go for the Stu. Interesting. I'm not sure what to think of it. I mean, doesn't have bad matchups so far. So, I think I don't really mind it. For these sports, might try to find a good way to punish. Drage has a couple more seconds to cook, and it's gonna be the penny they'll bring in. It's gonna have some good value against both. I mean, I'm really against everyone, to be uh, honest, in their base kits, or like their usual meta kits, they all end up playing with some sort of spawnable, which is going to be a problem when there's a penny. And it's also going to be helpful to have that mortar on your side if there's a speed zone or honey molasses you want to take down. So I don't really mind it either. It's, it, it, it's an interesting call. It's an interesting call. I kind of like the penny pick, I will say, you know, as you said, it splashes through the speed zone, the only molasses, the spawnables that Tara brings in, support from beyond. So it's solid. I think it's pretty, pretty good all in all. We'll see if it manages to pull through and take the win for Foot Esports or if SK Gaming will bring one set back and start the possibility of a reverse sweep. Tara's going to be moving over onto this penny side, which I don't think is the best matchup for her. Drake was a very passive early game. Was back early on, and you know, she was a nice connection there onto Semantic as well. Drake's gonna get tagged up too, and now there's information given. And I really like that they're playing that gadget on the, on the Tara because I mean, the other one would be very dangerous to play up, uh, up close, and this one still gives so much information on this map, being really helpful so far to SK. And even though I chaos might end up going down here. It's not before SK have built up a 6 gem lead 7 to Yoshi's name now, and that is definitely a strong early statement. Yeah, so Manta could claim so much control then if he knew that the Tara wasn't on that side, so difficult position for him, but that 8 gem spawns on the side of SK Gaming. OP's going to be trying to go for it, but the splash through of Samanti there, nice for him, but Gadget from both Chaos and Samanti pretty much negate each other out, but a little bit of a wall break coming in there for SK Gaming. I'm not sure if that really helps them or the others. Opie's going to get the pull, but nothing from it. Super from the name coming in. Surely going to get the takedown, but I don't think he can get out here. Not sure if that's worth the risk. Knockback. Oh, actually, not knockback from the turret coming in there from Semantic. Just places it down to tank a few shots, but it's five to nine. But they're all with Tara. I think it was a nice try from Lena. I don't know if he has any more flying hooks, because if he did, he was not that far from getting away, was it? 
Yeah, he does still have one, so he was that far from getting away with it, is my point. Uh, even though, well, I mean, clearly he didn't. But it's only a one gem difference now. Actually, it's all even as Rage picks up gem number nine. Everyone is very packed up together here for SK. They lose a player. Ope goes for a pool. We'll get the kill to Semantic. Follow up as well, but Drage is the one carrying the gems, and so far he's been fine. Yoshi picked up another gem though, so he should be able to equalize until the no swoops in, gets that kill. Chaos is tagged up as well. The pool will connect, but the unbreakable wall is gonna block Semantic from being sucked all the way. And now with two gems difference, Foot could probably still. Reset the countdown by staying around the mid, but they need that next jam. It spawns on the side of SK, and it's going to be Ikeos to pick it up, and that is just about enough to save the day for SK Gaming. They'll take that game. It was close, though, and I feel at many points, Foot should have probably won that one. The gems dropped for SK a couple of times there, but they're just never, never able to retrieve them or get enough shots in with the gust there. I think it was one shot off, uh, one shot off the, the, the Kooky Popper coming in, but it was tanked by Honey Molasses, so it's a bit rough for Foot Esports there. Good plays from SK Gaming to be able to take this win, but at the same time, I feel like they, they, their start should just be better than it was in the previous game. All right, early aggression once again, and Drajan and now they respect that sort of aggression. In the meantime, they have Semantic that has built up a little bit of a flank on that right side. He does get tagged up quite happily. Surely they'll be able to pinch it, but actually he does manage to take down Semantic in the process. Means that there's not going to be as much of a mid presence for a little bit, but Foot can't really capitalize too much. Instead, Escape still are able to build up a bit of an early gem late. Drake pushed back all the way back to his spawn. Same thing for Lena. That positioning is so dominant here for SK Gaming and something that Foot need to deal with immediately. Super there from Semantic as well. Going to be providing that fourth man. Great splashing through from Svansk. And he's going to move into a great position. Now they're all going towards Yoshi. He's low. He's down. Lenane's going to get the gems. And this time he will get out with them. Foot looked bleak throughout this one. There's still a pull available from OP. But the countdown's there. And they're low as well. Don't know how things went from amazing to awful so quickly here for SK Gaming. But for the esports, they will embrace that chaos. As now they have their first match point of the match in their hands let's see if sk are able to fight it off it's going to be a tough one but they have looked good throughout both of the games uh, for esports only really started to claw it back towards uh, the, the later portions and that one it was just a big big turnaround so i feel like Foot maybe gonna have to have a big turnaround again or they're going to just have to play it better if they want to close out here nice early tanks from drage and Chaos is able to get quite aggressive early on as well. That means, again, the first couple of gems nearly all going into the hands of Foot. I hope it, one is fine on the right lane as well. Drage is about one shot away from going down. Akios finds Lena, is able to back off and start healing back up as well. SK Gaming was a very strong early game but we saw it in the previous game it's not about the starts it's about how you finish yeah and we see a lot of strong finishes from foot but not going to get the shield off that time but the turret does connect with op there and he is going to go down semantic very low having to use that salty barrel but not a lot from it either Lenane doesn't want to pick up these gems because he knows if they want to win this one he's going to have to aggress yoshi at some point he's going to have to get the kill and therefore doesn't want to be carrying gems in case he does drop even more to the side of SK Gaming. But Trage is going to pick up that one and it is 9-2. to two. Not too good for Foot Esports, but still, there's some kind of hope in there. Absolutely, we saw them steal away the previous game. Lenar going in, Lenar finds Yoshi, Lenar gets some gems as well. Can he get away with it? Ikeos is able to get the trade, but Semantic somehow runs away with six. Drage finds four, and somehow this is a countdown for Food Esports. <laughs> I mean, Lenane is just an absolute beast on this Carl. That is absolutely insane from him. Went in, got the kill, avoided the Tara super quickly, and then take the win for Foot Esports. They're going to be moving on to the final, spinning as well. And this is the position they needed to be in this month. No guarantees of SPS finals, no guarantees of next month. So get it done here and today.
Amazing stuff from Foot Esports. Locking in their position for the grand finals. And man, Luna was a phenomenal performance here in this one. Where whether it was on Fang, on Carl, on Sam, he is an absolute threat to be reckoned with at the moment. And I just love to see him back in a, in a good form. But look at the scoreboard. Look how close this 3-0 was. It, it shouldn't have been a 3-0, put it that way. SK could have easily taken any single one of these sets, maybe even all of them at that point, if they played it just that little bit better. And a few of them and didn't kind of step out of line there in the last one. Uh, but, I mean, talk about step out of line and then just talk about the name being an absolute madman. He's just so good at this brawler. He knows when to regress. He knows when to back off. And especially in that last game where we just saw him uh, kind of go in, get the kill, avoid the Tara super just on the edge of where the radius would be. It was just perfect. Perfect, picture perfect, and he did it in the game before as well, right there. As you can see, it's just, he's, he's the man to watch. Absolutely, I mean, it, it, I think it's great as well to see Luna back in his aggressive ways because there was a time where, for some reason, we're seeing Luna playing a lot of support brawlers, mainly because he just, you know, needed to kind of fit in with whatever team he was playing with. But I feel like now, Foot have really embraced the player that he is. And I mean, the stats kind of speak for themselves. 10 kills in this one as well there for Lena. A strong performance from him in pretty much every single one of the sets. Playing really impressively well. It's a lot of fun to see him really flourish uh, with his current team and then be able to also play the brawlies that he wants to play. And you can tell quite easily which brawlers he wants to play. Yeah, that's the thing as well, you know, Footy Sports have been very up and down this year. They started pretty poor and then they've had pretty much only semi-finals up until now throughout the rest of the months and finally making their first grand finals appearance with the possibility of even taking it. They're going to be against Reply Totem as well and this is a, a big match for both of them. Both of them want these points so desperately. As I said, there's no guarantee of SPS for Footy Sports. It, it all comes down to this last game day. Reply Totem have no chance at the, that SPS finals. It all comes down to that last month for them. Semantic going to be the star player, and I've got to say, in my mind, I know who you're thinking I'm thinking with the MVP, Teddy. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you know, uh, some sometimes people are just wrong. It, it's just like that. <laughs> I just want to point out as well, you know, a tough loss for Ope as well, that obviously used to play with Foot for the, the first uh, part of the year. And that obviously now switching to SK, it's a bit of a grudge match for him there. But you win some, you lose some, and we'll see in the last month uh, what kind of results they're able to bring in and how likely they are to make it to Worlds and LCQ. For now, it seems like Food is going to take a little bit of an upper hand. And I mean, every single point they can get is also going to be very much welcome, as they were on the lower uh, end of the top seven. So, not necessarily a team with the most points either for LCQ. So, what right, that got? Look how flawless this is going to be. He's just going to slide in. <laughs> Teddy's going to provide it perfectly to him on a plate and he's just going to carry it on. But no, we, we just we just had to make it awkward, didn't we? I had, to, I had to make sure, Trav, that I wasn't interrupting because, like, you've always got a beautiful point to make, mate. And, uh, you know, how it goes. Um, ex exciting stuff. Honestly, very exciting stuff for the sidelines. But jealous to uh, to watch it. But uh, honestly, I mean, what a day it is in this region. As we fully expect, it is always the region that keeps on giving upsets after upsets. Great stuff for Reply Totem and for Esports who have made it all the way to today's grand finals. But it wasn't an easy road for either of these two teams. Reply Totem getting that 3 2 against the Zeta Division. Honestly, that was, you know, often the grand finals happening for them in the quarterfinals. But Esports as well, going through SK on that scoreline, which could have been a lot closer because it was a 2-1 every set of the way. And that, you know, to get there, SK had to beat Navi on a 3-2. We've had 3-2s a lot in those quarterfinal stages, just going to show how close the EME region has been this month. And it's just absolutely crazy. But predictions, guys, we've got to talk about that because I know how hard this one must be to go for. I mean, both of these two teams are playing at the top of their game, both Foot and Reply Totem. Me and Trav starting with Foot. Teddy, don't blame you at all for going with Reply Totem. A bit of a 50-50 here for me. Uh, let's just gloss over our, our previous uh, <laughs> our previous records and discuss more about like our separations on this grand final. Uh, well, if you're throwing that to me, 
I just want to say that, that to be honest, after the quarterfinals, I kind of gave up on the predictions for this month. Like, I'm kind of tilted, you know? So I'm, I'm picking in rage right now. I'm not thinking straight. Um, so I don't really have much to justify it. I just, I don't know. I was feeling totem for this one. So we'll see. It's a tough one. You know, it's a, it's a really cool this uh, for either of these two teams. It'll be the first time they will have won a monthly final this year. You, you got to have a look at it that way, really. I mean, the reply to Otum, of course, they've been in the grand finals a, a, a solid amount compared to Foot. So they've got that you know, idea in their minds of we've, we've got to tie up now. I mean, uh, I think it was back in February as well as June. Uh, grand finals appearances, but never a grand finals win. So today they are looking to make it third time lucky. Joker Maori and Maru are looking very, very good today, Trav. They really are, and I mean, they, they pulled all the way through, and you, you, you literally said it how I was thinking. They played a grand finals match in the in the quarters, and they've done pretty much the same in the semis as well against Humble. It was a it was a tough one for Humble. They played very well, but Reply Totem just completely shone through them. Against for Esports, this is actually the grand final, and I think it will be a grand final caliber match as well. Well, Teddy, again, for Esports, always just coming shy of these grand finals appearances as well. Seem to be exiting in the semi-finals a lot, but the reply to Otum, you know, I've got to say that they were tested. They were really, really put to the test in their first match of the day. And of course, Humble in the semi-finals could have definitely gone the distance a bit more than it did. But I think Humble did a great job of standing their ground. And that's why, in a way, I'm kind of siding more with you on the predictions a little bit. You know, just a little bit. I know I'm just batting for both sides. I, I do it every time. <laughs> but, <laughs> but what you're going to say is the reply to Otum today have been from it all. No, it's a very good point, to be honest. I, I was thinking, you know, because you asked me for the, the justification on, on my prediction for a totem, and I was honest. I didn't really think it through too much, you know, and didn't have a lot of time to think <laughs> about it. I just I just went totem. But I think that we're also forgetting the fact they beat Zeta today. Yeah. That's quite, a, quite an achievement, you know? As much as Food did beat SK and get, you know, overall some really good scores across the board, I mean, I think Reply Totem had the bigger achievement so far today, and, and that's where I'm going with them. But it's really a 50-50. It's so incredibly hard to tell. Uh, those two teams, it really depends on which day they're showing up, and on, even on a really good day for both teams, they're at a very similar level arc. Well, today, Semantic, Drage, and Lenar appear in their first Grand Finals of this year. Saving the best for last, question mark, that is the case for them today, but what I can say is they've never looked better, honestly. I mean, their synergy today is looking much more like what we'd come to expect from them. As again, always coming a little bit shy, but they are looking scary, making much better decisions today, Trav, and looking just more as a confined unit. They're looking very, very scary. Yeah, that's the thing as well. The draft looks so much better. The gameplay looks so much better. They seem to be playing better as a team, and they know it's make or break for them today, or at least it could be, uh, uh, depending on their next week's results in the SPS. But, I mean, Dre just, he's just been looking dialed in, and the same with the rest of the boys on the team as well. I think Lenane really played so, so well uh, in that last gem grab set, and Semantic, he was just solid all the way through. Dre just solid all the way through, but... I think they've kind of figured out now, just give the carry brawler to Lenane, and he, Drage even tweeted it as well. Give the carry brawler to Lenane and we'll win, and that's what they've been doing today. Well, as we head into our first set of the day, Teddy, I've got to ask you the question, as we wave goodbye to Trav temporarily. 77% of those voting on events.brawlstars.com feel as though Reply Totem have got the edge on this one to 23% of foot. now. Reply Totem, yes, are appearing in their third grand finals and are appearing in their first. But that feels a little bit one-sided to me. What about you? Oh, absolutely so. I think it's much closer than that. And honestly, I would say Foot might be a very slight favorite, just, you know, looking at both teams' performance in the last month or two. I mean, SK not qualifying for SPS and all that and struggling a little bit in this monthly qualifier too. I think it's a very, very even matchup. Very tough to tell them apart. Very hard, sorry, to tell them apart. But our draft is just blazing through as Crow was the first pick. And then we saw, uh, I believe, a Squeak as well as a Tara for Foot. Now a Primo and a Max coming through for Apply Totem. And I don't think we'll have time to reach for our bands, Ark. 
Yeah, it seems like both sides know what they want here. <laughs> but I do worry because every time I see Reply Totem combining the Primo with the Max, that, that more often than not spells disaster. They've got the Crow as well, so that's skipped through the, uh, the bands. A Surge coming in for Foot. A Brawler Witch, again, you know, has dropped off a little bit. Sorry, I just got to point out the, the almost way that we've lined up the webcams here of Maori's head in the Foot jersey. Yeah, <laughs> we let into it as well. We almost got a little screenshot there that may have been uh, definitely one for the social medias. Um, for me, I mean, Surge escapes through the draft a lot, but I feel can work very, very nicely on Pinball Dreams. I mean, especially as, you know, if you've got Super going up against those sideline walls, you know, your opposition has to retreat. The support from Mel from the Tara can definitely come in from, from you know, that side of things as well and just force back your opposition. All the vision depends how you want to throw it. But I do worry uh, as Reply System get in the hands on Primo, and those early sprays from Joker, yeah, that's that's value right there. Despite that, foot are pushing forwards. Yeah, they're closing the gap very nicely, and that was a very hurtful shot from Drage as they were all stacked up there as well, getting that extra damage from the star power. And Maori, Joker, Buffalo, which Brila not chasing down Joker. Maori in a troublesome position. And this could be an early goal, but the defense is there, and somehow Reply Totem, they're able to fend off if all three players survive. And this might even be a free goal. They don't quite get the ball in time. A bit of a messy fight there, but that was close. Oh my goodness, Joker, can't believe it. <laughs> Absolutely disgusting. I mean, Joker made up for it. I mean, you know, I was going to say prior to that, you know, to reply to some never miss those moments. And it looks like they can finalize things up right now. Line up with no super, no utility, can't do anything to defend it. The first game goes the way of reply to some. But prior to that, I've got to say those passes and those primo jumps are normally timed to perfection from Reply Totem. So to miss it, but to make up for it with that incredible max play from Joker, I rate it. I, I, I want to watch that again. I want to watch that again at the end of the set because that was quite something there from Joker. A bit of a mistake from Maru, but again, showing that all three players are totally capable of hard carrying when they need to, and that's something that not all teams can say. Well, let's find out as Samantha gets a big kill there onto Joker as he was starting to heal back up. Maru should be killable as well. Actually, Maru will take him down, but Rage was a bit of a trick shot. Is gonna shoot it straight into Joker, so the push not really gonna be resulting in anything just yet for Foot. Although Luna is able to survive and start building up a little bit of control again as Semantic is spawning in once more. I can understand it. I mean, at the moment there, Luna was low, but I feel like at those times you gotta kind of like try and get a pass, try and score it, but tough one to call. Semantic trying to survive on here and doing pretty well. Goes down now eventually with the help of Choker. Vex jump in there as well though and finds it. Oh, Luna stops it, but Maori's gonna be the last man standing. He will secure it as well. One minute, 25 seconds for Foot to get a response. And I feel like this set is waving us by and Foot have not got a bad comp to go up against it. I'm surprised they haven't really got much on the board yet so far. They've had great pushes. It just not able to score just yet. And somehow Totem, they get terrible pushes and they still manage to score. This time around though, surely this one is going in, right? Yeah, all right. That's gonna be the goal for Foot, and I feel like with the amount of pushes they've had, it, it, it's kind of crazy that this is the first time they actually managed to score with one. Well, that was a bit scary for me. Everyone slowed up as well on the side of Foot, and Reply Totem just, just absolutely threw everything they had at that one. Great slow there from Maori, but now Foot can start to recover from this, heal up from this. Lanan supers to the left-hand side. Joker's weak now on the left-hand side. Big taps from Semantic on the right-hand side. I mean, this is looking like a pretty solid defense, but now the speed now from Joker to keep the pressure on. They get one person down on the side of foot. It could smell disaster, but Maori being very, very patient. Still there, not to be forgotten about that left-hand side. The trade is there. Two versus two now as we approach the 10-second mark. Now, over time, gonna be coming up. No unbreakable walls either, so it's gonna be Wide open, Mari gets pulled, but plays around the wall really nicely. Joker not quite as fortunate though. Mari's low HP is able to still get that one kill. Nevertheless, Mari left in a 1v2. Joker does respawn. Rage going for the charge shot. Oh! Mari doesn't catch it in time. Foot Esports out of nowhere. Able to score and secure that game.
It's one each, getting into game number three. I just don't get how Dredge looks that calm after like literally landing the icest shot. I mean, to find that space, not an easy one at all to do, but does it nonetheless and then just brushes it off like it's nothing. Larry slowed up big time on the right and Semantic, yeah, gets quickly off to that start with the stacks. But Joker's just triple tasking here, <laughs> going between an Andrej and Semantic and just landing every single one. Brings in the speed like it's again, nothing. I mean, the level of this play is unbelievable. It certainly is a bit of a push coming through though for Food Esports as Maru goes down at three on two with two low HP players as well for Applied Totem. Joker no. gets a hold of the boss. Ow! Joker gets a double kill there as well. And somehow the defense stands. Unbelievable defense from Joker and Replied Totem. Not out just yet. Maru maybe even was an opportunity to score here if he can get the self pass. Instead, he's just going to go for safe damage onto Semantic. He's able to take him down and reply to him. Not in a whole bad situation here. Without a doubt, one of the best defensive measures I've seen all year long, but it might not be enough still with Semantic. Oh, he missed it! Bumbles and Joker gets the goal! He finds the fucking for it! And a bit of a miss, in all honesty, Fudge should have had that. They probably thought they did. One goal up now for Applied Totem. The one minute mark fast approaching. Huge slow there from Maru. The jump in from Maru is good, but taken care of now. That is a saving grace for Fuck. Now the three versus two. They've got a bit of time, but they've got to turn up the heat very, very quickly. You're absolutely right, Ark. They do need to find something here. Maru has super as well, so he can just play it safe on the right hand side, play it defensively. He does take a big chunk of damage there, needs to be careful, is one shot now as well. Eventually goes for the, the squeak, the fire will get that kill, but Semantic with super might have a chance to score and he'll do exactly that. A bit too aggressive then, therefore reply totem, too aggressive. And Foot Esports make sure to punish them, Joker gets instantly melted by Semantic, and what looked like an incredible set for reply totem might suddenly become Foot Esports's. No, I'm not super though, it's not going to break anything open. The pass semantic is good, but the shielding is going to help him stay alive. He gets the kill, but can he finish it? No! Super to the right hand side, Joker's going to be tripling into the pocket. And Foot missed a valuable opportunity. Surely now they can't get the ball out. It's going to go to overtime, and that's dangerous. It should have been tied up there. Yeah, that was a free goal. That was a big, big mix up there for semantic. Not something that you typically see happening to him too often. Some nice value from Drage was that super. Semantic is still on stage four, so he's gonna be massively outranging everyone. Can reply to him, defend off. This is a bit of a problem here. Mari taking a good bit of damage there as well. He's still able to find a kill. Semantic is low, goes down as well. There's still time there, maybe for Joker even to make a play. Speed is gonna be popped. Maru is gonna be low HP, ends up going down. Joker with a pass to Maru. Maru with a shot, but Lenat catches it midair. And somehow for the esports now, with a push of their own, a three versus two. And Semantic has super as well. He's gonna slot that one into the left corner and Foot Esports end up taking that opening set home. My word. <laughs> My heart can't take this, I'll be honest. Go on and give a shout to Drake there. I mean, like to handle that situation where literally that speed could have been enough and Reply Totem could have scored to land the shots that he did and to wait until his team got back into the mix. Uh, you can see how much he wants this month. I, I was thinking to myself when I was watching guys casting in the semi-finals in Heist, you can see in that squeak pick, he wants it. He's in the zone, he's dialed in. What an incredible first set to start this one off. I mean, so back and forth. There was definitely some mistakes as well, don't get me wrong, but I think the best the players outdid themselves. Some incredible defense. I mean, huge moments here. I mean, great interceptions on both sides as well. Semantic there, being astute enough to come forwards, ready to help out the moment. And then Joker with his face shift though, oh my word. Disgusting. Uh, that's a ridiculous play. And there were many others as well. I think the defense moment from Joker was almost just as incredible, to be honest. Uh, I don't know if we'll get to see it in the, the replays, but how he defended that off, he had this one right here, I believe. No, not that one. Never mind. Never mind. It was a very similar situation. Okay? <laughs> it was very similar. I agree. It was. It was. <laughs> but it, it was shot. also one versus two. But oh, this one then maybe. Yeah, he gets a hold of the ball. He gets one kill. Gets the second one somehow. Gets the ball away. 
he goes down but still saves that that was undefendable i don't know how he made that work but beautifully done and going into it he was so low anyway i mean he came out with about 100 hp but i think it's about 400 going in to a two versus one situation where he had to just literally come out and clutch oh my word semantic there with a great shot to finalize things off and 19 kills to semantics head i mean out i mean you know again going into that matchup when you see a surge you kind of always a little bit 50 50 50 as to how it's going to fare you know but everyone on the side of foot as well drage on nine luna on nine i said it once coming into it i'll say it again this is the best that foot have been playing all year long i mean to go against the my reply totem with a very very great comp one that they are fully competent with and they still came out on top and had a few mistakes along the way. <laughs> I mean, you gotta have some mistakes and uh, you know to throw in the mix as well. But signs the nerves a little bit. It's their first monthly final, grand final of the year. So going to Tuning Beatles though, you know they gotta put those nerves aside a little bit because uh, yeah, Reply Totem will be responding in kind. A map which is notoriously difficult to can you know to take control and maintain control. Because it is banned, question mark, not there. That's surprising. First pick is Stu from Reply Totem. Uh, but the bands were Crow, Poco, and Arty. Crow, Squeak, and Shelly for foot. I mean, surely Cordelius Mid here is going to have a whale of a time. It's a very possible pick. It's a very possible pick. It can be really dangerous here. I, I really hope they pick it, actually, because I really want to see how it's going to all work out on this map where you can quite easily end up battling around the zone in the Shadow Realm, and that means that, for example, your your opponent can't die, besides if the Cordelia is taken down, obviously, but he can capture the zone and stuff, so you can have some really tricky stuff happening. We'll see the beat for the first pick for Food Esports. I definitely don't mind it. It used to be a, a staple brawler of this map, not as much at the moment, but it's definitely still solid and also very tank aware, which is also something you want when you're facing Reply Totem. I'll have the Penny as well, which will fill in a, a good role, especially if you manage to get that Mortar up on the side and just harass your opposition. It might force in some picks as well, maybe a, a, a potential throw, which is not really what you'd ideally want, or even a Mystery P to try to take care of those uh, Mortars. I would say the standard here to do that would be the Squeak, but obviously for the sport, Esports, one step ahead, ban that out already. Well, we saw this earlier today, but Esports didn't pick up Cordelius. And then Jesse to follow that. And actually, don't don't joke about that, Jesse. I know you hate it, Teddy. Um, it's actually pretty good on Julian Beals here. Um, I think this Cordelius is the one that's going to have to carry, but I think Footies will probably bring in a Sam here, right? I mean, it'd be right up their street and to be overpowering this Jesse with. They, they're going to have a tanky or something up their sleeve here. I mean, B is a great thing to have, you know, especially for that mid. But as well, lane side as well, even as well. I, I've got to feel like it's Sam or something tanky to overthrow this Jesse. It, it's. it's it's probably okay different ideas then but nonetheless a great brawler to have even at this late stage it's normally picked up as the first pick i'll be honest but i just worry a bit for that cordelius on this particular map it could prove nasty but again we've seen them playing with it you know last week in the Brawl East will sit in the Snapdragon Pro Series. If there's any team that know how to go up against the Cordelius, it's going to be foot because they played it so wondrously well. This Jesse pick, though, okay, it's 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 an interesting one. It can provide so much value in dueling beetles, but if deprived of positioning power and not given the opening, not given the look in to be able to earn that turret, it can be a bit of a loose pair of hands. All right, let's see how those drafts work out. As we hump into game, Maru taking a good chunk of damage, and I mean, it took damage from everyone there across the board. Ends up going down early on, and Foot Esports are in a good position. And now is a jump in. Not really the best jump I've seen in my, my career, but <laughs> it happens. It happens. Still, nevertheless, I mean, Foot Esports have a 25% lead, so can't really criticize them too much either. Look at the way that everyone on foot is prioritizing the Cordelius, and that is how you've got to play up against it. You've got to have everyone come together to realize the threat at hand and just how much you can cycle unless you shut it down early. 30, now 40% of time spent on the mid, almost the foot. But now Totem are recollecting themselves in turret in a great spot from Maori. But it's actually found the angle. Like, now that top left inside has found the angle for it. 
I mean, what can happen if you leave a bee on that turret? It's a <laughs> it can last a while, right? So you do need the helping hand of your teammates to get that taken down swiftly. For the esports, back in the lead, but not by much. And actually, Totem now able to overtake them once again. Joker not committing to that fight against the nine, interestingly enough. Rather playing it safe and trying to capture the objective. We saw in their previous matchups that Reply Totem Love just playing the objective, not care about the kills, not care about the show, only here for the results. But it is an awfully close game here for both sides. It's gotta be an uneasy situation to jump in, but again, Luna gets out of there without a single kill without dealing all that much damage either. Our reply totem might just steal that game away. I'm oh, sorry, but Lenard in the Shadow Realm was disgusting. He landed every single tap. He went down in the end, but thoroughly deserved to realistically get the takedown. Now, but have got a bit of time, but not much to decide. 8% is all reply totem needs to be able to get this first game in the bag. The foot are holding on, creeping up. Maris in the zone, but when he goes down, 600 HP, he does, leaving Drace and Lenard to be able to pick it up and surely now take the game. Stolen, absolutely stolen from the reply totem grasp. I feel like Totem tried to steal this one, but instead got denied it just towards the end. Beautifully done by Foot Esports. Looking as fierce as ever right now, to be honest. I kind of agree when you say that Foot are the best they've ever been. Right now, I'm, I'm with you, Art. They're looking formidable. Look at this takedown. Look how quickly that happened. Uh, three versus one, and we've barely started the match. But starting off as much as they did in the first game, just really prioritizing the threats at hand. But now with the speed zone coming back, the reply totem, a chance to contest the mid. They've got to have that maneuverability plus that speed gear as well to really maximize their chance of juking these shots. But in the meanwhile, Foot have got 30% on the zone. That's a good way to start great connecting slows as well. And reply totem, don't, they don't have an answer. No answer at all. Yeah, do you know do you know who I blame? Ark? Me. I blame Jesse. <laughs> no. <laughs> I blame Jesse. I blame Jesse. Wholeheartedly blame Jesse here. Now for real though, it's not over just yet. Previous game was incredibly close. Just need to focus up a little bit. It's gonna be the easiest thing to do here is food are the ones dictating the, the pace so far. Maru was a nice pickup though. He's gonna have to be careful as he's in a bit of a crossfire, but is able to get out of there and start healing back up just a little bit. Platotem catching up percentage-wise as well. A nice pickup from Mari onto Semantic. That mortar is not gonna be lasting for very long there. And slowly but surely, Reply Totem are on Foot Esports' trail. About to catch up, and suddenly it's Reply Totem in the driver's seat once more. Yeah, I'm glad to see the synergy though when Semantic is needed to get the turret with Drage, they are together doing that. But in the meanwhile, it is now 80% and it's a two versus one. Was a three versus one. I mean, it's just something to reply to now. I've got control over and it's going to take immediate takedowns from Foot to be able to stop this happening. It's going to be a game going the way of reply to them and already deserved. Yeah, I, 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 do you know what I think is the key to their success arc? <laughs> the Jesse. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Oh, no, really well played by Reply Toad. I feel like Reply Toad sometimes need to be a bit harsh on them, you know? And then they start. You know, you've never doubted the Jesse, mate. You've always been on side yeah, with the Jesse. Nah, don't, don't talk yourself down. Don't talk yourself down, mate. <laughs> absolutely. All right, game three. And Reply Toad still trying to lock in a set as for the esports. Seemed for a little bit like they might be running away with it. Again, the early game looking better for Foot Esports with a little bit of a lead percentage-wise and also getting that opening kill. Another follow-up there onto Maru. And he's not had the best time on Cordelia so far, to be honest. I feel like I would expect a little bit more from such a high-impact pick. But it's also not the easiest to play, especially if you don't manage to chain that, that, that super very nicely. He only unlocked it now, I believe, for the first time, and that's not easy. 
that's it. I love that from Lenar. I was thinking it the whole time, thinking it's not a bad time to make a jump now and just get rid of this Jesse threat. And it has brought a nice open door here for Furt as they approach about 40%. Of the Plytos are starting to build back that deficit, though, however. And now it's level apiece. Mario going in, not got super yet though, now he has with 75 HP. He's actually gonna go for it, pick up the mushrooms along the way as well, and that will help massively so in this interaction. Full HP as quickly as that. But what will the response be from Foot? The turret now taken care of as well, and that's utility, you know, exacerbated down. 70% now for reply to this could be a set inbound here, unless Foot respond. Yeah, they have the player advantage though, and Joker is gonna tank that mortar shot as well. Joker, 1 HP, eventually goes down. Mari also goes down. Only Mari left alive. If he can go to the Shadow Realm, that would be a good moment to do so. Unfortunately for him, he goes down. I reply Totem, even though they are still ahead, they need those kills. Well, they'll get a two-piece, and that should pretty much settle it here. Hot Zone goes to reply Totem, and they even out the scoreboard. Such an important game. The reply totem to win. I mean, <laughs> look at Mario. I mean, it's like he's running a marathon. <laughs> I mean, that could have been Foot going up two sets ahead in the grand finals. You never want that to be the case. And yeah, now we're now we're leveled out. Now we are all leveled out, and that is exciting stuff in the grand finals when we're starting effectively all over again. But we're not going into our third set for high stuff. Next pit stop. This is getting juicy. Absolutely juicy. We've already had a lot of tanky ideas today from, from Reply Totem and honestly from Foot as well. And Pit Stomp is going to be the kind of map that definitely caters to those sort of brawlers. So I really am looking forward to what sort of draft is going to be incoming. But so far, a very, very even matchup. It feels like both sets could definitely have gone both ways. And it so happens that we're all tied up right now. Speaking of draft, you know, decisive brawlers, Teddy, do you know what I think was the decisive one there in that, in that last set? Uh, that's a tough question, man. Really <laughs> tough question. Uh, I, I, I think it'd be the Jesse. I, I think, think it's the Jesse, honest. mate. <laughs> yeah. Hands down, I think it's the Jesse. So that's going to get around in terms of DPS 239, 12 kills for Lanar on the side of foot. But Reply Totem really, you know, just keeping things a little bit higher in DPS across the board. But not, <laughs> now that I'm actually looking at it closely, um, just spending more time on the objective. And ultimately that is where things are won and lost. We've seen that all day long from them as well, especially in Heist. You know, they're just cycling themselves in time and time again. As you put it, just conceding the deaths to capture the objective. And that's what makes them so scary going into this next set. And Foot, who had the lead now, brought down a peg. Bands are in. Interesting, I saw an Otis band there as well. It's the first draft coming from Reply to from being the body. The need to end the Shelly, o uh, Cordelius, Barley, and Shelly band out by foot. Um, and of course, not Jimmy is going into heist next. So a good first pick for Joker then of the body. Rico though, coming in for foot. I mean, I love it on pit stop. I absolutely do. But there's still a lot of draft to go through. And if they start to break open the map, that's my only concern. But Spike as well, solid, solid having a to have on defense. Back to reply totem, and we know that they're likely to bring in a tank here. Teddy heads the spike pick. You know, El Primo is pretty much up there, and Sam is all boards, which they could definitely be thinking. Oh, I absolutely agree with you, and I'm kind of hoping that we get maybe even both of those brawlers coming into this draft. We'll see a Willow come up. Okay, I don't mind that either. I still want a tank though. I still want some tanks. I want some some fun. Edgar, it's not a tank, but I mean, I, I I consider Edgar as fun, as long as, you know, I don't have him in my team in, in Team PL or ladder. Surprise with the first pick, Rico, that actually, yeah, so, so Sam coming with the third, nice stuff. I'm surprised they didn't ban out the Edgar if they were going to be first picking Rico. You know, this is one of those brawlers which... It's the most susceptible to it. Sure, you'll bounce castle you know, gadgets to be able to heal yourself back up quickly. But is that going to be enough? The Willow here, I've seen, it's obviously pit stop, uh, but Willow on pit stop, you know, I've seen great things, in fact, phenomenal things done, but mostly by Navi. You know, I, I've yet to really kind of see a team make Willow work as well as they do to deflate pressure upon the high safe. So I'm looking for that today from Reply Totem to see how they really make that Willow pick, provide the value that it really deserves. 
And ultimately, again, no Sam going to be a prime target for it. Let's see as both teams go in how they're going to handle this first lines of aggression. Well, for Meru, not that well, it seems like, as he gets <laughs> pinched between Drage and Lena and absolutely melted down. Lena gets to follow up as well, and this is going to be a massive amount of damage coming through on that safe. Lena doing an amazing job at just building up that nice and early lead. It's not over just yet, of course, and the Play Dota aren't that far behind, but they're still behind for now. Rage tapping up Maru, just starting to leave. Oh, he has to kill along the way, that will help out, but Joker is on the safe. In the meanwhile, they are pushing down towards the reply totems, and now the damage starts to rain in as quickly as that. The multiple launch from the Rico side, by the way, is devastating on the safe, and that could be the buff that many have forgotten about on the side of the Rico. But look at that, that was a convincing way to go about it from foot, and Drake knows it. Was it the Elder Gadget that he popped on on the safe? Like, he's running multiple uh, launcher, yeah, on the Rico. He's not yeah. running the uh, super, uh, the uh, Bouncy Castle. Fair enough. He's not really caring about healing. <laughs> yeah, I had seen something on, on, like that on Twitter. And honestly, it makes sense, right? Like, what is he going to be healing from, really? There's no real reason for him to prioritize that. That's really interesting. I hadn't really thought of that until now, to be honest. But no, there's a chance maybe even to have a spike on safe. Never mind. He tried to heal up with... Uh, Fertilizer, but that wasn't quite enough. Instead, Lena is left there in an awkward spot. Not sure if he wants to defend or offend. And it seems like Maru should be taken care with, even though he did manage to deal a good bit of damage on safe. Good stuff from Reply Totem to start things off. Joker back on defense. Lena, they're just healing up, and now everyone comes in. Semantic's the first sign of super. And Drake's just trying to find the angle on the right-hand side, but it's a rare thing to see Reply Totem all this far push back in Heist. A connected super from Drake is devastating! Clears the trick on the right-hand side lane immediately! Lung goes in, Semantic as well, trying to find a couple of shots, but... It looks like it should be defended now. In the meanwhile, that wasn't as bad as it was looking to be. That could have been a one-push situation there for, uh, for Foot. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I think that was defended incredibly well by Reply Totem. Let's see if they can replicate that success. As for now, Foot are going to be committing a player to the push. Lena left back in defense. Can he take down Joker? Not for now, it seems like, but eventually he does. 36% left on their safe, though. So they are a little bit behind. And Semantic wasn't quite able to get nearly as much value on the safe on his own. A uh, bit of a base race once more, and that's the sort of things you will have to be expecting when there's an Edgar in play. Yeah, I think Samanti was looking for that uh, popping pin cushion gadget connection, but didn't seem like from the scoreline that he was able to find it. Uh, he's got none left either now, so let's see. Lenan tries to get some value, but no gadget as well to be able to pull in the kills. In the meanwhile, though, he is pulling the kills in. <laughs> he's got Maru. He, he also got Maru. Joker's the last one standing. He's going to be jumping in now as this push coming in. It's going to be a good one here for Foot. There's the gadget from Drage. It brings it down to 20% with 6% remain. Lenan's still my control value. That was what I was looking for. And that is being shown to be perfectly done by Reply Totem. That brought tremendous amounts of time. And therefore, the win. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful from them. That was interesting. A very interesting set over set overall, but beautifully done. Beautifully done. And that takes us to game number three. As our grand finals continue. And Lena not looking to slow down that aggression anytime soon. He makes it a one for one, not something that foot mind in that position. Even though it does mean that they won't be able to deal any damage on the safe just yet. Semantic is going to have to fall back and play it carefully here against Mari. And as he eventually gets stuck there, Semantic gets that final connection as he goes down. Joker and Mero dealing a good bit of damage on safe right now. And Foot don't really have an answer for it. They had a player on safe. They have Lena down there. But is that going to be enough as... It took forever to take down Joker. Actually, they're not that far behind anymore. And Lena is still on the safe. Maru can't really do anything unless he gets his super and he didn't quite get it in time. However, the Edgar is coming up with a jump and that should pretty much settle it if they can land it. That 
a dangerous base race to put. I'm not sure why they chose it realistically now, but they've got to defend this. There's no way about it. They commit to the idea. Maru's got jump. That is the dangerous thing. Jungle goes down immediately to the popping pin cushion, and that is crucial. That is key. Now the body jump in. Maru's low, but Samantha with missed shots. Might have to defend it. He's trying for it. He gets it. Three then remain to so the 33 percent like now that's got to go in and go in right now land these shots there is not much time for a response if Samantha gets super as well it will help out massively but Joker pushing the left hand side he's going to be able to end this game soon and I think Foot may be regressing that base race with no chance to realistically defend this now it's in it's done and reply totem as quickly as that gain the set and the lead in this series so close so close, so many quick decisions to make, so many incredibly close interactions happening across the board. But it is Reply Totem now with the lead. What an exciting grand final. I mean, a grand final that a lot of people didn't see coming because Reply Totem, all three of us didn't have them even making it past the quarterfinals. And now they are set up in the grand finals. One more to go to lock in their first monthly final victory of 2023 and that's kind of crazy to think about that they haven't won a single one this year because they were the the strongest team in the mea kind of like for the last two and a half years until until until, until now even though okay 2021 they were like the strongest during the year but they were the best performer from the mea at worlds but it's, but it's interesting, isn't it? Because the reply to them every single year is that around this time when they do get their first win. It, might, it may have even been July last year. I have to go back and check. It was certainly July or August, I believe, and uh, they get their first win. Uh, but the, the, what that's happening at the moment in this particular series is that they are winning the games that matter most. You know, when, when Foot are sweeping things, one set and one game in the pocket, one game to get two sets ahead, Reply to them stopping them in the tracks, make it a level one set each, and then coming back in, in heist as well. You know, gaining them the lead off the back of what could have easily has been, but Esports getting two sets to one over them anyway. It's it's honestly very, very impressive to see, but look at the stats. You can see how cleanly matched these two teams really are. Not much in it in terms of kills and deaths or DPS. It's just very, very even, to be honest. And that makes me feel like it'd be spitting to be a fifth and final set decider, let's be honest. But as we go into our next match for gem grab double swoosh for esports gonna be drafting to keep the tournament lives in play here reply totem drafting to get their first grand finals win of the year and that'll be absolutely huge if they can just tie it up in this fourth set no doubt about it though but will not be giving it to them on the plate this is gonna be a very very important deciding draft for both of these two teams it's been an, an incredible grand final for what it's been an incredibly monthly final. Incredible monthly final here in, in the MEA. Our bands are going to be Mr. P, Squeak, and Gene for Reply Totem. Foot Esports also doubling down on that Squeak band, but also going to be adding Cordelius and, um, and Shelly to the ban list. Reply Totem first picked Crow. Foot Esports follow up with Atara. So far, very familiar faces to double swoosh for sure. Let's see if they are looking to switch things up. I just went back to the last year's brackets. It was July when Reply Totem got their first win of 2022. And after that, of course, it just went progressively better. And it was a uh, grand finals against Tribe Gaming EU, which of course Drage uh, had a, a great run with. So certainly very symbolic. And it was Reply Totem got the win 3-1 then. Will they make it a 3-1 win this year round to the day? Pro first pick, the reply totem, the double swoosh. Tara, the amber, I, I like a lot on both sides of things, but they are lacking an aggressor. Of course, Foot have the luxury of that third and final pick here, but I think in that same regard, something to be able to defend against possible tanks might not be a bad idea here. Surely Foot are thinking Sam or something along those lines, right? The Crow will be able to slow and the Stu will be able to dance around it, but not really the hardest of hitting DPS so far for the reply totem. Yeah, I agree with you. It, I wouldn't say it takes it out of the equation here. There's about 10 seconds left for that final pick for Reply Totem. It's going to be a penny joining their ranks, which 
I'm not sure where it's gonna be played. Maybe to play it against the Terra, and then you have this two on, on mid. I think that makes the most sense. They, they have three mid brawlers on Reply Toto, and it's something we've seen quite often on Double Swoosh. Um, and in the draft strategy as well, it is genu genuinely like a part of the idea that they can mix it up if they need to, if they have a bad mid matchup, because right now there's no mid yet for Food Esports. Oh, never mind. Well, I'm guessing they're going Tara mid then. This is interesting. So we have three mids for Reply to the Man, we have no mid for Food Esports. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's gonna be a stew mid for Reply to him. I think Penny Lane, but like at the same time, they didn't prepare for this Sam. As I was saying coming into it, it, it was just a glaringly obvious thing that Foot Esports will draft Sam in pretty much everywhere if you give them the opportunity to it. Um, okay, sure, Penny's got some knockback, got the salty barrel, but I mean, over time, Lanana's just gonna pressurize and pressurize, and once the utility goes down, the crow slows it all out, and you know, the speed zones that I imagine reply to some running on this still are gonna be going as well. I mean, Lanana should have free reign, um, so definitely a concerning moment for me, but let's see how reply to this one will fare on it. There's already an early gadget there for Semantic on the left-hand side, speeding into that super that he'll gain over time. As Mario is looking for that Tara as well, and it's be Tara mid. Interesting stuff. So far, so good for Reply Totem. A little bit of an early gem lead. I'll be happy with that. Foot playing it passively. As Luna finally goes in, gets a pull onto Joker, but no follow-up, sadly, for him. And Joker gets away with his life, and the next gem that spawns, Semantic, will be looking to burn down parts of the map. Joker heals up. It's just about enough for him to survive. Would have gone down without the Gasso heal, so nicely done by him. And Foot still behind by three gems but slowly building up some control. It will take a little bit before they're gonna be as strong because they are a bit more reliant on their supers, the tower pull, of course, but also the Antler super to burn down those bushes takes a bit longer to build up. So the setup time is just a little slower. Well, with seven gems in the pocket, Lanana's trying to make a play. Harry's flowing his super down now. Quite a small power, a bit of a waste. Lanana's prior as well, quickly as that's like utility gone down. And some gems in the pocket, four foot, seven apiece now. Look at the top though, there is also Maru lurking, or Maori rather, and Trace will be very careful. The slow is there as well, he is very susceptible in his position. Finally, Semantic comes into the play, or rather, Semantic. <laughs> Chokers depriving him of that particular title at the moment. Eight gems to the seven, and Fur have got that Taurus, and we know what that can achieve. If Trace times this right, this can turn very, very quickly. Yeah, Jake gets, uh, Jake Joker gets burnt as well, which is a bit of a disaster for him, but with Strange being low HP, Joker is still able to have some sort of presence in the man. Oh, oh, oh. That's all the gems as well. He gets knocked back, and that means that he gets away with those gems. Incredibly enough, it's gonna be Food Esports with the first counter and 19 gems in their pocket. Right now, Reply Totem need a kill onto the now, but they aren't gonna find him with this little time remaining. And Food Esports already a game up here in this gem grad set. All right, my word. Lanan time and time again, whether it's with the, the Sam on Double Swoosh, you know, whether it's with the Carl on Hard Rock Mine, wherever he is, he is stealing those gems. <laughs> He's taking them back. They're never safe. And it just takes that one moment of him to close the gap, to gain the value. That's why sometimes I'm against the Sam pick on the side of foot, simply because if a team are just constantly, constantly shutting it down, it does nothing. But if they are just weak for a shallow moment, it's everything. Let's see whether to reply Totem will learn from that mistake or whether Foot will make this set a much more convincing one. It's an important time to get a game on the board, no doubt about it. And this could be the turning point. Three chance for Drake and a takedown there to bring five to his pocket. That's a great start for Foot. Yeah, fantastic start for Foot. Six gems ahead and no map control for Reply Totem. I mean, Foot couldn't really ask for much more right now. Eventually, the kills come through and Reply Totem win both the left and the right lane. But in the meantime, Trey just built the gem economy of, of Foot Esports all the way to eight gems. Anana's creeping. 
Creeping around, gets the speed zone taken care of as well, healing up along the way. Might get Maru and the turret as well for his time yet again. Gets the turret, Maru surviving on 30 HP. And now the bird for the right-hand side from Semantic's gonna keep Joker low as well. It's two versus two, but nonetheless, Semantic with these shots, it's really helping Drake survive on. Little ball question mark, no, jumping from Maru, survives so, and the countdown. How? Panatos will not get that kill. That is a tough one here for Applied Totem, and the wiggles and dashes from Joker are not going to save him from going down. Foot Esports will take Gem Grab and will take us to a fifth and final set. It has to be decided there. It simply has to, you know? In this particular matchup of two teams that have both been fighting for the first grand final win of the year, you know, it has to be decided there. So close, so little in it. And great place, <laughs> someone quickly just check on Maori for me, please. <laughs> Since set one, he's looked like he's struggling. <laughs> a little bit, Bless him. a little bit. Bless him. <laughs> Bells Rock Art. Fifth bottle set. Bells Rock, yeah, exactly. What are your thoughts, Teddy? Ah, uh, that's going to be an exciting one to end it, it, it through. Honestly, I didn't like Knockout when it first released. But slowly but surely, it's become one of my favorite game modes to watch. It just gets so intense towards the, the, the end games. You know, at the end of uh, of games, I just explained what end game means. But <laughs> at the end of rounds, it gets so exciting, so much of a, a team fight. You know, less one v one separated across the map. And I'm looking forward to it as both teams have showed that they are in absolute top shape today. Stats wise here for a previous set, it's super even as always, super even. This time around actually it's Riplight Totem that has more kills and I believe more damage as well. Yeah, quite a bit more damage and yet Foot Esports are the ones that brought it home. Fifth set, who's it gonna be? If you had to predict again, would you stick with Foot Esports? I think I would, yeah, I think I would. I mean... I, th I think it's going to come down to ultimately whichever side have the better run in Bell's Rock. And that's a tough question to ask. Uh, I was going to put it to you actually and see what your thoughts were as to whether this favors one of these two sides. I mean, it's such a tough one to call. I don't think I've changed my prediction, but I, I, I praise the way that Foot have been able to bring this one back around because Reply Totem were really keeping them under pressure. And of course, you know, this is going to be knockout, not double swoosh, bands, Cordelis, Max, and Bonnie, Gus, Shelly, and Tick on the side of Foot Esports. And an incredibly important time to get this right. Just a reminder as well, these stats will come from the qualifying stages of every team competing within the EMEA region on a global scale. So that is worth bearing in mind that it won't be a true reflection necessarily as to how things will play out before us. So the RT comes in swiftly to Joker. Yeah, I also want to point out, I mean, Fang having an 82 win rate is probably because he wasn't played the most either. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, I yeah. doubt he's actually the best brawler for Bell's Rock. Um, but, he, I mean, you know, in the right hands, though, it can be an absolute threat. And we saw some Fang earlier today, played wonderfully by Lena, actually. So maybe we'll see it again. Brock is going to be their first pick on the side of Foot Esports, bringing him the free wall breaks, as well as just a ton of damage and overall utility. So. I really don't mind that squeak for a bit more of a control-based approach, slow down certain areas of the map and remove some chokeholds. Let's see if they can do that nicely here as Reply Totem have two picks in a row now to iron out any uh, problems that uh, Foot brought with their picks. Oh, Grey coming in for Reply Totem. It's a good map for it, very solid on Bell's Rock. I do like the Brock starting hand. Bell always going to have a good run on this map. But I've got the final say, however. And Sprout still available. The tick being banned. Or Grom even would be great for them to pick up here. Let's see, though, how they want to approach this. And they are the aggressive team. I don't know whether this is the time to be aggressive. Sprout, that's exactly what I'm hoping for. I think, you know, to see a sound there may have like <laughs> may have been a concerning moment for me, but I feel like you can afford to go Sprout when you can see the big picture. And clearly the gray is the concern a little bit here for them, so they have to be you know, very mindful of that. But I think once you've got that third and final pick and you can see the entirety of the company facing up against a Sprout, it's always a pretty safe one to be able to go up against when you know that you're in for a, a pretty decent matchup. 
Yeah, I, I think Gray is gonna be a little bit of a, a problem still for the Sprout. As if he TPs in, it's it's over for the Sprout unless you have a wall available and place it pixel perfectly. It's a bit scary, so I don't know what you think of that interaction. We'll see if Joker gets the opportunity here to punish that Sprout pick or if Luna will be able to shine like usual. Yeah, it's certainly potentially decided there, isn't it? Mario on the, right, on the left hand side though, low. The result of these taps from Semantic and the Nun coming into helping hand the situation, but I feel like Foot have got a great comp. They've, on Brawlers, they've already shown today a, a great amount of pressure with, you know, Drake back on the squeak, Semantic back on the Brock. These are safe ideas that have worked, tried and tested. And Joker pushed out of position. Disastrous for him, but the shots don't quite land. The mark, and they're really even taking below half HP. In the meanwhile, another wall forces over Maori, but the follow up, it's not quite there for foot. Uh, it was a beautiful attempt. I love it. Just pushing him into that Brock super. They've definitely practiced this before, but. It wasn't quite meant to be this time around. Rage in a bit of an aggressive position here. Gonna get pulled by the Grey. Joker picks up the kill. The 9 a 1v2 now. And that's gonna be a tough one for him to pick up, especially against one of his counters. And a gasp is gonna be what settles it here as he goes down and reply to him, pick up the first round. Programming error. Tough scenario. That should have gone the way of foot, really, but they just didn't quite manage to keep their positioning, and that's what came back to prove costly. All the whole way through the game, they pretty much had the advantage, both in positions and into HP and hits landed, but just that little moment of weakness. Maru, very low here. Nan trying to find the ricochet off the wall and rocket rain from Semantic will keep Maru low again. But again, survivability of Reply Totem is still there. Joker, considering the TP there, chose better of it. Pretty much back to drawing board as both teams struggle to find the utility but Joker goes in and super aggressive finds semantic Drake could be next on the uh, on the menu he is seems like everyone might be on the menu here Lenel walled in not sure what his best play is here because hitting every single shot until Murray goes down is not gonna be happening and eventually Murray just pops his super walks into him and takes him down match point reply to him. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Replies didn't play it perfect, played it great, honestly. I feel like Foot have got the better comp, but they're not playing it quite as well as they need to. They can't be leaving Lenal into those final interactions. It's, it's never gonna be, unless you get like a real champion moment, moment, you know, champion play with the Sprout. It's gonna always be tough to win it. On this left-hand side, it's always action. Joker and Maru, very low a lot of the time, but they keep surviving, and that is the name of the game in Knockout. If you go down instantly, it's a problematic situation for your team. And Foot needs to start to make this, this early three versus two. Drage Law as well just survives on, and as I'm saying it, I'm getting worried. Dude, yeah, that was a magnificent ball from Joker, though. Across the map there onto Drage, nearly taking Drage down with it, too. And not quite that time around. Drage, again, quite low. A wall placed down by Lanai. The pool will connect there, and that's going to remove some of the wall opportunities. The TP from Joker is going to certainly remove wall opportunities for now, and Semantic left in a one versus three. This is getting closer and closer towards the end of Foot's journey here, unless they're able to win both next rounds, because Reply Totem now are literally just one away. Yeah, he's the gadget as well towards the end. It may or may not matter. All we know for certain is that Foot have got to get around on the board. It's as simple as that. Mari, as well, I think got some more gadgets to hand. Used one in the previous game to get the kill. And oh, Joker goes in and Drake, and he'll secure it immediately. Returned by Semantic, two versus two. It's not over yet. Mari have been taking a shot there as well. And have all to hand from Lanan, but this is not the position that Foot want to find themselves in. One round away, I'll reply to them from taking this monthly final. Important moment here, Reply Totem. They could lock in their first monthly final win, but for the esports, they managed to bring it back to a two on two. Maru is low, Maru is still standing though. Eventually does fall, it's a one on one. Maru, he finds the final connection and that's gonna be it. Reply Totem are your July EMEA monthly finals winners. It wasn't to be in February. Or June for Reply Totem, but it's third time fortunate as they land it in July. 
and pretty much this exact month last year was when they found their first in 2022. The Trajan Foot, it would have been their first Mobley Finals win of the year as well. It wasn't to be, but it went the whole distance as we'd only want it to be, honestly, phenomenal plays from both sides. I mean, what an exciting Grand Finals we had in the EMEA today, honestly. I think the day was exceptional, honestly. Just top quality matches from quarterfinal one to grand finals. We had just incredible performances from so many teams. And it's it's wonderful as well to see both Reply Totem and Foot Esports play well today. Because, I mean, so far this year, they've been a little bit more quiet than what we'd like. And they haven't quite shown the full extent of their skill. That I still think they haven't to this point but it's showing wonderful signs of promise from them, but also from teams like SK that struggled early on throughout the year. And all those other teams really that, that showed up today, uh, it, it, it's a really stacked region. And I think they are making sure to prove to us why there are seven slots right now in the region, because I mean, there's a lot of teams competing for it. And also, you know what that means? Reply to them today had to get a win to guarantee their position in the last chance qualifiers. And they've done that. Against all odds, they have smashed it out of the park today and ended on a high 6-3-3. Kills the 1-1-0 one, one, oh, on the side of foot. And a healthy amount of DPS. But that is Reply to them locked in, at least guaranteed, at least the last chance qualifier. I mean, talk about striking while the iron is hot. I mean, they, they had Zeta in first round. So many people predicted against them, us included, right? I mean, we're not just gonna you know, deflect that. But that was such an unlikely event to happen, which just goes to show that I think Reply Totem now have demonstrated and proved that they are back on top. Absolutely so. I mean, just going back to the narratives that we started the show with today, the whole, you know, Reply Totem, they're facing Zeta first round. They didn't qualify for SPS. They've been playing questionably recently. They need those oh, points. Lightly, yeah. They needed those points and they delivered. As usual, the end of the year, Reply Totem gets a 50% buff. Don't know why, don't know where it comes from, but they just get that buff and they, they played phenomenally. Well done. Definitely looking forward to having a few words for sure as the MVP vote coming in and it's going to be Joker. I, for one, would say that that's a, a fair bet, a fair bet, <laughs> as uh, we know that he's fully capable of uh, of bringing in the greatness when it matters. And I'm pretty sure that we've got him as well on the line. So it couldn't be more meant to be in that respect. Joker, great to have you back. It's been a while, my friend. It has felt like a while, but uh, congratulations again. This time last year, you got your first grand finals win for the team. And a year later to the day, it happens. How do you feel, first and foremost? Probably a little bit elated, right? Yeah, I was really stressed about this monthly final because it's a really important one. It's only one more left. And now going into Worlds, uh, we really needed this win. Yeah, I'm going to put you through some grueling joke. I've got some some questions lined up. We're going <laughs> to we're gonna go <laughs> deep. Um, you know, let, let's start first and foremost. Uh, going back to maybe your, your Masters victory with ESL, uh, Star Dragon Pro Series. So coming off the back of that, you took on the might of the world and you knocked them back and showed everyone that you are the champions of the world. And coming away from that, you know, we saw a little bit of a of a honeymoon period let's call it talk us through that period of time for you guys obviously it was a very very intense moment for you guys and you got the win but coming back to the bsc after that we didn't quite see the same results from yourselves yeah i think uh, we especially play really good on land so i think we had some problems now online after winning in japan and we had to adapt our draft a bit and i think we were also doing some smaller mistakes gameplay wise but I think now, as you can see, we adapted good and we changed our strategies and it was working better. Yeah, I'm very impressed, I've got to say, because again, there was a, a noticeable shift that we felt here. And, you know, I mean, in that regard, to see you today face against Zeta Division in the quarterfinal stages and match them, the majority of people, I mean, yeah, you're even aside. I mean, talk us through your thoughts as a team going into today's match? Because you started off with what was your grand final in previous months as your first match. How did you approach the mindset going in? Yeah, I think uh, no one of us was really happy about facing Zeta the first round because they're a really, really good team and we've lost every time against them this year in the BC. 
So we really wanted the revenge this time because after three times losing, um, we it was our turn to win. Another question I've got to throw out there, you know, looking back through the months, you know, in April, that was the quarterfinals that you faced off against Foot Esports, that 2-3 scoreline that went against you and Foot proceeded to the semifinals. You know, that was a rough month, probably maybe one of your rough, you know, toughest months in the BSC. You know, knowing that you were going in to face that very team in the grand finals today, how did that play on your mindset? Did you adapt or change anything to approach it or did you just focus on the prize at hand? Um, what I think is a uh, really good advantage is being in the upper bracket because the last few months we've always been in the lower bracket. We play the semi-final and then we have to instant play the grand final if we don't have time to prepare it really. Because honestly, I think most of the teams do not have the time to prepare all the matches. So the grand final will never be prepared. And I think if you're from the upper bracket, you just have more time. And like this, we could talk about it, about the match, prepare it and adapt it to our opponent. And I think they didn't have that much time about it. Okay, well, I'm going to ask one more question, Joker. This one's a spicy one now. You know, the elephant in the room. You didn't make the uh, challenge season of the Snapdragon Pro Series. Let's go back a little bit, talk about why and how you're feeling, all things considered, because, you know, not being able to be in contention for those BSC points up for grabs in the Snapdragon Pro Series, you kind of had to come out on tops today, right? Because there's a lot of changing that could shift around the leaderboards. Give us your thoughts on what happened and how you intend to proceed forwards under knowing that situation. Yeah, I think uh, we were not play really playing confident. I think we were having some problems with confidence. We weren't really doing the things we know. And then if you lose a match, then the next one you, you go in with a, with a bad mood or something like that and with that format. But another thing is that it was really late at night. We were playing at like 11 p.m. And I think that also um, hurt our, com our mental a bit because especially me also, if I go to school every morning at 6 a.m., and I'm tired at night and we can't really we couldn't really give our best. I feel like we weren't playing like we know. And obviously it's really sad for us to not qualify for the ESL. Also not only because of the BSC points, but also because of the missing Alan. But yeah, we want we wanted to qualify to the world finals with it being in our hands. So we kinda had to catch up today and still have to next month because they will get a lot of points by, by the ESL. <clears throat> 100%. Well, Joker, from going from that you know, confidence issue to today, you <laughs> have taken it back into your own hands, no doubt about it. Before we sign off, is there anything you want to say to your fans and your following before we sign off? Yeah, I want to thank all my fans and also especially my girlfriend because uh, these last few months have obviously not been that easy for us. And it's always good to have someone that is, is by your side, even at your lowest. Ah, oh, you're, you're big softy. You're going to choke me up, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations again, Joker. And, and please pass that on to you and your team. Go and celebrate. You've earned it. And uh, put your feet up for a little bit before you get back on the grind, my friend. Speak to you soon. Thank you, Eric. See ya. Let's bring back in Trav and Teddy. Thanking his girlfriend, Trav. Isn't that sweet? A Brawl Stars player is allowed, girlfriends? Uh, the last I heard, it's, it's a rarity. I mean, it's, uh, yeah. yeah. I didn't think that was a thing, to be honest with you. Uh, if it's not allowed or incapable of getting them. But to be honest... Doesn't happen. <laughs> a massive congratulations to Joker and Totem, obviously, as well. From watching the game from the sidelines, it really was incredible. We've had so many 3-2s today. This is the, uh, the closest it's been in the most competitive region of that as well. Here's a little look at the bracket as well. Start things off with a &R versus Humble, where Humble had to reverse sweep. A little bit of overconfidence from AR, a little bit of BM, a little bit of flexing, but they did get what was coming to them at the end of the day. Zayf Division did lose to Reply Totem 2-3. Foot Esports took down Nita's Cubs 3-1, and then Navi got beaten by SK Gaming 3-2. Humble then got defeated by Reply Totem 3-1. Foot Esports swept SK Gaming, which was not expected at all in that second semi-final. And then as we have just seen, Reply Totem took down Foot Esports in a close 3-2. What a day. What a day it has been. Look, at, I mean, it's very rare to see so many 3-2s in the uh, EMEA region, but that is the case. And of course, Zeta Division locking themselves in for the World Finals already. 435 points despite going out in the quarterfinal stages today. Reply Totem, bare minimum last chance qualification slot achieved for them as a result of that Grand Finals win. Could still very well get a World Finals spot as well.
But again, so much shifting could happen in this region, not just through the BSC, but with the Snapdragon Pro Series, BSC points up for grabs in those challenge finals as well, as we were just discussing with Joker, his thoughts around that and how it could affect them. There's still so much at stake, but for Esports riding forwards into third, Humble now in fourth. And look how much that has already changed from today. Ever Fantasy down in, in eighth place, SK in seventh place, AR in sixth, Navi in fifth. There is so much movement happening, and it's going to come down to the wire, no doubt about it. We've got a player of the day lined up today, Trav. You're going to talk us through it to see which one it was going to be. Well, I think there's only one option for this. We saw quite a few good plays, but it's got to be Linane. I mean, playing these gem grab games, he did it again against Totem as well, getting these turnarounds, but this one was something special, I thought. A little, little flying hook forward towards Yoshi here, got the kill in this one. And he did it again in a different game as well, that's the thing. Uh, managed to do it there, then he, in the next one, he avoids the Tara pull. Uh, I believe it might be this one here. Avoids the Tara pull so beautifully in here. Goes towards the left-hand side, gets the super off. Look how close he is to the edge of that Tara pull. Dodges it perfectly and brings the gems back to Semantic's hands. Safe hands at that in Semantic's. And then Drage gets that last gem and finishes off that countdown, which was the nail in the coffin for, for SK Gaming today. Incredible stuff, honestly. You know, we're, like I said, Lenan was just stealing gems, not even just uh, in that uh, Hard Rock Mine set, but that again goes in there. Uh, it was with Sam as well in double switch time and time again. You know, he's never the gem carrier, but he always seems to end uh, the sets as the gem carrier, doesn't he, really? I mean, he's like the, uh, the, the distractor until he's not. Then he's gem carrier. Pass the semantic there. Beautiful stuff, honestly. But Esports time and time again had so many steals. But let's take a look now at the World Finals race. These are the teams that have got the spot for currently, I think, Crazy Raccoon today as well, had a fantastic day placing them into that spot. State Division for EMEA, Reply Totem currently holding that spot in EMEA as well as for Esports, but again, all can still change here. For SA East, FA Mini Packers, which I believe, yeah, was the change of name for Zest. Luminosity Gaming for North America West and Tribe Gaming for North America East. To be determined, of course, the Chinese mainland region, which I believe will be coming up in just about a week's time, just less than, I believe. Uh, so we'll get some conclusive ideas as to which team is going to qualify there. Last chance qualification race. Trav, talk us through these teams and who you think has got the best chance of contesting these world final spots. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, STMN, it's quite surprising to see them here at all. Never mind, uh, you know, just below Luminosity for that world's race. You expect them to be at the front of the uh, of the region. Chasmak down there in NA East Clash, you know, with some Iconic are the ones contesting the South America spots, Humble, Navi, and AR, which is, you know, some stacked teams of SK Gaming up the top right as well. Reject, Ophelia, Esports, the ones from East Asia, SEA have got Team Flash and Rising Sun. And then those two India spots, Revenant Esports and Marcos Gaming. And as you say, China mainland, we'll find out in about a week or so. It's never been fiercer. Honestly, there's so much that can change. There's so much that absolutely will change. I'd love to kind of compare looking back next month to how we are currently at the moment. But what a day. What a day for EMEA. Uh, Ted, I'm going to come to you first. Any final thoughts before we close up what has been the most crazy, most manic monthly finals we've had all year? I, I was about to say, I think this is one of my favorite uh, monthly finals of all time or at least in a very long time so always really glad to be a part of those shows and you know get to witness all of this action firsthand with you wonderful uh, people so i'm really appreciative for that very sweet teddy very sweet trav any final thoughts from yourself I mean, all I can say is this region is an absolute treat at the moment. All these three twos, all these three ones. There was only one three zero, I believe, which was the foot SK, which I kind of expected to be a three two as well on a different day. It could have been a three zero to SK, it could have been a three two to either of them as well. It was so close. Uh, but at the end of the day, a massive congratulations for, for Reply Totem and obviously Foot Esports for getting those points for second as well. A crazy day. I mean, that's EMEA down, but we've got South America still to come tomorrow. Make sure you mark it in your calendars, guys, at home. It's going to be starting from 3 p.m. UTC. And of course, head over to event.brawlstars.com and get in your predictions early for that stream because you're going to want to get those in-game rewards 100%. Big thank you to all the teams that competed today, to all the organizations, coaches, and analysts working in the background there as well. And of course, to the viewers at home, thank you very much for joining us on this journey. Big shout out to Esports Engine as well in the background, keeping the production slick and clean like we love to see. And also having a very, very long shift as they've just done a back to back with the Apex region, as you have yourself, Trav. So we're acknowledging that. And of course, thanks to Trav, thanks to Terry, 
It's been emotional. Loved every second of it. Okay, guys. Well, again, tune in tomorrow from 3 p.m. UCC for the South America region. Until then, it's goodbye for now. We have to get a moment here. Jumps into the diner. Brother's still alive as well. It's two versus O. And that should be another goal. But maybe it's come through the face. Just keep it everyone low. But he will go down. No one has to get two kills here. For his time. From the MMA. Big shots today on the right hand side to Yoshi. Angel Boy low. But look at this MMA even lower. He might go down here. If they do, they can be disastrous. The blue star. Ooh. That's a lot of damage. I mean, he's still there. Someone please do so. He found on none. He can't leave him on the same on his own. But they are absolutely awful. One final attempt from now. He he'll go down immediately and reply to him. And for now, to turn things around, he's gonna close the gap faster on that side. Double stumble chaos and the pass to Yoshi just in the nick of time. They have a choker. Bex jump in there as well, though, and finds it all and stops it. But Maori's gonna be the last man standing.